photographer. In Act 1, he takes pictures of New York City on the Staten Island Ferry. Richard meets Alexandra Pappas. Are you from New York? No, I'm from Greece. I'm an exchange student. He shows Alexandra some pictures for Family Album USA. Family Album USA. It's an album of pictures of the United States. Later, Richard leaves quickly. Bye-bye, Alexander. Thanks. Bye-bye. And he forgets something. What does Richard forget? My name is Richard Stewart. I'm a photographer. May I take a picture of you and your little boy? What's it for? That's for a book. You're writing a book? <laughs> it's a book of pictures. I call it Family Album USA. Oh, that's a nice idea. Well, it's fine if you take our picture. I'm Martha Van. Thank you. I appreciate your help. I'm Richard. What's your name? Gerald. How old are you, Gerald? Five. And where do you live? We live in California. Well, welcome to New York. Okay, just a second. I'm almost ready here. Can I help you? Oh, please. Hey, hold Gerald's hand, please. Great. Now point to the buildings. Terrific. Now give mommy a kiss, Gerald. Nice. Thank you, Gerald. And thank you, Mrs. Finch. Oh, my pleasure. We'll be looking for your book. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, Gerald. <laughs> Thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, let me take your picture. Wonderful. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from New York? No, I'm from Greece. I'm an exchange student. Well, when did you come here? Three months ago. Your English is very good. Thanks. I studied English in school. Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Tell me about your book. Oh, it's not finished yet. But I have some of the pictures. Would you like to see them? Yes, I'd like that. Oh, here they are. Family Album USA. It's an album of pictures of the United States, the cities, the special places, and the people. And these are pictures of people working. Steel workers, bankers, police, street vendors, Ambulance drivers, doctors. Oh, and this is my father. 
He's the doctor. This is my mother. What's her name? Ellen. <laughs> my younger brother, Robbie, he goes to high school. This is my sister, Susan. She works for a toy company. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my grandfather. He lives in Florida. And this is my wife, Marilyn. Oh, she's very pretty. Thanks. And what about your family? They are in Thessaloniki. Mm -hmm. That's a large city in northern Greece. But now I'm living in the Bronx. With a Greek-American family? No, Hispanic. <laughs> oh, no. It's 5.30. Um, will you excuse me? I have to meet my wife. Oh. It's nice meeting you. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you, too. Thanks for your help, and good luck. <laughs> um, I've got to go. Uh, by the way, I'm Richard. What's your name? Alexandra. Bye-bye, <laughs> Alexandra. Thanks. Bye-bye. Richard! Richard, you left your bag! <laughs> Family album, USA. So now my pictures of the United States. Richard takes many pictures for his album. He photographs the cities, like New York. And other special places. He photographs people working, police, ambulance drivers, steel workers, doctors. Philip Stewart, Richard's father, is a doctor. He's a pediatrician, a children's doctor. And Richard's mother, Ellen Stewart, is a homemaker. His brother, Robbie, is a student at Riverdale High School. He's 17. Richard has one sister. Her name is Susan. She works for a toy company in New York City. Malcolm Stewart is Richard's grandfather. He's 72 years old and lives in Florida. And this is Richard's wife, Marilyn Stewart. She's a fashion designer and a sales clerk in a boutique in New York City. You'll meet Marilyn Stewart and all the other Stewarts in Family Album USA. In Act 2, Alexandra tries to find Richard. She wants to return his camera bag. Can you tell me how to get to Linden Street in Riverdale? Uh, Richard Stewart, 46 Linden Street, Riverdale, New York. You should take the number one subway. Richard's wife, Marilyn, is waiting for him. Where's my husband? Later, Richard arrives, but he's late. I'm sorry, I'm so late. I had a really bad day. Marilyn tries to find Richard's bag. Hello? Yes, the number, please, of the Staten Island Ferry Lost and Found Office. Will Marilyn find the bag? Sure. Can you tell me how to get to Linden Street in Riverdale? Uh, Richard Stewart, 46 Linden Street, Riverdale, New York. You should take the number one subway. Is there a station near here? Yes, the station's that way. You should take the number one train to Van Cortlandt Park. Number one train to Van Cortlandt Park. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Good luck. Remember, the number one train, the uptown platform. Thank you. Is this pink too bright for me? Mm-hmm. 
It is a very bright pink. Try this. It's size eight, but I wear size 10. How about green? It's size 10. Let me try it on. I I'm taking too much of your time. Six o'clock. Where's my husband? I was expecting him here at 5.45. Don't worry, the traffic is very heavy at this hour. I know. We're going to be late for dinner. I'll take this green sweater. I like the color on me, don't you? I think it looks terrific on you. I'm sorry, I'm so late. I had a really bad day. It's 10 after 6, we're late. Robbie's cooking tonight and dinner's at 6.30. I know, I know. I'm really sorry. I left my bag of film on the ferry. I went back for it, but the ferry was gone. I lost a whole day's work. I'll call the Staten Island Ferry Lost and Found Office. I didn't think of that. Thanks. Hello? Yes, the number, please, of the Staten Island Ferry Lost and Found Office. Five 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 zero eight zero eight. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Marilyn. Hello? Did anyone find a camera bag this afternoon? A small canvas bag. On the J. F. Kennedy ferry. No? Maybe someone will find it. The name is Stuart. Richard Stewart, and the telephone number is 555-3090. Thank you. Sorry, Richard, they don't have it. Thanks anyway. But there was a girl on the ferry. Tell now, maybe... me about it on the way home. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your help. Thanks a lot. I want to thank you for your help. Thank you. Glad that I could help. Don't mention it. I'm glad that I could help. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, Gerald. And yeah, thank you, Mrs. Fan. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It was very nice of you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't mention it. I'm glad that I could help. My pleasure. It was nothing. You're welcome. Number one train to Van Cortland Park. Thank you. Anytime. Good luck. that I could help. My pleasure, it was nothing. You're welcome. Thank you for your help. Thanks a lot. I want to thank you for your help. Thank you! Glad that I could help. Don't mention it. I'm glad that I could help. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry, Richard, they don't have it. Thanks anyway. Thanks anyway, it was nice of you to try I appreciate it, thanks a lot, thank you Anytime, don't mention it, I really tried to help You're welcome, my pleasure, anytime Thank you You're welcome In Act 3, the Stewart family has dinner together Robbie, the dinner was terrific Richard is upset about losing his camera bag. Thinking about that bag of film. And his mother, Ellen, tries to help. Don't worry, Richard. Someone will find it. Then the doorbell rings. Who is at the door?
And give her a teaspoon of the medicine after every meal. Don't worry, she'll be fine. You're welcome. Goodbye. Uh, How are you? I'm tired and hungry. Well, mm. Marilyn and Richard call. They'll be here soon, and then we'll eat. All right. Is, uh, is Susan coming? Well, she'll be here later. She has to work late tonight. And what's Robbie cooking for dinner? <laughs> it's a surprise. I hope it's pasta. Robbie, the dinner was terrific. Yes. <clears throat> It was delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's for dessert? Oh, I forgot dessert. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. We've got lots of ice cream. Oh, I'd love some ice cream. Well, there's um, chocolate and coffee and a little vanilla. I'll have vanilla. Is that all right with everyone? I'll have chocolate. Me too. Um... One scoop of coffee and one scoop of chocolate for me. Robbie, could you help me, sir? I keep thinking about that bag of film. Eight rolls, a whole day's work. And good stuff, too. Don't worry, Richard. Someone will find it. I'll get it. Hello. Hello. Does Richard Stewart live here? Yes, he's my brother. I'm Robbie. Robbie Stewart? I'm Alexandra Papa. How do you do? Your brother left his bag of film on the ferry boat. I found it. And I'm really glad to see you. I, I mean, my brother will be really glad to see you. Robbie, who is it? It's Richard's film. I mean, Alexander Pappas. Come in, please. Alexandra. Hello, Richard. I found your bag. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Alexandra, let me introduce you. This is my wife, Marilyn. Richard showed me your photo. How do you do? Oh, yes, Richard told us all about you. It's nice to meet you. And this is my mother, Ellen Stewart. How do you do? And my father, Dr. Philip Stewart. Nice to meet you, Alexandra. And uh, you met Robbie. Yes. And you must be Susan. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I'm so glad you found the bag and took the time and trouble to return it. Oh, it was no trouble. I just took the wrong train. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? Thank you. No. I'm late for dinner at my house. I really have to go. Oh, would you like to call home? I'd appreciate that. Please, use the phone. Thanks. Excuse me. Alexandra is a high school exchange student from Greece. Where does she live? With a family in the Bronx. Oh, that's not too far from here. Uh, take it easy, Robbie. <laughs> Thank you. I can only stay a few minutes. Have some ice tea. Thanks, Mrs. Please sit down, Alexandra. So, you're an exchange student. Uh, where do you go to school? At the Bronx High School of Science. Oh, that's a very good school. What are your favorite subjects? Biology and mathematics. Richard tells me you're a doctor. Yes, a pediatrician. And what does your father do? He's a lawyer in Thessaloniki. Mm. Would you like some pasta? I made it myself. It might be a little cold. Okay. No. I do have to go. It was nice meeting you all. Well, maybe you'll come for lunch some Sunday so we can really thank you for bringing Richard's bag back. Maybe. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Goodbye. Can I drive you home? No, thanks. The train is just up the street. It won't take me long at all. You really saved the day for me, Alexandra. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night.
She's a smart young lady. And very nice. Very. Hey, she forgot her bag. Oh, I guess we'll be seeing Alexandra again. Right, Bobby? I'm a photographer. I'm Martha Van. I'm Richard. What's your name? Carol. Uh, by the way, I'm Richard. What's your name? Alexandra. We live in California. Are you from New York? No, I'm from Greece. I'm Robbie. Robbie Stewart? I'm Alexandra Papas. How do you do? Alexandra, let me introduce you. This is my wife, Marilyn. Richard showed me your photo. How do you do? Richard told us all about you. It's nice to meet you. And this is my mother, Ellen Stewart. How do you do? And my father, Dr. Philip Stewart. Nice to meet you, Alexandra. And uh, you met Robbie. Yes. And you must be Susan. Hi. Hi. It was nice meeting you. One of this story, Susan Stewart and Harry Bennett don't know each other. They have a dinner date tonight. But Harry is late, very late. He's lost somewhere in New York City. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for 83 Worcester Street. Will Harry find Susan's apartment? What do you want? Uh, where is 83 Wooster Street? That's easy. Walk to the corner, yeah. then make a left turn, then walk two blocks to the traffic light, make another left to Wooster. Thank you. To the corner, and then a left. Yeah, a left. Hot dog? Only 75 cents? No, thank you. I have a dinner date. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for 83 Worcester Street. Yes. Worcester Street is two blocks, and 83 is to the right. Um, about two houses. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.
Sally Bennett. Is this Susan? Yes, it is. Come up. I'm on the top floor. Hello, Harry. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Susan. Sorry I'm late. The uh, traffic, the parking. I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> What pretty flowers. Thank you. Oh, please, come in. Uh. Don't worry about being late. It's fine. Excuse the mess. I just moved here. Oh, I'd like you to meet my sister-in-law, Marilyn. Marilyn Stewart, this is Harry Bennett. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Harry. Are we too late for our dinner reservation? No, the restaurant will hold our table. I know the owner very well. I eat there a lot. Do you know the phone number of the restaurant? I'd uh, like to call home and leave the number with the babysitter. Sure. Uh, the number is... Five, 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 seventeen, twenty. May I use the phone? Five, 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 one, seven, two, oh. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hi, Michelle. It's Daddy. Can I speak to Betty? I want to leave the phone number of the restaurant. Hi, Betty. I'll be at five, 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 seventeen, twenty. Okay, thanks. See you later. Well, that's done. Shall we go? I'm ready. <laughs> See you later, Marilyn. Have a nice evening. Bye, Marilyn. Hope to see you again. Me too. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks. After you. Can you help me? Sure. What do you want? Uh, where is 83 Wooster Street? That's easy. Walk to the corner, yeah. then make a left turn, then walk two blocks to the traffic light, make another left to Wooster. Thank you. To the corner, and then a left. Walk to the corner, then make a left turn, then walk two blocks to the traffic light, make another left to Wooster. Come on, Harry. It's your turn. Follow the directions. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for 83 Wooster Street. Yes, Wooster Street is two blocks, and 83 is to the right. Wooster Street is two blocks, and 83 is to the right. Come on, Harry. It's your turn. Follow the directions. Congratulations, Harry. You found 83 Worcester Street. Now, Harry, let's try some new directions. Go to the traffic light at the corner of Prince Street and make a right turn. Go one block and make a left at Green Street. Go to 290 Green Street. Congratulations, Harry. You did it. Coming up in Act Two, Susan and Harry go to a restaurant in Susan's neighborhood. Susan knows Somsak, the owner. Somsak is from Thailand and serves Thai food in his restaurant. What would you like to eat? I'd like the mee crop. <laughs> Harry, would you like to see a menu? No, it's okay. I'll have the uh, mee crop also. May I bring you a salad? Oh, yes. But something is wrong, and Harry leaves the restaurant. Why is Harry leaving? Ah, oh, Miss Stewart, welcome. 
How are you? Fine, Sunset. And you? Fine, thank you. This is my friend, Harry Bennett. Pleased to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Any friend of Mrs. George is welcome at Sound Socks. Follow me, please. I like it. I do, too. I come here often. Special place for special people. Thank you, Sunset. Well, nice restaurant. Would you like something to drink? Yes, I'd like a glass of ginger ale with ice. Harry, what would you like? Do you have a dry white wine? How about a California Chablis? Chablis is fine. What would you like to eat? I'd like the meat crop. <laughs> Harry, would you like to see a menu? No, it's okay. I'll have the uh, meat crop also. What is it? <laughs> Crispy fried noodles. Oh. I love them. <laughs> May I bring you a salad? Oh, yes. What do you recommend today? I recommend rose petal salad, special for new friends. Rose petal salad? Why not? <laughs> I'll take care of everything. I hope you're hungry. What? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Starving. Well, I... <laughs> uh, what do you do at Universe Toy Company? I'm the vice president of New Toy Development. Terrific. I know you're a CPA. <laughs> That's true. Harry Bennett, certified public accountant. I love numbers. I do some work for Smith & Dale, your company's accounting firm. And so... Here we are. Yes. I have a daughter. I know. How old is she? She's nine years old. That's a nice age. What's her name? Michelle. Do you have a picture of her? She's very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Rose petal salad. And there's a phone call for you, Mr. Bennett. Excuse me. I hope nothing is wrong. I'll get the rest of the dinner. Excuse me. Please forgive me, Susan, but I have to leave. I feel terrible, but... What's the matter? My daughter isn't feeling well. Oh, no. Is it serious? I don't know. The uh, babysitter says she has a stomach ache and she's crying. I'll have to go home. Forgive me? Of course. I'm so sorry for Michelle. <laughs> and you didn't have a chance to eat. Well, it's okay. Uh, let me take you home first. No, no. Please, go ahead. It's our first date. We'll make another. Please don't worry. I'll phone you. I hope your daughter is all right. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Somsack is offering. Would you like something to drink? Would you like? Would you like something to drink? Would you like something to drink? How about a California Chablis? How about, how about a California Chablis? How about a California Chablis? May I bring you a salad? May I bring, may I bring, may I bring you a salad? May I bring, may I bring you a salad? Would you like a cup of coffee? How about some herbal tea? May I bring you some dessert? Susan and Harry are ordering. I'd like a glass of ginger ale with ice. I'd like, I'd like a glass of ginger ale with ice. I'd like, 
a glass of ginger ale with us. Do you have a dry white wine? Do you have, do you have a dry white wine? Do you have a dry white wine? I'll have the uh, Meekrop also. I'll have, I'll have the Meekrop also. I'll have the Meekrop also. Do you have a dry white wine? How about a California Chablis? That's fine! In Act 3 of this story, Susan has dinner with Marilyn, her sister-in-law. This food is delicious. Then, Harry surprises Susan. Hi. And they talk. Is there anyone else in your life? No, not yet. Will Susan and Harry see each other again? What happened? The babysitter called. His daughter is sick. What's wrong? I think she has a stomach ache. Oh. He's a good father. So, what do you think of him? He's very nice. But I think he was nervous tonight. It was his first date in two years. Will you see him again? I hope so. This food is delicious. <laughs> he didn't get a thing to eat. You ordered enough for three or four people. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. The food is delicious. Who is that? Do you think it's... No. <laughs> You won't believe it, Marilyn. I believe it, even without looking. Hi. How? Your downstairs neighbor let me in. Did you go home? I did, but everything is okay, so I decided to come back. I, uh, to apologize for leaving so early. I brought you a little gift. It's a bonsai tree for your new apartment. Hi, Marilyn. I, I hope it's not too late. Oh, not at all. We're still eating. <laughs> Please, come in. Join us. It's our meal from the restaurant. Oh. <laughs> and how is your daughter? Oh, she's fine. It was only a tummy ache. <gasps> it's good that you went back. Yes, I, uh, I think it's important for me to be there since her mother died. I agree. Aren't you hungry? As a matter of fact, I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of food left. Mmm, this is delicious. Enjoy. I'm going to excuse myself. I have a lot of work to do to get ready for tomorrow. Good night, Harry. It was nice meeting you. Bye, Marilyn. Good night, Susan. Good night, Marilyn. She's going to a fashion show here in the city tomorrow. She's sleeping here, so she won't have to travel from Riverdale in the morning. You two must be close. We are. Uh, the whole Stewart family is close. I like that. <laughs> and then, two years ago, my wife died. You miss her? I do, yes. But I have Michelle, and with time... 
Is there anyone else in your life? No, not yet. What about you? Oh, I date occasionally, but my work keeps me busy. Mm. Speaking of keeping busy, I have an early start tomorrow, and the babysitter has to get home. Ah, oh, where did the time go? It's midnight. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I had a nice evening. Me too, Harry. Harry. Yes. I'd like to meet your daughter someday. Uh, uh, does that mean that I can see you again? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll call you and we'll go out to dinner. Please do. I promise I won't leave early. It was for a good reason. <laughs> you know something? What? I think we're going to be good friends. Good night, Susan. Good night, Harry. Have a safe trip home. Are you all right? Sorry. I never liked that umbrella stand. <laughs> Good night, Harry. He works with numbers. He's an accountant. He manages your money. He's an accountant. He plans your taxes. An accountant. That's his occupation. His job. She's in business. She's a vice president. A vice president. In a toy company. She's in business. She's the boss. A vice president. That's her occupation. Her job. She's a sales clerk. She sells clothing. She's a sales clerk. She works in a store. Yeah, she's a sales clerk. She designs clothing, too. A sales clerk. That's her occupation. Her job. She's a teacher. That's her job. Yeah. She's a nurse. That's her job. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The stewards are excited. In this act, they prepare for Grandpa's arrival from Florida. Oh, let's go upstairs and, and prepare Grandpa's room. You know, maybe I'll put together some photos of Grandpa as a welcome present. I want to put some of my good hangers in Grandpa's closet. Ellen and Marilyn prepare Grandpa's room and notice his old trunk. What's inside? I don't know. It's locked. What's inside the trunk? Marilyn, you want coffee or tea? Coffee, please. I am so excited. At this time tomorrow morning, Grandpa will be sitting in the kitchen with us. When does he arrive? At 
six o'clock this evening? By plane? No, by train. Are we picking him up at the station? Not Grandpa. He doesn't want anybody picking him up. <laughs> he likes to be independent. Huh. Oh, let's go upstairs and, and prepare Grandpa's room. Right. Let's do it. Okay. Morning, Mom. Well, Morning. Well, hi, fellas. Hello. Hi, honey. Come on. Morning, Marilyn. Morning, Marilyn. Mm, we're going upstairs to set up Grandpa's room. Okay. There's coffee ready. I'm really excited about seeing Grandpa. Me too. Uh, milk, please. He's so funny. He always makes me laugh. I hope Grandpa's going to like living with us. I think he will. It just takes time to feel comfortable in a new place. Won't he miss being in Florida? Well, he will, but I think he'll like being here with the family. Are you sure about that? It's crazy here most of the time. Yeah, but it's fun. That's for sure. You know, maybe I'll put together some photos of Grandpa as a welcome present. That's a neat idea. What can I do? I've got it. I have a picture of Grandpa mm -hmm. and Dad and me in my wallet. It's from the Fathers and Sons <clears throat> breakfast at my junior high school graduation. Oh, I remember this picture. I'd really like to pick up Grandpa at the railroad station. Railroad stations or airports, Grandpa always tells us he'll get here by himself. He's something. <laughs> All grandpa stuff? That's it. But I'm sure he has a few bags with him on the train. What's inside? I don't know. It's locked. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh, hi, darling. Good morning, Philip. I want to put some of my good hangers in grandpa's closet. You know? I'm very excited about his arrival. <sighs> we are too. Susan called early this morning. She's unhappy because uh, she's had to go to Chicago on a business trip and can't leave till tonight. She wants to be here for Grandpa. Well, Grandpa will be disappointed, too. He loves Susan. She always reminds him of Grandma. Well, how's everything here? Fine. We were just wondering about this trunk. It's locked. I have the key. Grandpa sent it to me. He doesn't want anybody picking him up. He likes to be independent. I think that's good. He's got his own way of doing things. He likes to take care of himself. I guess you're right. He's so funny. He always makes me laugh. I guess he has a good sense of humor. Yeah, I bet he's a lot of fun. Grandpa always tells us he'll get here by himself. He's something. <laughs> In my opinion, he's a very special man. What do you think? Well, I believe I'm going to like him. But... But what? Won't he miss being in Florida? Well, he will, but I think he'll like being here with the family. I suppose he'll miss his home in Florida and his independence. I suppose you're right. But what about you? What do you think? What kind of man is Grandpa? What do you imagine he's like? Why is he moving away from Florida? And how does he feel about moving to Riverdale? What do you think? Let's see. In the second act, Grandpa travels to New York City on the train and meets a woman named Elsa Tobin. They enjoy talking to each other. You said you have family in New York. Yes, indeed. Grandpa is looking forward to seeing his family, but does he want to stay with them permanently? Are you going to live with them? Yes. Permanently? Well, they want me to. Does he want to stay?
taken? No, it's not taken. Oh, thank you. Oh, let me help you with this. Oh, thank you. Do you want to sit by the window? No, no, no. I like the aisle seat better. Please, you sit by the window. My name is Stewart, Malcolm Stewart. Pleased to meet you. I'm Elsa Tobin. How do you do? Do you uh, live in New York? No, no, I'm from Florida. I am too. <laughs> but uh, didn't you just get on? No, no, I just changed my seat. A man next to me was smoking, and smoke really bothers me. <laughs> Where are you from in Florida? Uh, Titusville. It's near Orlando. Small world. I'm from Titusville, too. <laughs> really? <laughs> what part? My husband and I live near Spaceport. Well, I know that area. My house is uh, only a few miles from Spaceport. Do you uh, still live there? Oh, yes. Yes, my husband's there now. He couldn't take time off to come to New York with me. Mm. Do you still live there? No. I sold the house and the furniture, put a few personal things in an old trunk, and shipped it to my children in New York. That's my destination. Are you married? My wife died four years ago. She was a wonderful woman, a real friend. I'm sorry. Really. I'm sorry. Lots of wonderful memories. We were married almost 50 years. Well, 47 to be exact. John and I celebrate our 40th anniversary next month. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> what does uh, John do? He's an aerospace engineer and works for Orlando Aircraft Corporation. Mm. He started with them... Almost 40 years ago. Mm. What do you do? I just retired. I had my own company, a construction company. Road, bridges, big stuff. But I just sold it and retired. Excuse me, ma'am. Ticket, please. Would you kindly hold these keys, please? Oh. I have a ticket, I know. I was in the smoking section. It's okay, lady, take your time. I'm sure it's in your purse, Mrs. Tobin. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and here are your keys. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have family in New York? No, no. But I do have very close friends in New York City. Mm. We like to go to the theater together. You said you have family in New York. Yes, indeed. A son and his wife and their three children. My grandchildren. You must be excited. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Are you going to live with them? Yes. Permanently? Well, they want me to, but it's too early to know for sure. I'm pretty independent. I tried to teach my kids the importance of independence, but I'm not sure I want to be alone. Some people don't mind being alone. I do. I understand. But tell me, why did you stop working? I retired because I wanted to be with my family. I didn't want to be alone anymore. <laughs> Bye.
What's your name? My name is Stuart, Malcolm Stuart. Pleased to meet you. What's your name? I'm Elsa Tobin. How do you do? How do you do? Titusville. Where do you live? Small world. I'm from Titusville, too. It's a small, small world. How do you do? Are you married, yes or no? Please tell me, let me know. John and I celebrate our 40th anniversary next month. Retired. Do you have family in New York? No. Do you have family in New York? Yes, indeed. I'm pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you. In the third act, Grandpa arrives in New York. Well, here we are. <laughs> and the night is full of surprises. Presents for Grandpa. Presents? For me? And Grandpa opens the trunk. What's inside the trunk? is happy to announce our arrival in New York City. The train will be stopping in five minutes. Please check to be sure you have your belongings and have a good stay in the Big Apple. Thank you. Well, here we are. <laughs> it was so nice meeting you, Mr. Stewart. And nice meeting you too, Mrs. Tobin. Please look us up. We're in the phone book. Dr. Philip Stewart in Riverdale. Your son. That's right. And have a good time in New York. And don't be so independent. You're very lucky to have a caring family. When can we go fishing? Robbie, we'll go fishing soon. And we'll take your dad with us. I'm ready, Grandpa. You name the day. <laughs> That's a great idea, Grandpa. Philip needs a day off. <laughs> Let's give him our presents now. Good idea. Presents? For me? From me and Marilyn. Oh. And this one's from me. <laughs> I looked all over the house to find it. <laughs> Richard, these are terrific pictures. This one really brings back memories. You remember that day, Robbie? I sure do. It was fun. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry Susan isn't here. I miss her very much. She feels bad, too, Grandpa. She called to say the plane was delayed. You know airports. Mm. I can't wait to see her. She looks just like Grandma at that age. <laughs> ah, I'd better unpack. I started traveling 24 hours ago. Not 
so young anymore. Don't you want something to eat? No, thanks. I, after a good night's sleep, I'll enjoy breakfast even more. Well, come on, Dad. Ellen and I'll take you to your room. I'm sure glad you're here, Grandpa. Hi. Good night, Grandpa. Hi. Pleasant dreams. Mm. <sighs> Philip, do you have the key to the trunk? I have the key, but it doesn't work. <clears throat> I sent the wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> I have something for you. Made it myself. I think you'll enjoy it. I researched it for over a year. It's our family tree. Oh, Grandpa. How exciting. <laughs> Fabulous. Why, I didn't know that your grandfather was born in Germany. Lots of interesting information about our family. A gift from me. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Grandpa! Grandpa! <laughs> oh, Grandpa! <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, you look so beautiful, Susan. My granddaughter. Like I always said, you look just like Grandma. <laughs> I think you're going to be very happy here with me. I know you will. <laughs> I don't feel alone anymore. <laughs> Malcolm Stewart is not alone anymore, that's for sure. In fact, He'll have his family around him every day of his life now. Finding some peace and quiet may be a little difficult. <laughs> but my father won't be lonely anymore. He has me, Philip Stewart, nearby. And the rest of his family. There's Ellen, his daughter-in-law. You know, I met Ellen when I was a student at the University of Michigan. Later, she became my wife. We have three children now. Our oldest son is a photographer. Richard is very talented. Like his grandfather. Marilyn is talented too. She designs clothing. Marilyn is Richard's wife. She's also a sister-in-law to Susan. Susan is my daughter. Susan reminds us of her grandmother, Bernice Cassidy Stewart, my mother. She was kind, intelligent, and lovable, like Susan. Susan has two brothers, Richard and Robert. We call him Robbie. He's our other son. He loves his grandfather very much. Well, that's our family, the Stewarts. Did you follow me? Let's see, who is my daughter? That's it, Susan is my daughter. How about this? Who is Robbie's grandfather? Malcolm is Robbie's grandfather. Okay, who is Susan's sister-in-law? Marilyn is Susan's sister-in-law. That's right. <laughs> well, that's our family, and I love them all.
in Act One, Marilyn comes home from her aerobics class very tired. My new exercise class is so hard. But her husband, Richard, doesn't agree with her. I think aerobics is easy. So, they make a bet. I bet I can go one hour in your class this morning and not feel a thing. Who's going to win the bet? Exercise class is so hard. <sighs> Your new exercise class? Yeah. My new advanced exercise class. Why advanced? My instructor thought that the beginner's class was too easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> too easy for you? Don't laugh! In the beginner's class, they give you a chance to rest between exercises. So? The advanced class is non-stop. I lift weights every morning for 60 minutes without stopping. No problem. Listen, Richard. Doing aerobics for an hour is a lot different than lifting weights. Yeah, quite a bit different. I think aerobics is easy. I could work out in your class with no problem. You think so? Oh, without a doubt. When's the next class? Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Try it. Tomorrow morning, after lifting weights, I'll try aerobics. It's a snap. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Aren't you going to the aerobics class this morning? Of course. Easy. No sweat. You are not going to be able to move after this and the aerobics class. Are you kidding me? It's going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> you want to bet? Yeah, what's the bet? I bet I can go one hour in your class this morning and not feel a thing. The bet is... I win and you cook dinner for the entire family. Or you win and I cook dinner for the entire family. It's a bet. Okay. Call my instructor, Jack Davis, right now. His number is 555-8842. The advanced class starts at 10 o'clock. Oh, it's 820 now. It only takes eight minutes by bicycle to the aerobics class. Give him a call. Davis Aerobic Center for Good Health. Jack Davis, please. This is Jack Davis. Uh, hello, this is Richard Stewart. My wife, Marilyn Stewart, is a member of your program. I'd like to come to the 10 o'clock advanced class this morning. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, be here a few minutes early. You need to complete some forms before the class. Thanks, I'm on my way over. Bye. Bye-bye. It's all set. I'm going. See you later. Good luck. Um, don't 
Don't forget about the bet. Dinner for the entire family, and that includes Susan. Don't you forget. I think aerobics is easy. It's easy. No problem. It's a piece of cake. No sweat. It's easy. No problem. It's a piece of cake. No sweat. It's a snack. It's easy. No problem. It's a piece of cake. No sweat. It's a snack. My new exercise class is so hard. It's not easy. It's rough. It's difficult. It's tough. It's not easy. It's rough. Really difficult. It's hard and it's tough. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's rough. It's very hard. It's difficult. It's hard and it's tough, tough, tough. I think aerobics is easy. It's easy, no problem. It's a piece of cake, no sweat. My new exercise class is so hard. It's not easy. It's rough. It's difficult. It's tough. I think aerobics is easy. It's not easy. My new exercise class is so hard. It's easy. I think aerobics is easy. It's not easy. It's a snap. A snap. No, it's tough, tough, tough. In the second act, Richard goes to the aerobics center and Jack Davis asks him to take some photographs. Maybe you can photograph a class, and I can give you and Mrs. Stewart a month of classes free. So Richard photographs the class. Later, when Richard gets home, Marilyn is surprised. What is wrong with you? Do, 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 nothing. I am in excellent health. I have ideal blood pressure, a perfect heart. In other words, I am in wonderful condition. So, who's gonna win the bet? Okay, Richard, that's terrific. Your pressure is 120 over 75, and that's fine. Now stand up, please. Good. It's 122 over 80. You can sit down. When was your last complete physical? Um, six months ago. Good. Do you have any back or knee problems? Nope. I'm in perfect health. What do you do for a living, Mr. Stewart? I'm a photographer. Interesting. What do you photograph? <sighs> Everything. The American scene. People, places, events. Did you ever think of photographing an aerobics class? No. I can't remember taking pictures of people exercising. But don't you think it'd be a good subject? Sure. I need some good photos for my advertising, Mr. Stewart. Maybe you can photograph a class, and I can give you and Mrs. Stewart a month of classes free. When can I photograph a class? Any time. How about today? Terrific! Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Turn around, lines. Go first, stretch up, and we're going to go left first.
left, right. Enjoy it. <laughs> Richard, did you go to the Davis aerobics class today? Yes, I went to the aerobics class today. What is wrong with you? Do, 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 nothing. I am in excellent health. I have ideal blood pressure, a perfect heart. In other words, I'm in wonderful condition. Richard, did you go to the aerobics class, really? Uh, don't forget to invite Susan for dinner. And your legs don't hurt? Hurt? What do you mean? What about your arms? Lift your arms up like this. And they don't hurt? Not even a little? No. You are in great condition. I can't believe it. Do? Excuse me? What do you do? You are not speaking clearly. I asked, what do you do? What do you do? You mean, what do you do? Yes, what do you do? Well, I speak English slowly and clearly. I don't understand your pronunciation. But a lot of people speak English the way I speak English. Listen. What do you do for a living, Mr. Stewart? <laughs> what do you photograph? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't believe this. What do you mean? I mean, they are pushing the sounds together. That's right. Did you like listening to them? What? Did you hear me? Yes, I did. Did you really say, did ya? Did you ever think of photographing an aerobics class? He said it too! Don't you love it? Don't ya? More pushing together! But don't you like this pronunciation? It's very common, very frequent. Very interesting, I suppose. But don't you think it'd be a good subject? Maybe we can change the subject. Okay, maybe we can change the subject. We can talk about something else. Maybe you can photograph a class. Oh, what can I say? What do you? Did you? Don't you? Oh! <laughs> In the last act, Richard tells the truth. I didn't really exercise. And the bet is still on. Remember, you win, and I cook dinner for the entire family. You win, and I cook dinner for the entire family. And Richard goes to the class. Marilyn goes, too. Who's going to cook dinner tonight? Grandpa, Ellen, Philip, Robbie, you and me. That's six steaks. Don't forget Susan. Seven steaks. Cooking dinner for the entire family is not so easy. The shopping, salad, tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, and onions. Main course, steak and potatoes. Richard, how much broccoli do I need for seven people? Marilyn, I have to tell you something. Mm -hmm. At today's exercise class... Yes, Richard? <clears throat> well, um... I didn't really exercise. I knew it. I wanted to, but Jack Davis needed a photographer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marilyn.
I don't understand. Did you exercise or not? No. Instead of exercising, I photographed the class. And you didn't exercise? No. There's another advanced class. Today at four o'clock. We'll go together. What about the bet? Oh, the bet is still on. But, uh, you shop for the groceries. Remember, you win and I cook dinner for the entire family. You win and I cook dinner for the entire family. Including Susan. Four o'clock at the advanced exercise class with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. Skip hop front. Twist. Again. Okay. Now, scissors. This is fun. It's a piece of cake. Yeah, just wait. Five, six, seven, go right. One, two. That's it for today. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you, Jack, but no thank you. The events exercise class is uh, not so easy, huh? No. No, you, you were right. I was wrong. Come on, Richard. Oh. Get up. Oh. Let's go. You have to cook dinner for the entire family. <laughs> Marilyn, I'm exhausted. I can't move. Well, you'll do it. Oh. It's a piece of cake. Excuse me, Richard, Marilyn. You are a terrific instructor, Jack. Thanks. Oh. But I have a question. Is this your very first advanced aerobics class? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Well, you are in great shape, Richard. Very few people last in this class for the full hour the very first time. Oh. It's true. You are in great shape. Thanks. I think we'll cook dinner together. <laughs> mm. We'll cook dinner together. We're going to cook dinner. Cook dinner together tonight. For how many people? Grandpa, Ellen, Philip, Robbie, you and me. That's six. Don't forget Susan. That's seven. And you can count it so you ask how many. How many? You can count them so you ask how, how many, many people? people. What's for dinner? Steak and potatoes. Richard, how much broccoli do I need for seven people? How much broccoli? You can't count it, so you ask how much. How much? You can't count it, so you ask how much broccoli. What's for dinner? The salad. We, we need, need tomatoes, tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, and onions. Tomatoes? Hmm. You have tomatoes, you can count them. How many? You can count them, so you ask how, how many, many tomatoes? Lettuce? Hmm. You have lettuce, you can't count it. How much? 
You can't count it, so you ask How much lettuce? Cucumbers? Hmm. If you have cucumbers, you can count them. How many? You can count them, so you ask How many cucumbers? Onions? As this act begins, Philip is very busy. Too busy to spend time with Robbie. Dad and I were planning to go to the game, but he has to work today. So Grandpa has an idea. Maybe uh, your dad and I could take you fishing with us. But Robbie knows Philip probably can't go. But Dad is always so busy. So, Grandpa talks to Philip. You're working pretty hard these days. I guess I am. What does Philip decide to do? Can I help? Yes, indeed. Hand me two eggs from the refrigerator, and I'll make you two fried eggs. How about some bacon? Well, I've made enough for an army. You going to the baseball game today? It's a perfect day for it. A little cloudy, but nice and warm. Dad and I were planning to go to the game, but he has to work today, and my friends don't want to go. It's not an important game anyway. Do you have any other plans for the day? Well, I'll work on my computer. I have a new math program and I want to learn how to use it. Maybe you can teach me how to work on a computer someday. Anytime. It's really easy, but like anything, you need to work at it, Grandpa. Mm. <laughs> this bacon is great. I love crispy bacon. <laughs> well, what are you doing tomorrow? Nothing much. Well, maybe uh, your dad and I could take you fishing with us. I'd like that, but... But what? Uh, but Dad is always so busy. Well, uh, can you come fishing with me tomorrow? Sure I can. Robbie says you can't take him to the game today. I really feel bad about it, but they, uh, they need me at the hospital today in the children's ward. I understand. Maybe we can spend some time together next weekend. Definitely. We should. You and Robbie and me. Remember our first fishing trip? I sure do. Well, I've got to run, Dad. See you later. Uh, we're fishing? I'm thinking about it. Oh, how's work? Uh, all the usual problems. Hmm. You're working pretty hard these days. I guess I am. When did you last go fishing with Robbie? Oh, I remember exactly. Uh, on his birthday, June 2nd, two years ago. <laughs> we didn't catch anything. <laughs> remember our fishing trips? Yes. I loved them. Remember catching your first fish? <laughs> How could I forget I fell out of the boat? <laughs> uh, we had some good times together. Yes, we did. Maybe we should do it again. How about tomorrow? Don't you have to work? My paperwork will wait. Oh, Robbie will be thrilled. I am too, son. We'll spend more time with Robbie. Tomorrow. It'll be like old times for you and me. And Robbie will love it. 
Well, what's the weather going to be like? Radio says sunny and mild. Oh. Well, I'll tell Robbie. And, uh, thanks, Dad. Don't thank me. I'm just being a grandfather. What's the weather going to be like? Radio says sunny and mild. What's the weather going to be like in the USA today? In New York City, home of the Statue of Liberty and all those skyscrapers and the surrounding area, it'll be sunny and mild. A little cloudy, but nice and warm. What a beautiful day to do some fishing. Down in the southeast today, the weather will be gorgeous. In Miami, Florida, a popular vacation spot, it's going to be sunny and hot, hot, hot. It's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 32 degrees Celsius now. A perfect day for the beach. <sighs> Not so in St. Louis, Missouri, the gateway to the west. It's cool and windy. We expect rain there and throughout the Midwest this afternoon. So get out your umbrella. And in the Rocky Mountains, it's freezing. Ooh. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's zero degrees Celsius outside Denver, Colorado. There's two feet of snow already, and it's going to snow some more. It's a perfect place for skiing. Out on the West Coast in Los Angeles, California, home of Hollywood movie stars and fast cars, it's sunny and warm. It'll be a beautiful day for a drive up the coast. And that's the weather in the USA Today. Coming up in Act Two, Grandpa, Philip, and Robbie go fishing. I just saw a big one. A young boy named Albert is fishing too, but he's alone. Grandpa teaches Robbie his fisherman's magic. Fish, fish, send me a fish. And Robbie gets lucky. I got one! But later, there's trouble. catch some fish. In order to catch fish, you have to do this. Here we go. That's it. Then, drop it into the water. Now, all of this comes before eating. Okay? How do you know so much about fishing? Grandpa taught me. We spent a lot of time fishing together. Now, the important thing is to get the uh, hook close to the fish, all right? Like this. I think I see some fish right under us, Dad. Oh, not a chance. I just saw a big one. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? Albert. Are you all alone? Yes, sir. How old are you, Albert? I'm ten. Where's your father? He's up there at the lodge. Does he know you're here? Yes, sir. Okay, Robbie, uh, maybe you should watch him. The water's pretty deep here. I'll watch him, Dad.
What time is it? It's almost lunchtime. And no fish yet. I can go up to the lodge for some hot dogs and drinks. No way. We're here to catch our lunch. To catch fish? You need the right magic. That's right. I forgot the right magic. <laughs> hey, do it for Robbie, Dad. <laughs> you remember? Sure. Yeah, go on. Well, first, you have to turn your hat around like this. Then you close your eyes and say the magic words. Fish. Fish. Send me a fish. 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 Send me a fish. I got one. See, it works. <laughs> it's a big one. Well, it'll always work for me, too. <laughs> Grandpa, get the net, please. <laughs> Dad, you got one too. You bet I have. Easy, Philip. Easy. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Well, uh, one more, and I've uh, got a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say the magic word. Bobby's right. Yes, but you did, and we've got our lunch. Let's build a fire and cook it. Uh, come on, Albert, you can help us. I want to stay here and fish. All right. But be careful. Is it finished yet? I think so. I, uh, I hope you like your fish uh, well done. Burned, you mean? Hey, I'm a doctor, not a chef. <laughs> <laughs> Help! Help! I can't swim! Dad, Grandpa, he fell in. Breathing, Philip. Uh, Robbie, run to the car. Uh, uh, bring a, a blanket to my medical bag. Yes, Dad. Now, now, come on, son. Come on, son. Breathe, Albert. Now, first, you have to turn your hat around like this. Then? Then you close your eyes and say the magic words. Last. I got one. First, then, last. What happened first? What happened then? What happened last? First, then, last. Let's try that again, this time with other parts of Act 2. First, they arrived at the lake. Next, Grandpa used the right magic. After that, Robbie caught a fish. Later on, they cooked. They burned the fish. Finally, Albert fell in the water. First, next, after that, later on, finally. What happened first? What happened next? What happened after that? What happened later on? And finally? First, next, after that, later on, finally! 
In the final act, Philip, Robbie, and Grandpa try to help Albert. I want my daddy. We'll take you to him. Later, Grandpa makes a suggestion. What do you say we get back to our fishing? But Philip gets a call from work. Oh, I have to get to a phone. And the fishing trip ends early. How will Robbie feel? I hope so. Oh, that's oh, that's it. That's it. That there. Oh, oh, he's gonna be all right. Uh, Robbie, Robbie, that's it. Wrap him in the blanket, Dad. That's it. That's it. It's all right. It's all right, Albert. You're gonna be okay. I want my daddy. Now, we'll take you to him. Easy now. <laughs> Easy does it. That's it. Your dad is quite a guy. I know, Grandpa. Oh. How is he, Philip? He's asleep. He's going to be fine. Oh. How can I thank all of you? Uh, thank my son, Robbie. He pulled him out of the water. I'm very grateful, Robbie. Dad saved him, not me. I'm so thankful to all of you. So long. He's a lucky boy. Well, what do you say we get back to our fishing? That's a great idea. Uh-oh. It's probably the hospital. I have to get to a phone. It probably means we can't stay. That's okay. One of my patients has a high fever. I have to go to the hospital. I'm sorry, Robbie. I guess I ruined your day. You didn't ruin my day, Dad. I understand. I really do. Philip had to go back to the hospital. He had an emergency. Oh, that's too bad, Robbie. Did it spoil your fun? No, Mom. We had a great time. Well, did you do any fishing? Yeah, we caught lots of them. Look. <laughs> they had a special on frozen fish down at the supermarket. Oh, oh you really had a bad day. Mm. We had a good day. Robbie pulled a boy out of the water. And Dad saved his life. He's a terrific doctor, Mom. I know. Oh, hi, Pa. Hi, son. Hello, Dad. What a day. Hmm. How about a cup of coffee, son? I'd love a cup of coffee. How is the patient? She'll be fine. Was it serious? No. Until today, I was never really interested in medicine. Well, uh, it's hard work. Now I know. I had a, I had a good time today, Robbie. <laughs> Me too. Why don't we do it again? Can we? When? How about next Saturday? Won't you be busy? I'm changing my schedule. Well, do we have a date? We sure do, Dad. Grandpa, can you come? I have other plans, Robbie. But I think you two can have a good time together without me. No, Dad. And certainly not without the right magic. <laughs> <laughs> Spend some time.
time together next weekend. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can spend some time together. Maybe we can stay at home. Maybe get away. Oh, yeah. Cause I really like to be with you. I know we'll have fun, whatever we do. And maybe we can do it again another day. Maybe we can play baseball or go fishing on a summer, fishing on a summer day. What do you say we get back to our fishing? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say we get back to our fishing? What do you say we fish? That's what we want to do. again. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it again? Why don't we find the time? Hey, what do you say? There are lots of things that we can do, and I enjoy spending time with you. So why don't we do it again another day? Today is Thanksgiving Day, an important American holiday. In the first act, Philip prepares an apple pie for the Stewart family. The beginning of my famous Thanksgiving apple pie. One apple. He uses lots of ingredients, but one ingredient is very special. Later, Robbie goes out for a while, but something happens. And Robbie is upset. Happy Turkey Day. What's wrong? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What's gotten into him? Why is Robbie upset? We should get to work or we won't be finished by dinner time. I guess we must. We must. Okay. Ah. Hmm. The beginning of my famous Thanksgiving apple pie. One apple. <laughs> Two apples. Three apples. Four. Apples. Come on, One. Philip. Get busy with your famous apple pie. There's much more to be done. Ah, now, the ingredients. What goes into my apple pie besides apples? Ah, yes. Flour, sugar, butter. Butter, nice and cold and hard. Okay, here are the walnuts. And last but not least, the reason my apple pie is famous, cinnamon. Cinnamon. Ellen, where's the cinnamon? Uh, there is any cinnamon. It's in the cabinet with the salt and pepper. Salt, pepper, dill weed, garlic, powder, cinnamon. Ellen. Yes, Philip. Is it possible that we forgot to buy cinnamon? Yes. It is possible that we forgot to buy cinnamon. How can I make my famous apple pie without cinnamon? 
Good morning. Oh, hi, Robbie. Good morning. Good morning, Robbie. Hey, can you do me a favor? Sure, Dad. What? Remember my uh, apple pie on Thanksgiving? What do you love about it? The apples? Oh, the <laughs> cinnamon. Right. We don't have any cinnamon. I'll go down to Henry's Grocery. He's always open. I'll get some for you. That's my boy. Oh, put your heavy jacket on, Robbie. It's cold outside. Alexandra might call. Tell her I'll call her right back. Okay. Thanks, son. Uh, why does he always have to slam the door? Alexandra, how are you? Fine. Robbie just went to the store. Um, he'll be back soon. He, he said he'd call you. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, certainly. Well, do you have the phone number there? Oh, I see. Please, I know he wants to talk to you. Thank you, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, too. Try to come by later for dessert. Bye. That was Alexandra. She and the Molinas are going to spend Thanksgiving with their cousins. She doesn't have the phone number. Oh, Robbie will be disappointed. <laughs> He'll be grouchy. Or maybe she'll call back. She promised. Here's your cinnamon pot. It was a dollar and sixty cents. Forgot to ask me for the change. <laughs> or did you uh, forget to give it to me? Thanks, son. Alexandra, call. I'll call her back. Uh, she said she'll call you later. She's not at home. You should have your breakfast, son. Make you feel better. Protein, vitamins. She said she'll call back? Yes, she did. Good morning, everyone. Happy Turkey Day. What's wrong? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What's gotten into him? He missed a phone call. From, uh... Yes, Alexandra. Uh... Ah, it's nice to see young love. <laughs> oh, to be young again. Where's your coffee? <laughs> it's possible. Maybe. It's possible. We might, we may, it's possible Let's see Is it possible that we forgot to buy cinnamon? It's Thanksgiving Day And I need to make a pie We have sugar, apples, walnuts And time is going by It's possible there's something I forgot to buy I need some cinnamon Or I can't make the pie Is it possible we forgot? Maybe we forgot Is it possible we forgot? Could be It's possible we forgot Maybe we forgot It's possible we forgot Let's see Alexander might call It's Thanksgiving Day And I'm at home There's someone I want to hear from And waiting by the phone she might call me real soon before we eat When she does my Thanksgiving day will be complete Yes, it's possible she'll call Maybe she'll call It's possible she'll call Could be It's possible
possible she'll call. She might, she may. It's possible she'll call. Let's see. Oh, maybe she'll call back. She promised. It's possible, maybe. It's possible, could be. It's possible she might, she may. Mom, is it for me? In Act Two, Grandpa tries to cheer up Robbie. Oh, look at that float, Robbie. <laughs> look at those funny looking clowns. <laughs> it's for kids. Philip is excited. He wants to watch the football game. What time does the Michigan football game come on? And the telephone rings. Is it Alexandra? Thanksgiving Day Parade is always such great fun. <laughs> Look at that, that Superman balloon. Wow, we just floating along high above Central Parkway. Don't you just love it? Oh, and the bands and the music. John Philip Sousa, I love his music. Oh, oh, oh. oh, look at that float, Robbie. <laughs> look at those funny-looking clowns. <laughs> it's for kids. Well, maybe so. But parades always make me feel like a kid. Remember when you and your dad and I went to the Thanksgiving Day Parade? You were four or five years old, I think. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Susan. How are you? Here's Mom. Hello, Susan. Yes, he missed a phone call from Alexandra. <laughs> yes, I know, but he'll get over it. Good. Then you'll be here about five. Oh, fine. I look forward to seeing you. And Harry and Michelle. Drive carefully. Goodbye. I taste Ellen's turkey dressing. It's delicious. Uh, I'm not surprised. It's Grandma's recipe. It's my favorite part of the meal. What about my famous apple pie? Dad, your apple pie is my favorite dessert. Oh. Hey, how's the parade? Okay. <laughs> Mom, is it for me? No, Robbie. Who was it? Wrong number. Philip, would you join me in the kitchen, please? It's getting late. We have vegetables to prepare. Can I help with anything? No, honey. You just relax with Grandpa. I'll get you to help serve later. Ellen reminds me so much of Grandpa. But what time does the Michigan football game come on? Four. Philip! I'll be back to see the game. <laughs> Grandpa. When did Dad graduate from Michigan? Let me think. Uh, he graduated from medical school in 1960 and from the University of Michigan in 1956. Did you go to Michigan too, Grandpa? Yep. I graduated in 1937. I've got to start thinking about college soon. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa loves the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I love parades. Philip likes to make apple pie. One apple. <laughs> Two apples. He really enjoys it. And Robbie is fond of Alexandra. Philip likes Ellen's turkey dressing. Mm -mm. And Grandpa loves Thanksgiving Day. Happy Turkey Day. Philip is crazy about football. What time does the Michigan football game come on? And Robbie is crazy about Alexandra. Oh, 
Why does he always have to slam the door? Ellen doesn't like that sound. She can't stand it. And Robbie hates waiting for Alexandra to call. He can't stand waiting. But Robbie really likes his mom's turkey dressing. It's my favorite part of the meal. And you can guess his favorite friend is... That's right, Alexandra. He's fond of her. He's crazy about her. He's wild about her. He likes her a lot. In Act 3, the Stewart family and their friends get ready to eat their Thanksgiving dinner. And they give thanks. Then in that spirit, let's each of us give thanks, each in his own way. And Robbie gives thanks in his own way. I'd like to give thanks for Grandpa coming to live with us. And I'd also like to thank my math teacher for giving me a passing grade. <laughs> Later, after dinner, Remember the Michigan football game? And uh, Michigan needs a touchdown. Uh, did you forget something? What did Philip forget? Okay, everybody. I want to welcome Harry and his daughter Michelle to Thanksgiving with us. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. Call me Philip, okay? But first, I think we should take a moment and remember the meaning of Thanksgiving. Philip. I um, took Michelle to a school play about the first Thanksgiving. Well, why don't you tell us about that, Michelle? Thanksgiving was about the Pilgrims, the first settlers in America. They shared the first harvest with the Indians and gave thanks. All right. <laughs> then in that spirit, let's each of us give thanks, each in his own way. Uh, who wants to begin? I will. I give thanks for being here with my family and for being well. I can enjoy you all. <laughs> all right. We love you, Grandpa. Uh, well, I'd like to give thanks for a healthy year, a good job, and for meeting Harry and Michelle. We'd like to give thanks for meeting Susan and the Stewart family. I love uh -huh. you, Daddy. <laughs> thanks, Harry. That was very kind of you. I'd like to give thanks for Grandpa coming to live with us. And I'd also like to thank my math teacher for giving me a passing grade. <laughs> and call me Alexandra. Oh, you call. You go first, Marilyn. I'm thinking, you go first. Um, well, you all know I'm working on my photo album. It's not finished yet. And I'd like to thank Marilyn for being so patient. Thanks, Richard. I should thank you for encouraging me to keep working on my fashion designs. I'm lucky to have a husband with an artistic eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all have a lot to be thankful for. For the food on this table, just like the pilgrims. Hmm. I'll go along with that, Ellen. Well, help me serve, Robbie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful meal, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you. And now to see the end of the football game. Exactly. Where are you going, Philip? Remember the Michigan football game? And uh, Michigan needs a touchdown. Uh, did you forget something? Dad, your famous apple pie? <laughs> Just let me see the score, Ellen. Go ahead, Philip. We should all take a little break before dessert. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, who could that be? Oh, it must be Alexandra. I invited her to come by for dessert. You did? Mm -hmm. I like Ellen. You know everyone, Alexandra. No, she doesn't know Harry Bennett and his daughter, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Hello, Hello, Alexandra. Alexandra. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Susan. Happy Thanksgiving. And Alexandra brought us a pumpkin pie. Please, oh. sit down, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Dad, Richard, Alexandra's here. <laughs> Michigan needs a touchdown. Three minutes to play. Hi, Alexandra. Welcome. 
Hello, Alexandra. Yes, Michigan needs a touchdown. One tiny little touchdown with just three minutes to play. We want Michigan to win. <laughs> How'd you guess? <laughs> and Alexandra brought us a pumpkin pie. We forgot to turn the oven on. We did. Philip, wh why don't you go watch the last three minutes of the game? I will serve coffee and pumpkin pie. Okay. I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Robbie, uh, would you bring the dessert plates? And Marilyn, would you pour coffee? Please? Sure, Ellen. How was your Thanksgiving dinner, Alexandra? Just wonderful, Mr. Stewart. The Molinas are a large family. I love being with them. Oh, I'm glad you came by, Alexandra. I am, too. Touchdown! 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 Oh, boy. Great Thanksgiving. Lots to be thankful for. Michigan scored a touchdown. Alexandra came by. And nobody misses Philip's famous apple pie. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> On Thanksgiving Day, people in the USA get together with family and friends. I want to welcome Harry and his daughter Michelle to Thanksgiving with us. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. Hello, Alexander. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Susan. Happy Thanksgiving. And Alexandra brought us a pumpkin pie. Please sit down, Alexandra. Hi, Alexandra. Welcome. Hello, Alexandra. The first Thanksgiving was in 1621. Thanksgiving was about the pilgrims, the first settlers in America. We shared the first harvest with the Indians and gave thanks. Thanksgiving is a day with many traditions. People eat traditional foods like turkey, and turkey dressing, and fruit pies like apple pie and pumpkin pie. Families enjoy modern traditions too, like watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade on television. Don't you just love it? Oh, and the bands and the music. John Philip Sousa, I love his music. <laughs> And people watch the afternoon football game. Touchdown! Touchdown! And Thanksgiving is a day for giving thanks. I give thanks for being here with my family. And for being well. So I can enjoy you all. <laughs> well, I'd like to give thanks for a healthy year, a good job, and for meeting Harry and Michelle. It's a special holiday. A day to be with people you love. We love you, Grandpa. Uh -huh. I love you, Daddy. In Act One, Robbie notices that Alexandra is unhappy about something. Is something wrong, Alexandra? Alexandra is lonely. She misses her family in Greece. You really miss your family, don't you? Yes. A little later, they hear a strange sound. Do you hear something? Yes, what was that? Walkman is absolutely wonderful. Richard and Marilyn bought it for me for my birthday. They're so thoughtful. You are very lucky, Robbie, to have such a nice family. Is something wrong, Alexandra? No, nothing. Yes, there is. I can tell. What's the matter? Come on, you can tell me. What's up? I don't know. Something's wrong. Okay, let's talk. I received a letter from my parents this morning. 
Did they write some bad news? No. Well, then why are you so sad? I miss them. I miss them very much. I'm sorry, Alexandra. But I understand. The Molinas treat me so nicely. And I love being with your family so much. But when I received the letter with photographs of my family, I cried. I cried because I missed them all. You really miss your family, don't you? Yes. I know I must seem silly. It's not like I have nobody. I like the Molinas very much, and they're so kind to me. Hey, why don't we go out for a cheeseburger and french fries? That'll cheer you up. And you can use my Walkman. That's a good idea. But if we go out, please, don't complain about your math teacher or your math homework. I want to have fun. So do I. I have to turn off the lights or else my father will get really angry. He says I never turn them out when I leave. If they come home and they're on... Ow! Ow! Do you hear something? Yes, what was that? It sounded like a dog barking. Ow! It sounded like a dog barking right here. Yeah! A dog? A Springer Spaniel. <laughs> come on in, make yourself at home. <laughs> oh, you poor little thing. Come on. <laughs> Poor baby. Where did you come from? Her name's Gemma. And she belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Levinson. There's a phone number. 555-8448. Eight <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, maybe you should call them and tell the Levinsons we have their cute little Spaniel. <laughs> I've always wanted a Springer Spaniel. She's so cute. <laughs> Hello. The number you are calling. Five, 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 eight, four, four, eight is no longer in service. The number's no longer in service. Oh, you poor, poor baby. You've lost your family. We'll find them. Don't worry, Alexandra. Alexandra and I are such good friends. We listen to music together and go places together and talk about things. Like today, Alexandra was so unhappy and I didn't understand why at first. I received a letter from my parents this morning. Did they write some bad news? No. Well, then why are you so sad? Then I realized that Alexandra was lonely. She was so lonely without her family. You really miss your family, don't you? Yes. I know I must seem silly. It's not like I have nobody. I like the Molinas very much, and they're so kind to me. She seems so sad. I had to cheer her up. I got an idea. We always have such a good time when we go out together. Hey, why don't we go out for a cheeseburger and french fries? That'll cheer you up. But then Gemma showed up. A dog? I think Alexandra felt better. She wasn't the only one who missed her family. Gemma did too. Gemma looked so lonely, with such a sad face. And Alexandra understood. Oh, you poor, poor baby. You've lost your family. Don't worry, Alexandra. We'll find them. 
In Act 2, Robbie and Alexandra take care of Gemma. Gemma, sit. Good, Gemma. They want to find the dog's owners. So Robbie calls the ASPCA, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. 555-7700. Hello, ASPCA. Later, Robbie and Alexandra go to the ASPCA for help, but they might not be able to find the owners. No ID number. Without that, it's hard. What can Robbie and Alexandra do? find the owner. How, Robbie? Let me think. Gemma, sit. Good, Gemma. Give me your paw. Good, Gemma. This dog is well trained. <laughs> she likes you, too. So how are we going to find the owners? With a little help from the ASPCA. Mm -hmm. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They're the ones. We once found a cat. She was caught in the branches of our tree, and Dad called the ASPCA. They came and solved the problem. Robbie, let's call them. Let me see. ASPCA. Here it is. ASPCA Animal Shelter. 555-7700. Five, 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 seven, seven Hello, ASPCA. Hello. My name is Robbie Stewart. I have a lost dog I'd like to bring to you. How late are you open? We're open till 9 p.m. Thank you. I'll bring the dog over by 9. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye. They're still open? They're open until 9 o'clock. We have two and a half hours. Let's take Gemma by there now. They'll find the owner. I hope so. I'm so sad to see this little dog without her family. I'm sure they'll find the owner. But if they don't, I'll adopt her. She's so cute. Look at those eyes. She's hard to resist. Don't you just love her? I'd like to keep her, too. But I'll be going home to Greece at the end of the semester. She just wants love and affection. <sighs> Come on, Robbie. Let's get her to the animal shelter so they can find her owners quickly. Don't worry, Jenna. We'll get you home. It's not easy being away from home. <laughs> Come on, Poochie. Add a girl. Let's go. We're off to the animal shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Stewart. And this is Alexandra Pappas. Your name will do, Mr. Stewart. Your address? 46 Linden Street, Riverdale. Where did you find the dog? She found us. You tried calling the number on the collar? Yes, but the number is no longer in service. And there's no address on the dog tag? There's no other information. No ID number. Without that, it's hard. You will try to find the dog's owner. Oh, we'll try, believe me. And if you don't... Yes? If you don't, can I... Can I adopt the dog? Why, yes. If the owners don't claim the dog in 48 hours, then you can apply for adoption. How do I do that? You really want to? Yes, I'm serious. If no one comes to claim Gemma, I'd like to adopt her. 
It's not difficult. I mean, the, uh, no, no, the, 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 the dog. Where did you find the dog? The owner. I'm sure they'll find the owner. The problem is they need to find the owner of the dog. The number. You tried calling the number on the collar? The animal shelter. Come on, Ravi, let's get her to the animal shelter so they can find her owners quickly. The number is out of service, so the problem is they need to find the owner of the dog. And the hour is very late, but the animal shelter is open till nine. The dog, the owner, the problem, the animal, the number, the hour. You hear the before a consonant sound. The dog, the problem, the number. You hear the before a vowel sound. The owner, the animal, the hour. Wait! H is not a vowel sound. It's a consonant sound. But it's not the first sound. The H is silent. The hour. But what about the dog? Robbie has the idea to adopt Gemma if the owners, <laughs> the Levinsons, don't call the office. You hear the before a consonant sound. You hear the before a vowel sound. The idea, the owners, the Levinsons, the office. I just love the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. <laughs> the end. In Act 3, Robbie finds out how to adopt a dog. If you want to adopt an animal, first we need to know some references. References? People we know? I love animals. Both Robbie and Alexandra would like to have a pet. To have a friend. A pal. You know, man's best friend is his dog. Later on, Linda has news for Robbie. We have good news and bad news, Robbie. Will Linda find the owners? Or will Robbie adopt Gemma? If you want to adopt an animal, first we need to know some references. References? People we know? Friends, teachers. We need to talk to some people about you. We want to be sure that you're responsible and that you can take good care of an animal. Then you have to fill out this form about your family background. Is that it? No, there's more. We need to know about your history with animals. Have you ever owned an animal? Yes. We had a cat when I was eight years old. <laughs> I love cats. Do you have any animals now? Unfortunately, no. Anything else? We also like to know your reasons for wanting an animal. Just to hold it and cuddle with it. Just to have as a pet. I love animals. To have a friend, a pal. You know, man's best friend is his dog. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing more. If you're under 21 years of age... That's me. ...then an adult must sign for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> no problem. My parents will think it's a good idea. I'll be back with them. If the real owners don't come to claim Gemma. After 48 hours. But please call first. Thanks for your information. And for being so helpful. It's my pleasure. Nice talking to both of you. Thanks again. Bye. Maybe the real
real owners will come to claim her. Her eyes look so sad. She must really miss them. I see you're both animal lovers. We are. Goodbye, Miss Aborn. We'll call in a couple of days. Goodbye. And thanks for bringing Gemma in. Bye. I keep thinking about the dog. About Gemma alone in the animal shelter. I know. But I promise you, Alexander, the dog is just fine. They're very kind to the animals. I know they are. I mean, about her being alone. Even if they are kind to Gemma, she's still alone without her family. Ready, folks? Are you ready, Alexandra? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, I'll have the chef salad, please. I will have a cheeseburger, medium rare, with raw onion and french fries, please. Anything to drink? A Diet Cola, please. Ginger ale with lots of ice for me, thank you. I've got it. Thanks. Aren't you surprised that the animal shelter is so careful about finding homes for the animals? No, I'm not. And a cheeseburger, medium rare, with onion and french fries. And a ginger ale with lots of ice. Salad dressing? Hey, I wanted you to hear my new sound system when the dog scratched on the front door. Let's finish eating and then we'll go back to my house. I want you to hear my new tapes. I've got some great new dance music. Hello, Stewart residence. Hello, is Robbie Stewart there? This is he. Who is this? This is Linda Aborn from the animal shelter. It's Linda from the animal shelter. Yes, Linda, hi. We have good news and bad news, Robbie. Oh? The good news is that the Levinsons have come by to pick up the dog. The bad news is you won't be able to adopt the dog. That's okay. Come by one day and, and look at some of the other dogs. I'm sure there's one for you. Thanks, Robbie. And the Levinsons thank you for bringing their dog to us. Thanks, Linda. Bye. The owners claim Gemma. That's right. I'm glad for the dog. I guess I am, too. She said if I come by, she'll help me find another dog. <sighs> come on, let's dance. They come in every shape, every size, and every color. Long hair and short hair, or no hair at all. Some come with feathers, and some have fur. And some will even come when you call. I'm talking about pets in the USA. Pets in the USA. Some you can hold, some will walk by your side and Some you can ride every day Some will shake your hand And when they get to know you They seem to understand what you say I'm talking about pets in the USA Pets in the USA No matter what they look like, no matter what they are We like to think of them as our friends Just like you and me, they have personalities And they can be such good company Some live underwater, some live in a cage And some can just walk around your home they may have droopy eyes, they may have floppy ears, but they can keep you from feeling all alone. I'm talking about pets in the USA. Mmm, pets in the USA.
In the first act, Dr. Stewart wants to schedule an operation for a boy named Carl Herrera. The boy has infected tonsils and we should remove them as soon as possible. Carl needs an operation soon. He has been very sick. He's had so many colds and sore throats recently. But Carl doesn't want to have the operation. I don't want my tonsils up. Why doesn't Carl want to be in the hospital now? Handling special matters. Like what special matters? Well, I have a scheduling problem. Yes? I have three tonsillectomies set for Friday with Dr. Earl. Yes? I need to fit a fourth operation into his schedule, and uh, I know you can do it. Who's the patient? Carl Herrera. The boy has infected tonsils, and we should remove them as soon as possible. Well, I'll try to arrange the schedule, Dr. Stewart, but it's not going to be easy. <laughs> I know you'll be able to take care of oh. it. Oh. <laughs> well, Mrs. Herrera, Carl will be perfectly fine after we remove his tonsils. Thank you for your reassurance, Dr. Stewart. He's had so many colds and sore throats recently. Well, it's a very easy operation, Carl. You won't feel a thing. But when do they do it? Uh, this Friday. But Saturday's my birthday. Well, we could reschedule the operation, Mrs. Herrera, but, uh, well, I don't want to put it off too long. No, I think it's important to do it now. We can have a birthday party for you, Carl, when you come out of the hospital. But it won't be on my birthday. But your health is more important, Carl. Believe me. I don't want my tonsils out. Nurse Baker, would you come in, please? Hello, Mrs. Herrera. Hi, Carl. How are you doing? I don't want my tonsils out. Come with me, Carl. You and I will talk this over. <laughs> she has a special way with kids. She sure does. Does your throat hurt? Yes. Okay. Do you want to get better? Yes. Okay. We want you to get better, too. You'll have your tonsils out tomorrow, and you won't get so many calls anymore. But if I have my tonsils out tomorrow, I'll miss my birthday party on Saturday. I know. It's a problem, isn't it? Let me try to work something out. What? I have to think about it. You're fooling me. Oh, I'm not, Carl. Give me a chance to think about it, and I'll come up with something. A surprise? Maybe. But you just put on your pajamas and robe, and I'll think of a surprise. Will it hurt? No. There are other boys and girls here, and they're having their tonsils out. You'll meet them. I don't want to. Change your clothes, Carl. Everything will be just fine. had so many colds and sore throats recently. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna feel better. Don't worry. Carl will be perfectly fine after we remove his tonsils.
It's a very easy operation, Carl. You won't feel a thing. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna feel better. How are you doing? Not too well. Does your throat hurt? Yes, it does. Do you want to get better? Yes, I do. Everything will be just fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. In the second act, the nurse, Molly Baker, plays a game with the children at the hospital. The name of the game is charades. Six words. It has six words. That's easy. I can play. But Carl Herrera won't play the game. I don't like charades. It's for babies. Dr. Stewart tries to help. Why don't you uh, want to play? Carl is upset because he wants something else. What does Carl want? Okay. Do you know how to play charades? Frank, you've never played charades? No. Carl, you're sure you've never played? Okay. Betty, Tim, and Frank, we're going to play charades. Frank, you can learn as we go, and Carl, you join in at any time. Okay, let me think. Okay, I've got one. A movie. Okay. Six words. It has six words. That's easy. I can play. Good. Okay. We've got a movie. The title. Six words. Right. First word. Sounds like. Sounds like. You've got that part right. Yes. Sounds like. Sounds like what? Sounds like no. Absolutely right, Frank. Sounds like no. Okay, we've got a movie. Six words. The first word sounds like no. Row, row, go. Nope. Show. That's it. Show. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Absolutely right, Betty. Sounds like no snow. Okay, a movie. Six words. The first word is snow. This is fun. Oh. Okay. The fifth word. Right. Fifth word. Seven. Absolutely right. Very good. The fifth word is seven. Okay. We've got a movie. The first word is snow. Fifth word, seven. I got it! I got it! Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> I got it! I got it! Frank, you got it. Betty, you had it, but you didn't say it. I knew it. <laughs> Carl, now you know charades. Why don't you join us? I don't like charades. It's for Babies. Oh, I like it. Well, they're babies. <laughs> You're a sore loser. Yeah. No arguing. Save your voices. Between now and tomorrow, you're all going to have your tonsils out. And you won't be able to speak for a while, so save your voices till then. Hi, gang. Hi, everybody. 
Oof. Well, uh, what's going on? I sure am glad to see you, Dr. Stewart. This is a rough group. Mm. I didn't want to play charades, so they're angry at me. Why don't you uh, want to play? Because I don't want to be here. I don't want my tonsils out. Why not? Because my birthday is tomorrow. My mother promised me a birthday party with a clown. But you can have one when you go home, Carl. But my birthday is tomorrow. I'm sorry, Carl. Carl, you'll have your party when you go home. But it won't be on my birthday. And you promised me a surprise. Like. Sounds like what? Sounds like no. First word sounds like no. Ro, ro. Ro so low. Oh. Ro so low. Oh. Ro ro so so low low. Oh oh. Oh. Is this ball in my bowl? Pot, rock, mop. Ah. Pat, rack, map. Ah. Pot, pat, rock, rack, mop, map. Ah. Ah. Hot. Seek leap, e. It sick lip, e. Eat it seek sick leap lip, e. E. Fit. Fit. Feet. My feet don't fit. Coming up in the third act, the children have already had their tonsils out. They have sore throats. It hurts, doesn't it? Carl's throat hurts too. I know it hurts, but it'll be better tomorrow. Carl still wants a surprise. In the meantime, what would you like? The next day, someone comes to visit the children. And here he is. Who comes to visit? Doesn't it? You'll feel better tomorrow, Betty. Believe me. Only one day, and it won't hurt as much. Do you feel like eating, having some dinner? Oh, don't look so sad. Let me tell you about your dinner. It's ice cream. Ice cream. All kinds of flavors. Chocolate. <laughs> Strawberry. Vanilla. Vanilla too. I see you're feeling better already, Betty. So you will have dinner. Okay, honey. We'll see to it that you have strawberry and vanilla ice cream. 
Just rest now. You need some rest to help you get better quickly. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Oh, come on now. You're a big boy. It doesn't hurt that much, does it? Oh, I'm sorry it hurts so much and you won't be able to have dinner. You're just going to have to have ice cream. Yes, ice cream. Lots of flavors. Want to hear them? Chocolate. <laughs> then chocolate it is. One scoop or two. Three scoops? Then three it will be. You want three scoops also? Chocolate, too. Well, I see you're feeling better. Well, at least you're acting like you feel better. Three scoops of chocolate ice cream for Tim coming up. <laughs> Hi, Carl. How you doing? I know it hurts. But it'll be better tomorrow. In the meantime, what would you like? Surprise! A surprise? I promised you a surprise, didn't I? And it wasn't just ice cream, was it? Your birthday is tomorrow, isn't it? Well, maybe. Just maybe there will be a surprise. But first, you have to smile. I just want to see one smile from you. No smile, no surprise. That's the deal. No smile, no surprise. If you want a surprise, then you've got to smile first. I'm glad you're feeling better because we have a little surprise for you today. It's Carl's birthday, and we have Popo the Clown to entertain you. And here he is, Popo the Clown! Everybody. Okay, Carl, it's your birthday. Uh, what's your wish? What would you like? Hmm? You want to play charades? <laughs> <laughs> your birthday is tomorrow, isn't it? Your birthday is tomorrow, isn't it? I promised you a surprise, didn't I? It wasn't just ice cream. Was it? It wasn't just ice cream, was it? It doesn't hurt that much. Does it? 
doesn't hurt that much, does it? Your birthday is tomorrow. Isn't it? And it wasn't just ice cream. Was it? It doesn't hurt that much. Does it? And you promised me a surprise. He was upset. Wasn't he? He wasn't happy. Was he? Happy birthday, Carl. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Carl isn't sad now. Is he? He is happier now. Isn't he? In the first act, Robbie is writing a story for the Riverdale High School newspaper. I'm writing an article on the feelings about graduation. Robbie will have to make some decisions. What does he want to do after graduation? Maybe you should think about becoming a writer. Maybe I should. Philip would like Robbie to go to the University of Michigan. So he schedules an interview for Robbie with the Dean of Admissions. He's going to be in New York tomorrow to interview applicants for admission. But Robbie may not want to go to the same school that his father and grandfather attended. But I may not want to go to Michigan. What does Robbie want to do? Who is it? Dad. Come on in, Dad. I thought you might be hungry. I brought you a chicken sandwich and a glass of milk. I am hungry. Thanks, Dad. What time is it anyway? 10 o'clock. What are you working on? I'm writing a story for the high school paper. Can't you finish it tomorrow? No. I have to turn it in in the morning. What's it about? I'm writing an article on the feelings about graduation. And, uh, how do you feel? Me? A little scared. And excited, too. I felt the same way. The scary part's leaving home and moving to college. Oh. Leaving home is part of growing up. Well, don't work all night. I don't mind. I enjoy writing. Well, maybe you should think about becoming a writer. Maybe I should. You have lots of time to decide. That's the worst part, making decisions. You'll be okay. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Hail to the conquering heroes, hail, hail to Michigan, the champions of the West. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good morning, Robbie. Good morning, Dad. How's my grandson? Fine, Grandpa, fine. What's all the cheering about? Did the University of Michigan win another football game? Better than that. Tell him, Philip. I just spoke with Charlie Rafer. Who's Charlie Rafer? He's the Dean of Admissions for the University of Michigan. And it turns out, he's a classmate of Phillips. Yeah, we were both on the tennis team. Great. It is great. He's going to be in New York tomorrow to interview applicants for admission. And he's agreed to fit you into his schedule. But I may not want to go to Michigan. It's one of the best schools in the country, Robbie. I studied medicine there. Your grandfather went to the engineering school there. I know that. You said you wanted to be a doctor, like your father. Not exactly. 
You couldn't pick a finer medical school than Michigan. Yes, I know that. Let's meet with Charlie at the university club. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. It doesn't mean you're going to Michigan. It doesn't mean you have to be a doctor. But the interview will be good experience for you. In that case, it's okay. Dad, growing up means making my own decisions, doesn't it? You're right, Robbie. But if your grandpa suggested, have the interview. Then make your own decision. That sounds fine. I know it's sudden, Robbie, but this is an important opportunity. We'll head down there first thing tomorrow morning, okay? Sure, Dad. I want you to know something, son. I'm, uh, I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Well, I've got an appointment at the hospital. I'll, uh, I'll see you all at dinner time. Bye, Dad. Is uh, something still wrong, Robbie? I'll be okay. Going away to college for the first time always makes one a little nervous. I guess so. I'll be okay. I just need time to think. an article on the feelings about graduation. And, uh, how do you feel? Me? A little scared. And excited, too. I feel scared. I feel excited. It's a whole new situation. I've got my future to think about after high school graduation. I feel scared. I feel excited. I've got a lot on my mind. Going away to school, going away from home, and the friends I'll leave behind. Growing up means making my own decisions, doesn't it? Decisions, decisions, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've got my whole life ahead of me when I graduate from school. Decisions, decisions, and college applications. Where do I go to school and what will I do for my future occupation? The scary part's leaving home and moving to college. I'm leaving home for the first time, moving to a brand new place. A new situation, a new location, and no one will know my face. I'm leaving home for the first time, and nothing will be the same. A new destination, a new location, and no one will know my name. I'm scared. I'm excited. I'm scared. I'm excited. Coming up in the second act, Robbie has an interview with Dean Rafer. You must be Robbie. Hi. <laughs> Dean Rafer asks Robbie about his activities in high school. I see under activities that you've been writing for the school paper. As they talk, the Dean sees that Robbie is uncertain about going to the University of Michigan. You seem to have some reservations. What will Dean Rafer say to Robbie? Sorry, Robbie. Sorry to be late this morning, but, uh, well, we've still got some time for a cup of coffee. I can't wait to see my old pal, Charlie Rafer. Neither can I. So, you thought about it, huh? Yes, I have, Dad. Well, I'm glad. 
I knew you'd realize that this interview could be an important experience for you. I came to that conclusion. That's very wise, Robbie. Very wise. <laughs> now let's, uh, let's head off for the city and university club. Thanks, Dad. Thanks? For what? Thanks for hearing me out. And... And? And thanks for being such an understanding father. Well, thank you, Robbie. Thank you. Philip Stewart, it's great to see you. Charlie Rafer, you look as young as ever. <laughs> You must be Robbie. Hi. <laughs> yes, this is my younger son, Robbie. Robbie, I want you to meet one of the best tennis players on the Michigan team, <laughs> Charlie Rafer. Nice to meet you, Dean Rafer. Well, are you as good a tennis player as your dad? No, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <sighs> Frankly, neither was I. Uh, Charlie was the star of the team. Yeah, thanks. Well, how have you been, Philip? Oh, working too hard. Doesn't show. How's Ellen? Fine, thank you. And how's Marge? She's still giving the toughest English history exams in the school and loving every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of minutes, I have interviews until noon, so why don't we get right to work? Hmm? Can, you, uh, can you have lunch with us later? I'd love to, Philip, but I'm afraid I can't. I'm only here two days, and I have interviews with 26 applicants. I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll wait outside. Good luck, son. Did you bring your transcript from high school? Yes, sir. Right here. Thank you. Please, sit down. I see under activities that you've been writing for the school paper. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What kind of articles have you written? All kinds. Sports. Um, editorials, theater reviews, you name it, I've written it. Hmm. Well, have you ever thought of becoming a journalist? Professional writer? Not until recently. Michigan has a fine school of journalism. Yes, I know that. You seem to have some reservations. I'm a little uncertain. And it's been very nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, sir. Mm -hmm. One piece of advice. The most important thing is for you to decide your own future. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Dean Rafer. Goodbye, Robbie. Good luck. The most important thing is for you to decide your own future. I have to decide. It's my future. It's up to me. Where do I want to go to school? What do I want to study? Dad and Grandpa went to the University of Michigan. It's one of the best schools in the country, Robbie. I studied medicine there. Your grandfather went to the engineering school there. But I may not want to go to the University of Michigan. Maybe I don't want to study medicine or engineering. Maybe I want to study journalism. I like to write. I've written a lot of articles. What kind of articles have you written? All kinds. Sports, um, editorials, theater reviews. You name it, I've written it. Maybe I do want to study journalism. I'll become a journalist. I could write for the New York Times. Robert Stewart. Writer. Yeah, I could study journalism. I'd take a course in writing, in German, and history, and literature, and... Well, skip mathematics. I hate math. But I might take music. Wait a second. I don't just like journalism. I like lots of subjects. And if I study liberal arts, I can take courses in a variety of subjects. Yeah, I don't have to decide on my major in the first year. I think I want to become a writer. But I have time to decide. Maybe you should think about becoming a writer. Maybe I should. You have lots of time to decide. I do have time to decide. 
and it's up to me. In the third act, Robbie's friend Mike tells Robbie about his interview. I had a great interview with admissions at Columbia University. And Robbie tells Mike that he'd like to study journalism. I think I want to study journalism, to be a reporter. Later, Robbie talks to his father about his decision. Hi, Dad. Everything's fine. I was just waiting for you to get home so we could talk. How will Philip feel about Robbie's decision? I had an interview today, too. I had a great interview with admissions at Columbia University. Really? What did they say? Will you get into the school? Well, they didn't say anything for sure. But I figure that with my grades and with my personality, I'll have no problem. <laughs> Columbia is a terrific school. What are you going to do? Do? I don't know. I also applied to NYU. You sound excited about Columbia. What's your problem, Mike? Indecision. Indecision. It's not easy, and this is an important decision we have to make. And what about you? How was your interview with Michigan? The interview was fine. It's a great college. It is. My father would like me to go there. He and my grandpa both went there. Great medical school, too. I know. You can follow in your father's footsteps. Ah, I'd like to follow in my own footsteps, Mike. Uh, what do you want to study? I've been thinking. I think I want to study journalism, to be a reporter, a newspaper man. You do a pretty good job on the Riverdale High School paper. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Have you discussed it with your parents? No. But I have to. Okay. Let's talk. Hi, son. Everything all right? Hi, Dad. Everything's fine. I was just waiting for you to get home so we could talk. Anything special you want to talk about? There is, Dad. I'm listening. Well, I know you and Mom have given up a lot to save money for my college tuition. We want you to go to college, Robbie. I know, I do. But? Well, I've thought a lot about which college, and one of them is Columbia. Columbia? Why Columbia? First, they have an excellent school of journalism. Hmm. They do. And your friends are planning to go to Columbia? That's only part of it. It's complicated. I'll try to explain. Mike and I had a hamburger this afternoon and we talked. Yes? Well, we talked about a lot of things. He applied to Columbia, and his interview was very successful. He thinks he'll be accepted, and he really wants to go there. Dean Rafer called me today. He told me he was very impressed with you. He's a nice man. He was very kind. He told me you had some doubts about wanting to go to Michigan. Yes, I do. I'm just not sure about what I want to do. It's okay. You understand? Let me tell you something, Robbie. Something that uh, might be surprising to you. What? Tell me. Well, Grandpa wanted me to study engineering, like him. Well, I wasn't clear about my future, but... I knew engineering was not for me. What did you tell Grandpa? The truth. Then you're not upset about my not wanting to go into medicine? I'm not upset at all. I'm just happy that we're able to talk about it. 
I am too, Dad. I suppose you want to apply to Columbia. Yes, but I also want to apply to several other colleges. I thought you wanted to go to Columbia. Well, I might want to go to Columbia, and I might not. I just want to be able to make my own decision. You're a real steward. And if I think about it long enough, you never know. Never know what? If I make my own decision, I might choose Michigan. Robbie, you're something. You know, when I was your age, I said exactly the same thing to Grandpa. Do I want to go to the University of Michigan? Dad and Grandpa went there. Or to an Ivy League school? like Columbia University, or maybe NYU, New York University. Mike applied there. I've also been thinking about going to a state school, SUNY, the State University of New York at New Paltz. How can I compare them? I think I'd like to go to a small school, but Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan is not small. Columbia is smaller than Michigan. SUNY and New Pulse is smaller than either Michigan or NYU. And Columbia is smaller than SUNY. It's a smaller school for undergraduates. I want to go to a school that's close to Riverdale. But Michigan is far away. SUNY is closer to Riverdale. NYU is closer than SUNY. And Columbia is the closest. Wow, that's a lot to think about. Which one is the smallest? Columbia. Which school is the closest to Riverdale? Columbia. Which school is the cheapest? SUNY at New Paltz. Which school would you choose? In Act One, Susan goes over her schedule. She has a very busy day. What's the schedule today? 10 o'clock, telephone FAO Schwartz about the new twin baby dolls. She has calls to make. Telephone Mrs. Zasky at the advertising agency. And she has meetings to attend. At 4 o'clock, you have a meeting with the production staff in the conference room. But Susan thinks she forgot something. Wait a minute. What's today's date? Today is the 12th. Why? It seems to me I scheduled something else. There's nothing else in the appointment book. What did Susan forget? What's the schedule today? 10 o'clock, telephone FAO Schwartz about the new twin baby dolls. Okay. Telephone Mrs. Zasky at the advertising agency. I did that. Go on. 11 o'clock, approve the sketches for the toy spaceship. Oh, where are they? Right here. Did you look at them? Yes, I did. What do you think of the spaceship? I think the kids will love it. Would you show me the drawings, please? Huh. <sighs> now, what else is on the schedule today? Well, at one o'clock, you have a lunch appointment with Mr. Levine, the client from the Toy Town stores. Where? At Rosano's. Hmm. Anything else? 
At four o'clock, you have a meeting with the production staff in the conference room. Make sure everybody is at that meeting. Will do. At six, you're meeting Mr. Ozawa. <sighs> oh, yes. Are his models here? They're in my office. I'd like to see them. Right. What else? Come on, Sam. You worked too hard, Susan. When was your last day off? Hmm. I can't remember. You really ought to take some time off. What for? To enjoy the simple things in life. I know, Sam. Maybe soon. To smell the flowers. Oh, wait a minute. What's today's date? Today is the 12th. Why? It seems to me I scheduled something else. There's nothing else in the appointment book. I'm sure I did. Oh, well, I'll probably remember it later. I hope it isn't important. Mm, it's probably nothing. Okay, let's get started. Would you call Priscilla Smith at FAO Schwartz, please? Right. These are the models from the Japanese filmmaker. Thank you. Just put them on my desk. And the new drawings for the toy spaceship. Wonderful. That was fast. We have a new artist. She's very talented. What time is it anyway my watch stopped? It's uh, 11.30. What time is my lunch date with Bill Levine? One o'clock. Remind me to leave at 12.45. <laughs> Did you remember your other appointment for today? Mm, no, but I have a feeling it's going to be too late when I do remember. Yes, Sam? I just solved the mystery. Oh, what did I forget? You have some guests in the reception room. What? Who? Mr. Harry Bennett and his daughter. I remember. Oh, Harry. I made a lunch date with him and his daughter weeks ago. Is he a client? He's a friend. Well, he's here with his daughter to have lunch. I met her at Thanksgiving, and I promised to have lunch with both of them today. Yes, indeed. What are you going to do about your appointment with Mr. Levine? <laughs> Any suggestions? <laughs> oh. What's the schedule today? 10 o'clock, telephone FAO Schwartz about the new twin baby dolls. 10 o'clock. 10.15. That's a quarter after 10. 10.30. That's half past 10. 10.45. That's a quarter to 11. 11 o'clock, approve the sketches for the toy spaceship. 11 o'clock. 11.15. That's a quarter after 11. What time is it anyway, my watch stops? It's 11.30. Uh, 11.30. That's half past 11. 11.45. That's a quarter to twelve. Twelve o'clock. That's noon. Twelve fifteen. That's twelve thirty. That's remind me to leave at twelve forty five. <laughs> 
12.45. That's... What time is my lunch date with Bill Levine? One o'clock. One fifteen. That's... One thirty. That's... One forty-five. That's... What else is on the schedule today? Coming up in Act Two, Susan greets Harry and Michelle. Hi, Susan. We have both been excited about seeing you and having lunch with you today. But Michelle may not want to have lunch. Harry, if Michelle doesn't want to go, we don't have to. Later on, they go out. Welcome to the South Street restaurant. And Susan tries to talk to Michelle. Michelle? Can we have a talk? Sure. What's on Michelle's mind? Hi, Michelle. Hello, Harry. It's nice to see you again. Hello. Hi, Susan. We have both been excited about seeing you and having lunch with you today. Michelle picked these flowers out for you. Daddy, can we go soon? We're going to go to lunch in a few minutes, honey. But I'm thirsty. Okay. You go out and get a drink of water at the fountain. Fountain is over there, Michelle, near the exit sign. Thank you. Michelle is a little shy. I used to be that way when I was her age. Harry, if Michelle doesn't want to go, we don't have to. She'll be fine. Remember, I haven't dated anyone else since her mother died. This is a little difficult for her. Are you ready to go? Yes, but could you wait one minute? I have a call to make. Would you excuse me? Mm -hmm. Sam, get Mr. Levine at Toy Town Stores on the telephone for me, please. Right. Hello, Susan Stewart calling Mr. Levine, please. He's on the phone. Mr. Levine, Susan Stewart. I find myself in an embarrassing situation. I made another lunch date for today and forgot to enter it in my appointment book. Can you and I meet for drinks tomorrow? I'd really appreciate it. <sighs> yes, thank you. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock at the Biltmore. I'll see you then. Thank you, Mr. Levine. South Street restaurant, folks. What'll it be? What do you recommend? Well, the crab salad's always a big hit. Susan, would you like the crab salad? I'd love the crab salad. Michelle, would you like to try the crab salad, too? Okay, Dad. We'll have the three crab salads and a pitcher of lemonade. Help yourself to uh, celery and carrots and other vegetables. We used to catch crabs. Where was that? We had a summer house on Fire Island. Do you remember, Michelle? Sure, you and Mommy used to take me on the ferry boat. Sometimes at night, we would uh, go down to the beach and catch crabs, remember? With a piece of meat on the string. <laughs> right. Well, I think I'm going to go get us all some vegetables. Some ice cold lemonade. Thank Enjoy you. it.
Michelle, can I help you with the lemonade? No, thank you. I'll wait for my father. Michelle, can we have a talk? Sure. I know you miss your mother. You do? Yes. And I'm not trying to take her place. Then why are you and Daddy spending so much time together? Because we like each other. And right now, he needs a friend. I'm his friend. I know you are. Sometimes he's very sad. And so are you, I think. Sometimes. I'd like to be your friend, too. Will you let me be your friend, Michelle? So, what were you two talking about? Just girl talk, Daddy. It's too hard to explain. You're probably right. Well, let's get started. Michelle is a little shy. I used to be that way when I was her age. I used to be that way when I was her age. We had a summer house on Fire Island. Do you remember, Michelle? Sure, you and Mommy used to take me on the ferry boat. Sure, you and Mommy used to take me on the ferry boat. We used to catch crabs. We used to catch crabs. Sometimes at night, we would go down to the beach and catch crabs. You know, Michelle, when I was your age, I used to do a lot of fun things. I did too. I used to play the piano. <gasps> Mom would give me lessons on Tuesdays after school. And I used to play the violin. <laughs> I would take lessons every Thursday afternoon. I used to have long hair, like you, Michelle. But I don't now. I used to go fishing. Every summer, I would get out my fishing pole and try to catch a big one. <laughs> oh, Harry, you used to be so handsome. I used to be so handsome? You still are, of course. Mm, thank you. In Act 3, Susan, Harry, and Michelle have a lot of fun together. But Susan has work to do. Oh, it's a quarter to four, and I have a production meeting at four. Harry is disappointed. I plan to take you for a ride in Central Park in a horse and carriage. Michelle is disappointed, too. I'm sorry you can't come with us, Susan. So am I. What will Susan do? And I have a production meeting at four. I plan to take you for a ride in Central Park in a horse and carriage. <laughs> Harry, I'd love to, but I have work to do. <sighs> okay, we'll walk back to your office with you. It's so nice out. I decided to uh, forget about my accounting problems and just enjoy this beautiful spring day. <laughs> take the time, Susan. I know I should, but 
Well, there are too many things to do. I understand. I'll go for the ride with Michelle. Right. Well, I had a really nice time. So did I. So did I. I'm sorry you can't come with us, Susan. So am I. Bye-bye. Harry! Michelle! Can you wait till I make a phone call? Sure. Oh. Susan Stewart's office. Sam, this is Susan. Hi, how was lunch? Fine. You're late. The production department's waiting in the conference room. I know. Ask Paul Smith to fill in for me. He knows everything about the production schedule, and he can answer any questions. Right. Don't tell anyone, but I'm taking a little time to smell the flowers. Good for you. It'll be our secret. But schedule another production meeting for tomorrow. I'll be back for my 6 o'clock appointment with Mr. Ozawa. Okay, Susan, and have a nice afternoon. Thanks. you decide? That's a secret between us women. <laughs> You're working too hard, trying to do your best. You need a vacation, you gotta take time to rest Forget your work, enjoy yourself, get out and feel the sun Take a little time for the simple things, relax and have some fun You gotta stop and smell the flowers, do the things you like Read a book or see some friends, take a ride on your bike Have a picnic, take a picture, go out and count the stars just go fishing, take a walk, or play your guitar. Take a break for lunch. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Go and see the sights. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Take a ride in the park. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do whatever you like. You gotta stop and smell the flowers. The things you like Read a book or see some friends Take a ride on your bike Have a picnic Take a picture Go out and count the stars Just go fishing Take a walk or play your guitar You gotta stop and smell the flowers Do the things you like Read a book or see some friends Take a ride on your bike Have a picnic, take a picture Go out and count the stars Just go fishing, take a walk Or play your guitar In Act One Marilyn asks Ellen for advice about buying a house. Ellen, I'd like your opinion. About what? Well, Richard and I feel that with a baby coming, we need to have our own place to live. They talk about seeing a real estate agent.
someone who sells houses and they talk about getting a mortgage, a bank loan, to buy a house. Maybe we should speak to a real estate agent about a house. And a bank about a mortgage. Does Ellen want Richard and Marilyn to buy a house? How does Ellen feel? your opinion about what well Richard and I feel that with a baby coming we need to have our own place to live oh well what do you think about Richard and me looking for a small house or an apartment at this point in our lives we love having you here and there is room and and when the baby comes, the baby can stay in your room for a while. Richard feels we need to find a small house. Oh. I remember when I was pregnant with Richard. Philip and I were living with Grandma and Grandpa. Philip was a young doctor, and he kept talking about having a house of our own. It's natural. What did you do? <laughs> we looked at a lot of houses. Did you find one? Oh, not at first, but we, we, we couldn't afford it. Grandpa wanted to uh, lend us the money to buy one. But Philip is too independent. He didn't want to borrow any money. Sounds like Richard. Well, they're all alike. Richard is a real steward. He's independent and sometimes... Oh, just... Stubborn. When did you buy a house? After Richard was born. I was teaching music, and uh, Philip was opening his first medical office. Where was the house? Oh, right here in Riverdale. Of course, it was a small house, but just right for us. It's funny. History repeats itself. Now Richard and I are having a baby, and we probably won't be able to afford a house right away either. <laughs> Why don't you look at some houses, Marilyn? Good idea. Look in the real estate section of Sunday's uh, Times. You'll learn a lot. Maybe we should speak to a real estate agent about a house. And a bank about a mortgage. I'll talk to Richard about it. I think it's a good idea, Ellen. We can learn a lot by asking. And if I can be of any help, let me know. As a matter of fact, my friend Virginia Martinelli is a real estate agent. Good. Oh, you won't believe this, but she sold us our first house and this one. I'll tell Richard and we'll go to see her. Do you think... The skirt length is right, Ellen. Do you think it's too long? Oh, I think the skirt is just right. Are you planning to attach a train to it? No, no train. Just the dress. But I am going to make a headpiece of lace. That dress is gorgeous. Thanks, Ellen. And thanks for the advice about the house. I'll talk to Richard about it the minute he comes home. And remember, we love having you here. There's no need to rush. <laughs> and I were living with Grandma and Grandpa. Philip was a young doctor, and he kept talking about having a house of our own. It's natural. I remember when Philip and I wanted a place of our own, like Marilyn and Richard want one now. All people dream of a place of their own. Some people dream of a farmhouse in the country. Other people dream about owning an apartment in the city. 
Philip and I had our dreams too. Philip wanted a ranch style house in Riverdale with a front door where his patients could enter his first medical office. Oh, I wanted to live in Riverdale too, but I wanted a Spanish style house, like the one I grew up in, with tiles on the roof. So we looked in the real estate section of the newspaper, we read about lots of houses for sale, and we went to see a real estate agent, as Marilyn and Richard are going to do. We looked at lots and lots of houses, but we didn't have enough money to buy any of them. Richard and Marilyn don't have much money either. Maybe they won't be able to afford a house. It's funny. History repeats itself. Now Richard and I are having a baby and we probably won't be able to afford a house right away either. <laughs> we couldn't afford one right away, but we kept looking and later, after Richard was born, we bought a house here in Riverdale. Oh, it was small, and it didn't have much land, but I loved it. Philip and I both loved it. Because finally, we had a place of our own. In Act Two, Marilyn and Richard speak with Mrs. Martinelli, a real estate agent. Mrs. Martinelli offers to help, but she explains that Marilyn and Richard cannot afford a house in Riverdale. Of course, they won't be in Riverdale. The cost of housing is too high for you here. Will Marilyn and Richard find a house? parents first house very well it was on spring avenue near the park i grew up in that house yes and you were such a cute baby <laughs> i've seen pictures of him he had blonde hair <laughs> i've been friendly with the stewart family for a long time so it's my pleasure to help you find a house now well we're not sure we can afford one but we'd like to find out about the possibilities that's a good idea i love your house on linden street I sold your father that house 17 years ago. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mom was pregnant with Robbie then, and they needed the extra room. I hear you're expecting a baby, Mrs. Stewart. Mm -hmm. So we will be needing more room. Oh, so you don't need something immediately? No, but in five or six months. And time passes so quickly. Yes, it does. Well, when you called, you gave me enough information about your salaries and your savings, so I have a good idea about your financial situation. Let me show you some pictures of houses with two bedrooms. Yes, I think I can show you some. Of course, they won't be in Riverdale. The cost of housing is too high for you here. I haven't thought about living anywhere else. <laughs> We've always lived in this area. Where should we look for a house, Mrs. Martinelli? Well, we have an office in Mount Kisco. It's a lovely area, and it's only about an hour's drive from here. Here, I have a book with photos of some homes in that area. Let's see. Here, this is a lovely two-bedroom house in your price range. It's pretty, but I prefer a two-story home. I do, too. I don't care for a ranch type. Okay. Oh, this is a wonderful house. I know it well. I sold it to the present owners. It looks wonderful. This is a two-bedroom, two-bath house. It has a full basement, and it is on a half-acre lot. You can probably afford this one. Mm. I like this house. So do I. And the price is right. Would you like to go see it? Yes. We're planning to talk to someone at the bank next week. Perhaps we can see the house this weekend. If someone doesn't buy it before then. But let's keep looking just to get an idea of some other possibilities. This is very helpful, Mrs. Martinelli. Here. This is a wonderful example of a Spanish-style architecture. Oh, I love the roof tiles on a Spanish-style house. Mm -hmm. It looks like the houses in Hollywood. Mm. It's interesting. A house like this in Riverdale costs double the price. Oh, 
Oh, my. Here's a real buy. It's a bargain. This house just came on the market. It's quite lovely. Is it a two-bedroom house? No, it has three bedrooms and three baths. I know the house. It has a brand-new kitchen and a living room with a 12-foot ceiling. And there's a two-car garage. Then why don't we go look at this house, too? It's a good investment. Thank you, Mrs. Martinelli. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Give my best to your parents. Your father's a wonderful doctor, Richard. He took care of my daughter when she was a child. He's the best pediatrician in Westchester. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Martinelli. I'll give them your regards. We really appreciate your advice. I do think you should go see the houses and talk to the bank. Mm -hmm. Here, let me give you some information sheets about the houses. They're both very good buys. Well, thanks so much for your help and your time, Mrs. Martinelli. We've got a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Here, this is a lovely two-bedroom house. The house has two bedrooms. It's a two-bedroom house. This is a two-bedroom, two-bath house. Hmm. A two-bedroom, two-bath house. It has two bedrooms and two baths. What about this house? Well, let's see. One bedroom. Two bedrooms. Three bedrooms. It has three bedrooms. It's a three-bedroom house. What about that house? I like this house. One bath, two baths. This house has two baths. It's a two-bath house. Oh, I also like the garage. It holds two cars. It's a two-car garage. This looks like a nice house. I've got to see the inside. Hmm, let's see. There's a big kitchen, a dining room, a living room, and one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and one bath, two baths. That's good. It has three bedrooms and two baths. So what did you think? Well, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath house. And you know, I think we could live here. We'll have our own home. It's the American dream. In Act 3, Marilyn and Richard go to a bank. They need a mortgage, a bank loan, to buy a house. What can I do for you? We'd like to discuss a mortgage. For a house. The bank officer, Mr. Riley, needs to find out if they can afford to pay back the loan. So he asks about their jobs. What is your occupation? I'm a freelance photographer. And Mrs. Stewart, are you working? Yes, I'm a designer. Will Maryland and Richard get a mortgage? Stewart, and this is my wife, Marilyn. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Mr. Please. Riley. Please, sit down. What can I do for you? We'd like to discuss a mortgage. For a house. Fine. Are you buying a house, or are you refinancing your present home? We're planning to buy a house. And we'd like to find out about a mortgage. <laughs> we are customers of the bank. As a matter of fact, my whole family banks here. I have some questions to ask. Do you own your house or do you rent? Um, neither. We live with my parents, Dr. and Mrs. Philip Stewart. And how old are you? I'm 29. I'm 30. And Mr. Stewart, what is your occupation? I'm a freelance photographer. And Mrs. Stewart, are you working? Yes, I'm a designer. And I work in a boutique. Did you bring any savings or salary information? Last year's tax forms? Yes. Here they are. Okay, 
what, uh, what kind of house did you have in mind? Well, we're talking about buying a two-bedroom house in Mount Kisco. Here are the financial details on the house. Thank you. Are you prepared to make a 10% down payment? Yes, we are. Payments over 30 years? Yes. Do you think we can get a loan? Well, it depends. Do you own any other property? Uh, any stocks or bonds? No. Let's see. You don't have any collateral. Um, perhaps you could get a guarantor. Someone to sign for the loan for you? Uh, why is that necessary? Since you don't have enough income and you don't already own any property, the bank needs to be sure you can pay the mortgage every month. A guarantor is responsible for the loan if you can't make the payments. I see. Well, the idea of buying a house is exciting. Thank you, Mr. Riley. We'll read this over carefully. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye. And... Hope to see you soon. I hope so, too. Take care. Bye. It all sounded so easy until they mentioned needing collateral or a guarantor. We have no collateral. And I don't think it's a good idea to ask Dad to sign as a guarantor. I don't feel right about it. I understand your feelings about it, Richard. Now tell me, what's the problem? We can get a loan from the bank if we can put up some collateral. And we don't own anything to use as collateral. Or someone can sign with us as a guarantor. Why don't you speak to Dad? No. If we buy a house, I want to be able to handle it alone. Everybody needs help sometimes, Richard. I understand Richard's feelings about it, Ellen. In two or three months, I'll have an advance on my book and be able to put more money down. What about the house in Mount Kisco? <clears throat> Somebody else will buy it by then. Well, then there'll be other houses, Marilyn. Oh, Richard has a point. You're just beginning to look. Mm. We're in no great rush, it's true. Now, this has been a great learning experience for us, Marilyn. Right, talking to the real estate agent, looking at the houses... Talking to the loan officer at the bank. <laughs> it has been a learning experience, that's true. Oh. <laughs> I think you're doing the right thing. Taking your time, looking around. Especially with a purchase of this kind. You're talking about a lot of money. We'll call Mrs. Martinelli and tell her to keep looking for us. And I'll call Mr. Riley at the bank and tell him we'll see him in a couple of months. And if you ever need Dad or me to help you, you know... You know we'll be there for you. It's a steward tradition. For a family. Oh. <laughs> they want to buy a house. But can they afford it? We're planning to buy a house. We'd like to find out about a mortgage. Here's the application. We need some information. How old are you? I'm 29. I'm 30. How many years were they in school? Richard. 16. Marilyn. 14. And Mr. Stewart, what is your occupation? I'm a freelance photographer. And Mrs. Stewart, are you working? Yes, I'm a designer. And I work in a boutique. Here's the application. We need some information. Income. Property. Debt. What's their income? How much money do they make? They make $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year. Can they afford a house? 
Do you own your house or do you rent? Do you own any other property? Uh, any stocks or bonds? Can they afford a house? Since you don't have enough income and you don't already own any property, the bank needs to be sure you can pay the mortgage every month. They need a guarantor. A guarantor is responsible for the loan if you can't make the payments. I see. They can't afford a house. And I don't think it's a good idea to ask Dad to sign as a guarantor. I don't feel right about it. They can't afford a house. They can't afford it yet. In the first act, Grandpa is restless. He's waiting for Susan to come over for dinner. Is that you, Susan? Since Grandpa retired, he has too much free time. I'm retired. But I'm bored. <laughs> what does Grandpa want to do? Is that you, Susan? It's me, Grandpa. Oh, am I glad to see you. And am I glad to see you. I am also glad to be here. <laughs> mm. How are things? I have been talking to a group of salesmen since 10 this morning, and I'm real exhausted. <laughs> well, you look good. What's Harry doing tonight? He and Michelle are visiting relatives in New Jersey today. <laughs> The rest of our family went to the movies. So it's just you and me, Susan. It's nice to be alone with you, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. We don't get to see enough of each other. No, oh, I feel the same way, Susan. I miss seeing you. Uh, to tell the truth, next time, I'd like to go into the city and meet you there, instead of you coming here. You don't need to do that, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, I do. I need to get out more. Uh, well, I, I mean, there's a lot to do around the house, and I love being here with the family, you know, but I'm restless. Since I retired, I've got extra time on my hands. I understand, Grandpa. I think you do. Frankly, I'd like to use my brain a little more. Grandpa? You have so much energy and so many years of experience. There are probably a lot of places for you to work, particularly in the construction field. But at my age, I'm not looking for a full-time job. I'm retired. But I'm bored. <laughs> well, there must be something. Hmm. Maybe I can help. Let's go into the kitchen. And maybe you can help me set the table. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. What are we having? I prepared lamb chops, and mashed potatoes, and a tossed green salad to begin with. Grandpa, you are a terrific guy. <laughs> <laughs>
You're still thinking about something to do, aren't you? A job of some kind. That's right. I've been thinking about it for weeks now. There must be some way to put my mind to good use. We'll find a solution. A positive solution to your finding a way to use that wonderful mind of yours. Now. Past. Grandpa is waiting for Susan. Is that you, Susan? Grandpa has been waiting for Susan since noon. Grandpa has been waiting. Susan has been working since 10 o'clock this morning. Susan has been working. But she isn't working now. It's me, Grandpa. <laughs> I'm right glad to see you. Grandpa isn't working. But he's been finding things to do. He's been finding. Grandpa is thinking about getting a job. You're still thinking about something to do, aren't you? A job of some kind. That's right. I've been thinking about it for weeks now. I've been thinking about Maybe he'll get a job soon. In the second act, Susan talks with Sam, her assistant, about her grandfather's problem. I thought he was retired and pleased to be living with the family. He is, but there's so much energy and talent in the man and he doesn't get to use it. Susan thinks her boss, John Marchetta, may be able to help. So she meets with Mr. Marchetta and explains the problem. He needs to work. In fact, that is the reason why I'm here to see you. Maybe Mr. Marchetta can help. Sam, would you come in, please? You sound like something's bothering you, Susan. The sketches for the cover of the new doll book? That's not it. Please sit down. Sure. I need your advice on a personal matter, but it's not about me. You need my advice on a personal matter, and it's not about you, okay? It's about my grandfather. What's the problem? It won't sound like a big deal, but it is. I had dinner with him Saturday, and he's very unhappy about not working. I thought he was retired and pleased to be living with the family. He is. But there's so much energy and talent in the man, and he doesn't get to use it. Well, what can I do? What kind of advice are you looking for? Simply this. John Marchetta runs this company. He founded this company. Right. John Marchetta gave me my start here. Six years ago, when I first graduated from college, he gave me the chance to use my talents and made me feel more confident. Right. Maybe he can do the same thing for your grandfather. Or at least give him some advice. Right. Then I've solved your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can always depend on you, Sam. <laughs> I'm glad to help. Shall I call Mr. Marchetta for you? No, no, I'll do that. Thanks.
Now, how's the Stewart family? Fine, thank you, Mr. Marchetta. Except for my grandfather. What's wrong, Susan? What's wrong with him? He needs to work. In fact, that is the reason why I am here to see you. I know you're building a new factory, and I thought maybe... My grandfather is so experienced in the construction trade, he could be so valuable. Tell him to come and see me at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I have an idea that may solve the problem for him, help a lot of other people. Really, Mr. Marchetta, can I tell him that? Sure can. 10 o'clock in the morning. Here. Oh, ah, oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Sound like something's bothering you, Susan. Something is bothering you. Tell me what could it be? Let me know why you're worried You can tell me oh, What seems to be the problem What can I do You can tell me what it is I'd like to help you oh, What's the matter, what's the matter Hey Won't you tell me what's the matter? Hey, oh, is something wrong? Hey, oh, what seems to be the trouble? Hey, oh, tell me, tell me what's up? Hey, oh. What's wrong, Susan? What's the problem? What can I do? There is something on your mind Something's bothering you Everybody sing! What's the matter, what's the matter? Hey, oh What's the matter, what's the matter? Hey, oh Won't you tell me what's the matter? Hey, oh Is anything wrong? In the third act, Grandpa meets with John Marchetta. Hi, I'm uh, Malcolm Stewart. John Marchetta. And Grandpa tells Mr. Marchetta about his experience in the construction business. Forty-three years. Half that time in my own construction company. And he explains his problem. There isn't any work for a retired person my age. So John Marchetta tells Grandpa about an organization called TOPS. TOPS, T-O-P-S, means Talented Older People's Society. How can TOPS help? Malcolm Stewart. John Marchetta. Sit down. Sit down. Well, Susan has told me a great deal about you. She says you're quite a man. She says a lot of wonderful things about you, too, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> That's always nice to hear, Mr. Marchetta. Call me John. May I call you Malcolm? Mm -hmm. Let's talk business. That's music to my ears. I understand you used to be in the construction business. Yep. Forty-three years. Here's a brief description of 43 years of on-the-job training. Oh. <laughs> that is some history. You're a valuable asset, Malcolm. Very valuable. Thank you. Yep. 43 years. 
Half that time in my own construction company. Big jobs, uh, factories, shopping malls, that kind of thing. Then you retired. Yes. After my wife died, and I felt I should spend more time with my children and grandchildren. I lived in Florida, and they lived in New York. I understand. My daughter, Cammy, lives in New York. I like being near her. Mm. When I came here, I planned to take a few months off, relax with the family, and then look for some work. Put my experience on the line. But unfortunately, there isn't any work for a retired person my age. Sometimes there is, and sometimes there isn't. Well, I'm involved with an organization, and we're trying to resolve that problem. What's that? TOPS. T-O-P-S. Means Talented Older People's Society. Oh, I'd like to be a member. How much are the Jews? There are no Jews. The organization serves major companies in this city. Why? Because our members are men and women like you. Experienced, talented, retired. But our members want to go out there and use their talents. They want to work. That is fantastic, John. I've got an idea for you, Malcolm. Just fill out this form for me. It'll only take a few minutes. Sit right here and do it while I talk to my secretary. When I get back, we'll talk about my new factory. My company's a member of TOPS, so I try hard to find opportunities for people like you, Malcolm. And when I see an opportunity, I can act on it. Well, I can use your brain power on the job right now. Have you got time this morning to go over to the construction site with me? I'd like to have you meet my foreman, get some background on the job. I've got plenty of time. I'll be right back. We'll go over to the job site together. Malcolm, you worked on the spaceport project? My company was a contractor. <laughs> I built the theater there with my own two hands, practically. <laughs> I understand. Well, I'm glad to see you two guys getting along so well. Because, Danny, Malcolm is on the TOPS team. He's going to be working with you for a while. His experience will be valuable to both of us. Welcome aboard, Malcolm. I'm going back to my office. Give me a call later, Malcolm. I'll tell you the time and date of the next TOPS meeting. I'd like you to meet the group. I will, John. And again, thanks. No, thank you. And thanks, Susan. He's quite a man. A real inspiration for me. <laughs> okay, Danny. I know you didn't expect to have me around, but I think I can be of some help to you. Let me tell you something, Malcolm. With your background and experience, I can learn something. And I do need some advice on a difficult problem. Let me show you this. Yes. Mm. I uh, don't want to give you a final opinion without studying these building plans more carefully. But a simple solution might be to move the air conditioning units instead of redesigning the entire system. It might be simpler and less expensive. You just earned your weight in gold, Malcolm. Welcome aboard. It all happened so quickly. I can't believe it. I'm glad Mr. Marchetto was so helpful. He was more than helpful. He actually took me to meet his foreman. I'm thrilled for you, Grandpa. I don't know how to thank you, Susan. You're a wonderful granddaughter. It's good to see you so happy. I'll be at the construction site tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow night? I'm not doing anything. Why? How about a date with your grandfather? I owe you a good steak dinner. I'll accept. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tomorrow night, you and me, dinner. What time? I'll pick you up here at seven. Is that okay? I can't wait. And you can tell me all about your first full day back on the job. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Stewart, we want to know! Who is he and what has he done? That's what we want to find out! We'd like to know, so what do you say? We take a look at his resume! Here's a brief description of 43 years of on-the-job training. Name, address, and phone number. That's a good way to begin. Now we know where to write or call if we want to contact him. Where did Malcolm go to school? We need that information. We'd like to find out where and when he got his education. Bachelor of Science in Engineering in 1938. Master of Science in Engineering in 1940. That's great. We need a brief summary of Malcolm's work history. You mean his work experience. He was president for 22 years of Malcolm Stewart Associates. What did he build? He built things like Spaceport Project. Orlando Civic Center. Henderson Shoe Factory. Florida Sun and Health Club. Titusville Mall. And Dade County Art Center. And before that, Vice President, Harrison and Styles Building Corporation. And before that, Senior Engineer, Harrison and Styles Building Corporation. And before that, Project Engineer, Guilford Construction Company. And before that, Foreman, Brancusi Brothers. And before that, he was in the Navy. Seaman First Class. <laughs> There's some history. You're a valuable asset, Malcolm. In Act One, Ellen and Susan are preparing for the arrival of Marilyn and Richard's new baby, Max. Marilyn and Richard will be home from the hospital any minute, and we must prepare this room. Grandpa is excited. Max is his great-grandson. A great-grandson. Another generation to carry on the Stewart name. Mm -hmm. Susan has a gift for Marilyn and Richard. It's a baby album. They can keep a record of all of the important dates and information about Max's life here. A little later, Marilyn and Richard arrive with their new baby. I hear the car. They're here. joyous than the arrival of a new baby. I am so excited, Mother. <laughs> Just imagine Marilyn and Richard must be thrilled. Oh, a new baby. Max. Max? <laughs> Max, oh, it's a sweet-sounding name for a sweet little boy. My first grandchild. <laughs> and my first nephew. <gasps> oh, isn't he just adorable? Oh. He looks a lot like you, Mom. He does. Do you think so? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess. I mean, he does look a lot like Richard, and I guess he looks a lot like me. Oh, he's got Richard's eyes, though. I really want Harry and Michelle to see Max. When are they coming? Tomorrow. Harry has an account to work on today. Yes, he does have Richard's eyes. Big blue eyes. The baby even looks at you like Richard does. Well, children usually resemble their parents. It's true. Michelle is a lot like Harry in so many ways. And she's shy with new people just like he is. You really like Michelle, don't you? Yes, I'm very fond of her. 
And Harry, too? Well, ah, uh, it's 4.30. Oh, my, Marilyn and Richard will be home <laughs> from the hospital any minute, and we must prepare this room. Where will we put all the presents? Well, let's take everything to the living room. Marilyn and Richard and the baby need the space. <laughs> it's crowded in here. The welcome sign is up. Welcome home, Max. Oh, isn't it exciting, Grandpa? Uh -huh. Your first great-grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. A great-grandchild. A great-grandson. Another generation to carry on the Stuart name. Mm. I love you, Grandpa. Oh. You make me feel so proud to be part of our family. And one day you'll have your own family. And I'll be proud to be part of it. Now you understand my feelings, Susan. I'm Grandpa's daughter-in-law, but I feel like a steward. He's always made me feel like his own daughter. Well, that's because you're so much like us. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Mom, got it. This will make a nice gift for Marilyn and Richard. They can keep a record of all of the important dates and information about Max's life here. Let's see. Name, Max Stewart. Does he have a middle name? No, just Max. I like that. No middle name, no middle initial. Mm, like me. I'm Malcolm Stewart. Just Malcolm Stewart. And Max has your initials, Grandpa. M.S. Oh, it must mean something. <laughs> Weight. Eight pounds, six ounces. Eight, six? You're a big boy. All the Stuart men were big. Well, Robbie was eight pounds, two ounces, and Richard was eight pounds, three. And me? Eight pounds, six. <laughs> you were big. Just like Max. <laughs> Eight pounds six. Just like me. That's nice. Length. Length? Richard says Max is 21 inches long. 21 inches. Is that tall or average or what? Tall. All the Stuart men are tall. Well, Grandpa, you're about 5'9 or 5'10". I wouldn't call that tall. Mm. Well, I take after my mother's family. They were, um, uh, they were, they were average. <laughs> Mother, Marilyn. Father, Richard. And lots of pages for Richard's photos of Max. Speaking of mother and of father, and speaking of Max, I hear the car. They're here. Oh, oh quickly. Oh, 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 Max looks just like Grandpa. A real Stuart. Oh, I'm so happy to be home with my family. And with Max. Beautiful. Weight. Eight pounds, six ounces. Eight pounds, six ounces. How much is that? Metric weight, metric weight, let's do it again with metrics. About four kilograms, that's about four kilograms. What does Grandpa weigh? About 170 pounds. How much is that? Metric weight, metric weight, let's do it again with metrics. About 77 kilograms, about 77 kilograms. Richard says Max is 21 inches long. 21 inches. How long is that? Metric. Measurement. Let's do it again with metrics. About 53 centimeters. 53 centimeters. Well, 
So, Grandpa, you're about five, nine... Five feet, nine inches. How tall is that? Metric measurement. Let's do it again with metrics. About one and three quarter meters. That's about one and three quarter meters. Marilyn and Richard will be home from the hospital any minute. How fast are they driving? About 40 miles an hour. How fast is that? Metric measurement. Let's do it again with metrics. About 64 kilometers an hour. That's 64 kilometers an hour. In Act Two, it's late in the evening. It's almost 10 o'clock. I've got to go. Upstairs, Marilyn and Richard watch Max as he sleeps. It's so good to have you home again. And to see Max asleep in his bassinet at home with us. Marilyn and Richard enjoy looking at Max's gift. Susan's teddy bear? So cuddly. And they talk about Grandpa's gift. You know, it hung over my crib, too. What did Grandpa give Max? Tomorrow is Monday, and work begins at 8 in the morning for me. Oh, I'm so happy that Max is home. He's the sweetest little thing. <laughs> I'll drive you to the station, dear. Uh, you can catch the 1020 train to Grand Central Station. I'll drive, Susan, dear. Oh, thank you, Philip. Then Grandpa Robbie and I can finish wrapping all these gifts. <clears throat> It's so good to have you home again. And to see Max asleep in his bassinet at home with us. To be with our family. You know, that Stuart TLC. TLC. Tender, loving care. <laughs> That's our motto. Did you see the washcloth and the towels? The teddy bears on them? <laughs> Alexandra and the Molina sent them for Max. It was so kind of them. Now Max is coming to everyone's life. The house is so alive with him here. The welcome sign over the door, the boxes of presents, the MAX over his bassinet. Robbie put that there. <laughs> Susan's teddy bear? So cuddly. A beautiful crib for Mom and Dad. Oh, and Grandpa's baseball glove. You know, it hung over my crib, too. And it hung over Robbie's crib. Part of Grandpa's magic? Oh, that's not all. It hung over Susan's crib. The same baseball glove? That's right. Grandpa hangs it there for good luck. He says, it always brought him good luck on the baseball team. He believes it'll bring good luck to all the Stewart babies. <laughs> and then he takes it back when Max is ready to use it? Yes, and replaces it with a new glove, so the old one will be ready for a new member of the Stewart family. Grandpa really loves his family, doesn't he? So do I. And so do I. And so does Max. After he eats. <laughs> oh. 
Grandpa really loves his family, doesn't he? So do I. Grandpa loves his family. So does she. Grandpa loves his family. So does he. There's a lot of love here every single day. Grandpa loves his family. So do they. Susan works in business. So does he. Richard likes to exercise. So does she. Philip works with children. She works with them too. She works in a hospital. So does he. It's true. Grandpa likes to be outside. On a summer day, he likes to be outdoors fishing, and so do they. Marilyn has curly hair, so does she. Grandpa has a little hair, <laughs> so does he. Harry likes to see the sights on a beautiful day. Harry likes to see the sights. And so do they. Grandpa likes to be outside on a summer day. He likes to be outdoors fishing, and so do they. Philip loves his family. Susan loves her family. There's a lot of love here. Every single day, Grandpa loves his family, and so do they, and so do they, and so do they. In Act Three, Marilyn opens a gift from Harry and Michelle. Isn't this baby outfit adorable? <laughs> <laughs> With his name on it, Max. Susan offers to take Michelle upstairs to see the baby. Would you like to see baby Max, Michelle? What will Michelle think of Max? Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't this baby outfit adorable? <laughs> With his name on it, Max. <sighs> Thanks so much, Harry and Michelle. We really appreciate it. I'm glad you like it. Michelle picked it out. Oh. Yes, I told Daddy to pick blue ones. Blue is for boys and pink is for girls. And Max is some boy. <laughs> He's a real Stuart. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was so thoughtful of you, Michelle. Especially to pick it out in blue. Would you like to see baby Max, Michelle? Could she? Uh, could we? Could I? Take them upstairs, Susan. Harry and Michelle can watch Max sleeping. Let's go. Come on, Michelle, before Max wakes up. <laughs> Will you please take this upstairs, Susan? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Michelle is very grown up for a 10-year-old, huh? She's smart and sensitive for her age. Growing up without a mother is difficult. You mature quickly. Susan's like a mother to Michelle. They have a good relationship. Do you think Susan and Harry will get married? <laughs> You can count on it. <laughs> I think so. Yes, they, they get along so well. I like him. He's good for Susan. He's a little quiet. It's hard to do anything but listen in this family. <laughs> How can anybody get a word in around here? <laughs> You're right, Ellen. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the way it should be. The Stuarts are the Stuarts. They always were and they always will be. Right. They've always got an opinion. 
I've always got something to say. <laughs> and now there's Max Stewart. And if he talks as loudly as he cries, we're all in for trouble. Mm. <laughs> he's quiet now. Mm-hmm. That's because he's sleeping. It's not necessary to whisper, Harry. A baby gets used to voices. I remember now. We always whispered when Michelle was born. And I didn't sleep well, Daddy told me. I never slept. And when I did, I woke up when I heard someone speak. I bet you were cute. She sure was. Not as cute as Max. He's like a little doll. Oh, good. Now I can help diaper him. <laughs> Let's get Marilyn. Uh, wh <sighs> what, do you, what do you do when he cries like that? You pick him up. <laughs> oh, he, he's so little. So new. Uh, let's call Marilyn. Time for a feeding. Oh. And time for a diapering. family, Baby Max, Max Stewart. You know what that means, don't you? That means I, Malcolm Stewart, am now a great-grandfather, and Max is my great-grandson. My son, Philip, is a grandfather now. He's Max's grandpa. And Ellen's his grandmother, a very loving grandma. Susan thinks that Max looks like Ellen, but Robbie thinks Max looks like me. Robbie is Max's uncle. He thinks his little nephew Max is pretty special. Susan, Max's aunt, thinks he's special too. And so do I. And so do his parents, Marilyn and Richard. They love Max very much. Oh, little Max, I love you. You're a real steward, just like me. And just like all of us. In the first act, Susan and Harry prepare lunch for Harry's daughter, Michelle, and her friends. Michelle and her friends are at the aquarium in Brooklyn. They come back here for lunch, then go uptown to the Museum of Natural History. Susan likes living in New York City. It's so convenient. I can take the bus to work, or the subway, or a taxi. Harry lives in the suburbs, but he likes the city, too. The truth is, I'd like to live in the city. A little later, Harry and Susan talk privately as they wait for the girls to arrive. Um, they'll be here any minute. Susan, I'd like to um, continue this conversation later. What do you suppose they're talking about?
You like living in New York, don't you? Oh, I love it. It's so convenient. I can take the bus to work or the subway or a taxi. And there's so much to do. Lots of movie houses and the theater. I know what you mean. I'd like to live in the city. But living in New Jersey in the suburbs is better for Michelle. Trees, grass. Uh, there's a lot of good things about suburban living. I grew up in Riverdale, remember? So I know. But as a working woman, I think New York has all the conveniences, including the best tomatoes. Mm. Mm. The truth is, I'd like to live in the city. Michelle's the right age. There are lots of things for her here. You're right, Harry. Today is the perfect example. Michelle and her friends are at the aquarium in Brooklyn. They come back here for lunch, then go uptown to the Museum of Natural History. There's so much for young people to see and do. It's just incredible. Just for young people? What about me? I've never been to the aquarium or the Museum of Natural History. Have you? Oh, yes, Harry. My mother and father often took us somewhere in the city on the weekends. Dad was a busy doctor, but he usually managed to squeeze a Sunday in with Richard Robbie and me. I used to love to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Well, I've been there several times, twice with Michelle. You ought to think about spending more time with Michelle at all the great places in the city. Well, perhaps you'll help me select some of the great places. Huh. And perhaps you'll join us. Perhaps I will. Well, there we are. All set for lunch, Harry. Looks inviting. I wish Michelle and her friends would get here. I'm starving, aren't you? <laughs> I can't wait to take a bite of the pumpernickel. It smells so delicious. Oh, coming, coming! Who is it? Michelle. It's us, Susan. Come in, Michelle, and bring your friends along. We're on the fifth floor. Oh, you've been here before. Susan, I, uh, I really appreciate you doing this for Michelle and her friends. Oh, please, Harry, it's nothing. I'm not just doing it for Michelle. I'm doing it for you. Thank you. I'm doing it for us, Harry. Well, it's, it's important for Michelle to see us together more often. That's true. It's important for Michelle and me to get to know each other better. That's important for us. That makes me feel good. What, Harry? What makes you feel good? <laughs> well, that, that you care about Michelle, that you care about me, and that you care about us. Well, Harry, that, that's because I do. I do care. Um, they'll be here any minute. Susan, I I'd like to, um, continue this conversation later. Of course, Harry. We'll finish the conversation when they go to the museum. I'd like that. So would I. <laughs> Jersey in the suburbs is better for Michelle. Trees, grass. We have a nice house with trees in front of it and a backyard for Michelle and her friends to play in. It's a quiet neighborhood where people like to take long walks. Yeah. The truth is, I'd like to live in the city. Michelle's the right age. There are lots of things for her here. Like today, for example. Michelle and her friends went to the aquarium in Brooklyn. Well, then they went to the Museum of Natural History. I'd love to go there myself. But we could look at the dinosaurs. And, and Michelle likes the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We went there together. And Susan likes the museum, too. There's lots of things for us to do together in the city. Like going to the South Street Seaport. Oh, we had such a good time there. In Central Park. Oh, what a beautiful ride we took in the park. All those trees and the sunshine. I like the suburbs. Or we could go to the Central Park Zoo. <laughs> Michelle loves animals. You know, the city has so much to offer, so much for us to do together. Maybe Michelle and I would like it here. Hmm. 
Maybe we would. In the second act, Michelle arrives with her friends. I'd like her to meet Audrey and her mother, Mrs. Cooper. Susan's company has made a new game. She teaches the girls and Harry how to play it. The leader takes the first ten cards and lays them face up on this stand. But Michelle doesn't really like the game. I think it's too easy. Too easy? How does Susan feel? Oh, oh Daddy, we had such a good time at the aquarium. I saw a real shark. I could almost touch it. Oh, I'm so glad. Hi. <laughs> Michelle, why don't you introduce everybody to Susan? Hi, Susan. Hi. I'd like you to meet Audrey and her mother, Mrs. Cooper. Hello, Audrey. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Cooper. I'm Susan <laughs> Stewart. And this is Shirley and Nicole. Hi, girl. Come on in. Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> the aquarium was so exciting. I had never been there before. The girls learned a great deal. Frankly, so did I. Well, please sit down and tell us all about it during lunch. We've prepared some tuna fish and cheese sandwiches for lunch. I love tuna fish, don't you, Audrey? Mm, I remember when I used to be a Girl Scout. My mother would take us everywhere, too. <laughs> Susan, I understand you're in the toy business. Yes, I am. My company manufactures toys and games for children. Susan's vice president in charge of new toys and games. And the marketing of new toys and games. Can we test a new game for you, Susan? That's an excellent idea, Michelle. I happen to have a game which I brought home to study. Let us try it. Don't you want to play? <laughs> Nicole, Shirley, Audrey? We tested it last week on 12 to 15-year-olds, and they found it to be too easy. In other words, boring. We think it might be just right for 10 to 12-year-olds. That's us, Susan. First, you shuffle the deck and lay them face down. Then you select the leader. I'll be the leader. The leader takes the first 10 cards and lays them face up on this stand. H. T. E. R, C, Z, E, P, E, S. Everyone gets a turn going counterclockwise left to right. You have 30 seconds to make a word using as many letters as possible. You get one point for each letter plus... The person with the longest word gets 10 extra points. The first one to get 100 points wins. That's easy. <laughs> okay, let's go around the table. You first, Audrey. Chat. C. H. E. S. T. Good. That's five points. Next, Nicole. Three. T H R E E. Okay, that's five points also. It's your turn, Shirley. Creep. C R E E P. <laughs> Creep. That's another five letter word. Five points. So far, you're all tied. Sheet. S H E E T. Sheet. Sheet is a five letter word. <laughs> Michelle, your turn. Cheese. C H E E S E. Terrific. Michelle wins with a six letter word, plus, she gets an additional 10 points. For a total of 16 points. How are you enjoying the game so far? I think it's too easy. Too easy? Michelle? It's okay, Harry. Michelle is quite right. She just said it's too easy. Well, 
I liked the game. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed lunch, Susan. Thank you so much. But we have to get going to meet the rest of the troupe at 2 o'clock at the museum. Oh, it was nice meeting all of you. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful time at the Museum of Natural History. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good Bye. time. See you in front of the museum at oh, 5 o'clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Bennett. That'll be fine. And thanks again for the lunch and for the game. Thanks, Susan. It's not a bad game. It's just slow. Just slow. You helped save our company a lot of money. Bye-bye. You are wonderful with kids. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Isn't there a uh, conversation that we have to finish? It's time to play Take My Word. Here are the rules of the game. We'll ask you to make some words from these letters. We'll tell you how many letters are in the word, and we'll give you a clue. Are you ready? Let's begin. You're looking for a word with three letters, a three-letter word. Here's your clue. You have five seconds. Go. Time's up. Who says... A cat, of course. Now another word. It has four letters, a four-letter word. Here's your clue. Max is Susan's nephew. So Susan is Max's what? You have six seconds. Go. Your time is up. Susan is Max's aunt. Let's go on. Another four-letter word. You can wear this when it's cold outside. You have six seconds. Take my word. All right, what do you wear when it's cold outside? Well, I don't know about you, but I wear a coat. Let's keep going. A three-letter word, and here's your clue. You can do it with scissors. Five seconds, go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can use scissors to cut. And now a word with five letters. Here's your clue. Seven seconds, go. Time's up. The answer is count. You can count with your fingers. And now, friends, for the last word, you must use all ten letters, a ten-letter word. And here's your clue. What is Harry Bennett's occupation? You have eight seconds. Go. All right, Harry Bennett is an accountant. And that's all the time we have. Thanks for playing Take My Word! In the third act, Harry and Susan are alone again. And Harry wants to talk. There's a um, conversation we have to finish. Harry is trying to say something. Well, assume that if you care about Michelle and you care about me and you care about us, that we can talk about us. I mean, you and me. What is Harry trying to say? There's a um, conversation we have to finish. What was it about? It was about caring. Oh. Yes, caring. I said that it makes me feel good that you care about Michelle. Well, I do care about Michelle. And it makes me feel good that you care about me. You know I do. You're a wonderful friend. And it makes me feel good that you care about us. Both. 
Well, I do, Harry. It's, it's only natural that if I care about Michelle, and I care about you, then I care about us. It's okay, Susan. We, <laughs> we had this part of the conversation before Michelle and her friends arrived. Now comes the good part. Like what? Well, assume that if you care about Michelle, and you care about me, and you care about us, that we can talk about us. I, I mean, you and me. Isn't that right? What are you trying to say, Harry? What I'm trying to say... Since this is so easy... Here... are... ten letters... that express... my feelings... For you. Oh, don't be silly, Harry. Oh, you want a hint? It's two words. You're making the game harder. What? Can't you figure it out? Seven letters, two words that express the feelings that I feel for you in my heart? Harry, I get it. Well, does that mean you'll marry me? Is that a proposal, or are we just playing a game? Sit down, Susan. There's something I have to ask you. Susan, will you marry me? It's such an important decision. There are so many things to talk about. There are three things that have to be done first, Harry. Three things? First, we have to decide where to live. Well, that's easy. We talked about that earlier. We'll live in New York. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Second, we have to talk to Michelle together about being married. We'll do that immediately. What's the third thing? You have to ask for my father's permission. Absolutely. But first things first, we have to go pick up Michelle. Oh. Oh, I'm so happy, Harry. Not as happy as I am. It wasn't easy for me to do, but I finally asked Susan to marry me. Well, does that mean you'll marry me? Is that a proposal, or are we just playing a game? I'm not just playing games. There's something on my mind I want to talk about. It's hard for me to say, but I can spell it out for you to see easily. I'm not just playing games I hope you know how much I really care for you No matter where you are I'm always there for you I want to share my life with you So will you marry me? I will always love you And I'll try to make you happy every day Marry me I will always care for you We'll always have each other We'll be a family I'm not just playing games If you could only read my mind You'd know by now 
I'll spell it out for you So I can show you how I feel for you Two words Marry me Marry me Marry me In Act One Richard gives Marilyn a bouquet of roses. What are the flowers for, Richard? Five years of happiness. Happy anniversary. To celebrate their fifth wedding anniversary, Richard wants to take Marilyn to the Watermill Inn. You and I, Mrs. Stewart, are going to spend the second honeymoon at the Watermill Inn. But Richard gets disappointing news. What? Are you sure? But I... Okay. What's the matter? <gasps> What's this for? Just because. How's the baby? Fast asleep. I'm sorry I missed him. I had to work late. Richard? Five years of happiness. Happy anniversary. Our anniversary isn't until Saturday. I couldn't wait. Besides, uh, we are not going to be here Saturday. We're not? Uh-uh. Where are we going to be? If you had your choice of all the places in the world, where would you choose to spend our anniversary? Watermill Inn. I loved that place when we went on our honeymoon. Perfect. You picked the right place. I don't understand. You and I, Mrs. Stewart, are going to spend a second honeymoon at the Watermill Inn. Oh, Richard, that's wonderful. But... No buts. What about the baby? Aren't we taking the baby on our honeymoon? Absolutely not. The world's greatest grandmother, Mrs. Ellen Stewart, has agreed to take care of him for the weekend. Richard... Isn't that too much to ask of your mother? Too much? She loves taking care of Max. But... I'll miss him. Well, we'll phone every hour and you can listen to him over the phone. Come on, Mare, it's time you and I had a romantic weekend alone together. We've earned it. What do you say? It does sound tempting. You're right. We've earned it. Great. I'll make a reservation right now. Remember that wonderful little balcony where we had our meals? With a view of the Hudson River? Oh, could I forget? <laughs> Hello, is Mrs. Montefiore there? Ah. She's out. Uh, yes, this is Richard Stewart. My wife and I spent our honeymoon at the inn. No, we didn't leave anything in the room. It was five years ago. We'd like to make a reservation for this weekend. Yes, a double room, please. What? Are you sure? But I... Okay. Nothing available. Oh, uh, wait. Don't hang up. Can you recommend someplace nice? Someplace nearby? Uh, hold it. Old Country Inn? Right. And the phone number? 555-2420. Thank you. He says there's another inn just a half a mile down the road from the watermill. It won't be the same, but, uh, what do you say? Well... My mom is available to babysit this weekend. Well, okay. <laughs> See if they have a room. Right. Hello, is this the old country inn? 
Uh, yes, this is Richard Stewart. The desk clerk at the water mill suggested you're in. Would you happen to have a room for two available this weekend? Something really nice. My wife and I are celebrating our fifth anniversary. Yes, I'll hold. He's checking. You do? Great. Uh, what is the daily rate? That's fine. Thank you. Uh, yes, we'll be arriving by car about 10 o'clock Friday night. Stewart. S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E Thank you. Done. You and I, Mrs. Stewart, are going to have a wonderful, romantic weekend. Richard, that's the baby. Good afternoon, Watermelon. May I help you? Hi, I'd like some information about the inn. Of course. We're located in the town of Rhinebeck, just a two-hour drive from the city. What kinds of accommodations do you have? For a very special vacation, we have a large honeymoon suite. Well, I... Or if you prefer, you can reserve a smaller single room. That's probably... Or a double room with a fireplace and a balcony. I really think... And the view of the Hudson River from the balcony is absolutely gorgeous. I don't really... Enjoy beautiful views? Well, the town of Rhinebeck is the perfect place to take an afternoon walk. I do like to. And of course, after all that walking, you'll want to relax and have a delicious dinner in our romantic dining room. Well, I don't know. I may be... Too tired to come to the dining room? Don't worry. Our friendly room service is always ready to bring delicious meals to your room. Oh, how nice. Nice? Our innkeeper, Mrs. Montefiore, is the nicest person you'll ever meet. She's been making the Watermill Inn a comfortable place for guests for over 20 years. What time is... Check-in? Well, you can check in any time after 1 p.m. and check out any time before 12 noon. Now, when would you like your reservations and what type of room would you like? I'm not quite sure... You can be sure that the Watermill Inn is the finest small hotel in all of New York State. New York? I thought I called Florida. In Act Two, Richard and Marilyn are disappointed about their room at the old country inn. Clean? You call this clean? The trip is disappointing in other ways, too. The rain, the room, the view of the parking lot. It isn't the way I hoped it would be. So Marilyn and Richard decide to go home. As they get ready to go, the phone rings. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is she? Is something else wrong? Right this way, Mr. and Mrs. Stewart. Well, it's small, but clean. Clean? Call this clean? Nice day. Thank you. I don't believe this. Well, it isn't uh, a watermill inn, but uh, let's get a look at the view. How is the view? Great. If you enjoy looking at a parking lot. Well, maybe we'll see the view in the morning. Right now, we should clean up this room. Sorry, Marilyn. How should you be sorry? Well, the rain, the room, the view of the parking lot. It isn't the way I hoped it would be. Stop blaming yourself. We're all, we're, we're here. 
alone and together. I love you. Isn't that enough? It is for me, but I wanted this weekend to be special for you. It is special. The anniversary. It's still raining. I want to play tennis. I want the breakfast. Let's call room service, or order a nice breakfast, and then we'll figure out what to do today. Right. Would you get me room service, please? I beg your pardon? Oh, I see. They don't have room service at Old Country Inn. Well, let's go down to the coffee shop. They don't have a coffee shop. We can get our meals at Mrs. Montefiore's down the road. <laughs> That's okay, honey. I love walking in the rain. Oh, you're being a really good sport about this, Marilyn, but I think we should face the truth. What's that? This is not the way to spend our fifth anniversary. Well, what do you want to do? Why don't we get in the car and drive home? Oh, Richard, it really isn't that bad. Do you want to stick it out for the whole weekend? Well, I'll admit the room is uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I do feel bad about your mother having to take care of the baby all weekend. Why don't we just check out? Okay. <laughs> hello? Yes? Yes, this is she? Oh, hello. How nice of you to remember us. Yes, my husband did call. You do? Really? It, it won't be any trouble? Oh, yes. I think we'd like that very much. Fifteen minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. She will never guess. Uh, I give up. Mrs. Montefiore, from the Watermill Inn. What is she calling about? They have an opening. Someone just checked out, and Mrs. Montefiore has reserved the honeymoon suite for us. You're kidding. No. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? It's fantastic! <laughs> oh! Now all it has to do is stop raining. <laughs> Let's go. <clears throat> Marilyn and Richard hope to have a wonderful weekend. Hope to have, hope to have. But Richard doesn't like the view. Great. If you enjoy looking at a parking lot, he doesn't enjoy. Looking at cars, enjoy looking, enjoy looking. When two verbs <coughs> are together in a sentence, the second verb sometimes has two in front of it. Sometimes it ends in ing. Marilyn is happy. We're here. We're alone. We're together, and I love you. But it keeps raining all night long. Keeps raining, keeps raining. The next morning, Richard wants to play tennis. Wants to play, wants to play. Marilyn suggests going to the coffee shop. Suggest going, suggest. Going. They don't have a coffee shop. But they need to eat breakfast. Need to eat. Need to eat. After enjoy, keep and suggest. Use a verb with I and G. After hope, want and need. 
use a verb with two in front of it. What are they gonna do? I love walking in the rain. She loves walking in the rain. Loves walking. She loves to walk in the rain. Loves to walk. After love, use a verb with ing. You can also use a verb with to in front of it. In Act 3, Richard and Marilyn enter the honeymoon suite at the Watermill Inn. Welcome to the Watermill Inn. Oh, Richard, it's exactly as it was when we were married. And they enjoy talking with Mrs. Montefiore, the innkeeper. I remember you and your wife from the first time you stayed with us. We were very young. <laughs> and very much in love. As Mrs. Montefiore leaves the suite, there's a knock at the door. Who could that be? Welcome to the Watermill Inn. Oh, Richard, it's exactly as it was when we were married. And when I got married. Even the old patchwork quilt is the same. My great-grandmother made that quilt when Teddy Roosevelt was president. In those days when they made quilts, they cut patches from the old clothing of every member in the family so that each one would be a part of it. A lovely tradition. Thank you for calling us. I remember you and your wife from the first time you stayed with us. We were very young. <laughs> and very much in love. We have a baby now. How wonderful. A boy or a girl? A boy, Max. Do you have a picture? Would a professional photographer be without a picture? Oh, he's adorable. And very bright. Like his father. A real steward. And very good looking, like his mother. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you with us again. Next time, bring the baby. You see, Richard, Max is welcome here. Not on our anniversary. This vacation is for you and me. If there's anything you need, please call me. I'll be in the front office all day. Hmm. Oh, I took the liberty of ordering some breakfast for you. Let's put it over there, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Compliments of the Watermill Inn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, this is my idea of a good time. <laughs> Let's see. Hot cakes and maple syrup with scrambled eggs. Mm, smell that coffee. Cinnamon and clove. Homemade buttermilk biscuits. Mm. Slices of orange with burnt honey. Let's eat. First, I want to call home and check on your mother and the baby. Honey, if there were any problems, she would call us. She doesn't know we've changed hotels. You're right, of course. Hello, operator. I'd like to call Riverdale, New York. Food is heavenly, isn't it? This whole place. Do you remember that old desk? Mrs. Montefiore told me that George Washington sat at that desk and wrote to his wife, Martha. What do you want to do after breakfast? Then why don't we take a walk down to the river? In the rain? No. Look out the window. The sun is shining. Now this is my idea of a good time.
Looking at our photographs from all our time together, I see us both changing through the years. I can't believe how young we looked. It seems a million years ago. But through it all, we've shared our joys and tears. There we are together, once upon a time, reminding me of how we used to be. There we are together, smiling at the camera. Each day was bright and new for us. There we are, the two of us, and still we are together, you and me. Every photograph reminds me how I love you and how our love gets better every day. Every photograph reminds me how the years just come and go. And I can see our love grow with every photograph. Looking at our photographs, I'm going back in time, watching every anniversary. The pictures take me there again, but we both look so different then. Could that really be you and me? Every photograph reminds me how I love you And I can see our love grow with every photograph In the first act, a letter arrives for Grandpa the return name and address is Pete Waters, RFD number one, Chesterton. Pete Waters is an old friend of Grandpa's. He was my roommate in college. In the letter, Pete invites Grandpa to a reunion, a time to see their old friends again. He's writing to invite me to spend a weekend with him at his farm. He's planning a get-together with two or three other college friends kind of a 50-year anniversary reunion. Will Grandpa go to the reunion? The mailman just dropped some mail in our box, Grandpa. Oh, probably a lot of advertising and bills. Why don't you write to me, Robbie, so I can get some interesting mail? You were right, Grandpa. Advertising, bills, bills, advertising. It's just like I said, Robbie. Nothing interesting. You won't believe it, Grandpa. But there's a letter here addressed to you. Mr. Malcolm Stewart. And it looks like a personal letter. That must be a bill. I don't think so. The return name and address is Pete Waters. RFD number one, Chesterton. You're joking. Pete Waters? Pete Waters, RFD number one, Chesterton. You know him? <laughs> do I know Pete Waters? <laughs> you bet I do. He was my roommate in college. <clears throat> he visited with uh, Grandma and me in Florida about five years ago. What does he say? Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. Just fine. He's writing to invite me to spend a weekend with him at his farm. He's planning a get-together with two or three other college friends. A kind of 50-year anniversary reunion. Sounds like fun. 50 years? 
Wow. That sounds like fun to me, too, Robbie. What kind of farm does he have? I've never been there, Robbie. But he has chickens and cows and all. That means fresh eggs and fresh milk. Does he have a family? No, he doesn't, Robbie. He never married. He's not as lucky as I am. I have a family and grandchildren. I'm a lucky man. How come he never got married? That's a good question, Robbie. A very good question. He never married because the girl he was in love with in college married someone else. As simple as that. He never got over it. He must have loved her very much. Yes, very much. Lillian Winters. She was in our class. And what happened? She was in love with Donald McGrath, the quarterback on our football team. Football players are always popular with the ladies. <laughs> she liked Pete, and they went to dances together. But her heart was with Donald. Did he ever get over it? Oh, he never did. Where is she today? I don't know. Maybe Lillian will be at the reunion. You think so? Pete's full of surprises. I wish I could go there with you, Grandpa. What do you think the surprise will be? <laughs> with Pete, you never know, Robbie. Won't it be exciting to see all your college friends there again? <laughs> it is already. I'm kind of excited about going now. Next weekend. Sleep over Friday and Saturday night. Come back Sunday. <laughs> I can't wait. Don't you think you ought to call Pete and tell him you're coming? You're reading my mind, Robbie. He's planning a get-together with two or three other college friends. A kind of 50-year uh, anniversary reunion. I got a letter in the mail today. It said, how you doing, old friend? I've been thinking about you, so tell me what's new. We should get together again. I haven't seen you for a long time. I was thinking about you today. And if I could, I'd come right over. But you live too far away. The letter said, Here's your invitation, it said mm, We're having a celebration Let's get together Have a reunion It's been a while, you gotta show me that smile And I wanna see you again Let's get together Have a reunion Come on you're invited, we'll be reunited, and we'll get to know each other again. I want to hear those old stories, I want to sing an old, old song. The letter said, bring your camera, take some pictures, hope you can come along. And if you can come, won't you let me know, you can write or give me a call. Before you know it, you're gonna feel like the years never passed at all. The letter said, Here's your invitation, it said mm, We're having a celebration Let's get together Have a reunion, oh yeah It's been a while, you gotta show me that smile And I wanna see you again Let's get together Have a reunion In the second act Grandpa is traveling to Pete Waters' farm. When he stops for gasoline, the man at the gas station gives him directions for a shortcut, a shorter route to Pete's farm. Take the next left turn. You'll see a stop sign. Make a right at the stop sign. Later, a farm worker gives Grandpa more directions. Keep along this road till you get to the end of the fence. You'll see the chicken house. His house is on the left. Will Grandpa ever find the farm?
What can I do for you? I fill her up. I need a full tank. Check the hood? No, thanks. Whereabouts you headed? The Pete Waters farm. Ah. Near Chesterton. I know it well. Huh? Well, Pete Waters lived around here almost as long as I have. <laughs> How long is it going to take the uh, farm to get there? About 15 minutes. There's a shortcut if you know it. I don't. Could you uh, tell me how to use the shortcut? Sure. You take the next left turn. You'll see a stop sign. Make a right at the stop sign. Stay on that road and you'll cross a blue bridge. Then you'll see a big old red barn. That's back to Pete Waters Place. That's quite a difference from the directions that Pete sent me. Now, if you take that route, it's probably a lot simpler, but uh, it'll take you ten minutes longer. Okay. Let me repeat it. Huh? Uh, take the next left turn to the stop sign. Then a right, across a blue bridge. Huh? Then a big red barn. Can't miss. Huh? <laughs> How much do I owe you? Well... That'll be $18.70. Uh, no charge for the cleanup. It's on the house. <laughs> uh, here's a 20. Ah, okay, that's a uh, dollar and 30 cents change. There we go. We'll make 20. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the directions. Pete's barn. Turn right to the house. Hi. Hi, what can I do for you? Is this the Pete Waters farm? It is. I'm a friend of Pete's. I'm looking for the house. It's just over yonder. Keep along this road till you get to the end of the fence. You'll see the chicken house. His house is on the left. Oh, thanks. I've gone to the railroad station. Back soon with a surprise. Make yourself at home. Have a look around. Pete. <laughs> Same old Pete Waters. Always full of surprises. Could you uh, tell me how to use the shortcut? Sure. You take the next left turn. You'll see a stop sign. Make a right at the stop sign. Stay on that road and you'll cross a blue bridge. Then you'll see a big old red barn. You take the next left turn. You'll see a stop sign. Make a right at the stop sign. Stay on that road and you'll cross a blue bridge. Then you'll see a big old red barn. Here goes. Oh. oh, here. Yes, okay. Well, sir. Keep along this road till you get to the end of the fence. You'll see the chicken house. His house is on the left. All right. Well, I made it to Pete's house. But he's not here. 
I think I'd like to see some more of the countryside while I wait for him to get back. I'll back out of the driveway and be on my way. Hmm, dead end. Let me back up again and go in the opposite direction and see what I find. But a nice horse farm. Well, I'd better get back to Pete's. Let's see. All I have to do is back out of the driveway, make a right, pass the lake, go to the fork in the road, cross the railroad tracks, and make a right at the first intersection. Each driveway should be the first right turn. I made it. In the third act, Grandpa sees two of his old friends, Peggy Pendleton and Arnold Franklin. The two of you look unbelievable. A little later, Pete arrives. Hey, that must be Pete. And it's time for the surprise. Come on, we'll tell you the big surprise. <laughs> What's the surprise? You. Oh, don't be silly, Arnie. Of course you recognize him. Except for the beard he hasn't changed in 50 years. It's <sighs> Malcolm Stewart. <laughs> I know it's Malcolm Stewart. You haven't changed much in 50 years. <laughs> Peggy. Peggy Pendleton. You're Peggy Pendleton. <laughs> who am I, you old rascal? You don't recognize me, do you? I know who you are. <laughs> You're Arnold Franklin. <laughs> oh, I know who you are. <laughs> you look wonderful. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> sit down, sit down. Pete isn't home. Really? Oh, he left a note on the door saying he was going to the uh, uh, railroad station to pick up a surprise. He's so funny. <laughs> Always full of surprises, yeah. even 50 years later. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you look unbelievable. <laughs> How, how's your family? Oh, I was sorry to hear about your wife having passed away. Yes, about four years ago. And you're living with your children now in New York? Pete wrote us and told us. Yep. Retired and uh, moved to New York to live with my son and his family. By the way, what do you think this big surprise is? It could be most anything knowing Pete. <laughs> hey, that must be Pete. Now we'll find out about the surprise. Mm -hmm. So good to see you. Oh, Hi, Pete. Pete. Oh, Pete. Oh, it's so good hey, to see you. you. Oh. <laughs> remember Lillian? <laughs> I remember all of you. You haven't changed a bit. Really? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> we were together in the Thursday Night Drama Society. <laughs> Never me, Malcolm. Oh, beautiful as ever, Lillian. How's Donald? Oh. That's okay, Malcolm. Donald passed away a couple of years ago. Oh, oh I'm so that, sorry. I would not have missed this get-together for the world. And you're a little surprised, Pete. You really surprised me by having us all come together. <laughs> You don't know what the surprise is yet. <laughs> Come on! We'll tell you the big surprise! <laughs> I've invited you here for the weekend to help celebrate. Celebrate? Our 50th reunion. No! No, Pete wants to tell Now let me have the honor, Lillian. For goodness sake, Pete, tell us. I can't wait much longer. Well... 
I am pouring this iced tea so that we can toast Lillian and me. You don't mean to tell me that you... <laughs> yes, I do. I have loved Lillian all these years, so I asked her to be Mrs. Pete Waters. And I said yes. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Congratulations. Oh, Lillian, I am so happy for you both. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful for me. Lillian will make me a happy man. Finally. <laughs> you are full of surprises, Pete. We are going to spend the entire weekend having a good time together here on the farm. We are going to celebrate all weekend. When is the wedding? Ah, that's another surprise. Lily and I were married two weeks ago in Detroit. Ah! <laughs> She's come here to stay. Uh, wait till I tell my family about this. Why, that's, that's wonderful. What a weekend. Pete and Lillian seem so happy. After all these years, 50 years to be exact. 50 years ago, I was a young man. Not bad looking either. <laughs> and Pete was my college roommate, a real pal. He conducted the orchestra. He really loved music. Pete loved Lillian from the moment they met. Sometimes he'd call the radio station where I was an announcer and ask me to play certain love songs for Lillian. She'd always been lovely. And he wanted to spend his life with her. Lil liked Pete, but she fell in love with Donald. Donald and I were on the Michigan football team. He was the quarterback and captain. I was the smallest one on the team. I finally got to play in my senior year. <laughs> Lil and Donald got married right after college and bought a house in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, look at this. Here's a picture of Lil and their son, Donald Jr. Later, the family grew to include Robert and Barbara. Meanwhile, Pete stayed single, working hard, conducting orchestras, playing in bands and teaching music until he retired and bought the farm in Chesterton four years ago. Donald passed away. And now Pete and Lil are married and living on his farm. You never know what's going to happen. Life is full of surprises. In Act One, Richard looks at his last group of photographs for his book, Family Album USA. He's not sure he has everything he wants. Performing arts, performing arts centers, I think I've got them all, but I'm not sure. Richard wants someone to publish Family Album USA, but he thinks it will be difficult. Oh, you think you're going to have a hard time getting the album published? Well, it won't be easy. He tries to get an appointment with Harvey Carlson, publisher of the Carlson Publishing Company. Uh, hello, Mr. Carlson, please. Mr. Carlson is busy at the moment. May I help you? Will Richard get an appointment with Mr. Carlson? You think you've got what? Performing arts. Performing arts centers. I think I've got them all, but I'm not sure. What do you have, Dr. Richard? 
Center, home of the Metropolitan Opera, the New York City Ballet, the New York Philharmonic, Schubert Alley, center of the theater on Broadway, and Carnegie Hall, and the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington. And the Music Center in Los Angeles. And the others. They do have it all. <laughs> you have been working on this for some time, Richard. I'm glad you feel you finally put it all together. What now? Now for the hard part. Oh, oh, you think you're going to have a hard time getting the album published? Well, it won't be easy. So, what do you think you're going to do? Does the name Harvey Carlson ring a bell? Oh, yes. Harvey Carlson, I remember. You said I should call him. He is the publisher of the Carlson Publishing Company. He said they need a new book of photographs, and he really liked my concept. So why don't you call him in the morning? Do you think I have enough to show him? I've been through every section with you, Richard. It's quite complete. Now that you're satisfied with the performing arts section, I think you should show it to Mr. Carlson. You're right. My family album, USA, feels right. I'll call in the morning and set up an appointment to see him. Get some sleep. Is it too early to call Mr. Carlson? Seven after nine? No. I'm sure he's in his office. Number is five 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 seven five three two. Five 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 seven five three two. Uh, hello, Mr. Carlson, please. Mr. Carlson is busy at the moment. May I help you? I'd like to make an appointment with him. And your name is? Oh, my name is Richard Stewart. He told me to call him about my project, Family Album USA. One moment, please. What's going on? I guess they're trying to set up an appointment for me. Mr. Stewart, I just spoke to Mr. Carlson. He would like to see you, but the only time he's available this week is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. <laughs> well, it's done. Tomorrow morning in a publisher's office. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it, Richard? Well, finally, a publisher will see my work. Center for the Performing Arts, New York City. The John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, Washington, D.C. Nashville, Tennessee. The Gus F. Wortham Theater Center, Houston, Texas.
the San Jose Center for the Performing Arts, San Jose, California. The Music Center of Los Angeles County, Los Angeles, California. The Seattle Community Arts Center, Seattle, Washington. In Act Two, Richard meets with Mr. Carlson. Hello, Richard. Hello, Mr. Carlson. Mr. Carlson would like to see Richard's work. We need a new coffee table book. And a book of photos about the United States still feels right. Okay, let's take a look. Carlson likes Richard's photographs. I'm glad you like them. I do. But. But what? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Richard Stewart. I'm here to see Mr. Carlson. Please sit down, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Carlson will be with you shortly. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Carlson, but Richard Stewart is here for his 10 o'clock appointment with you. Okay, thank you. Like I said, he'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Carlson. Yes, sir. He's ready for you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. In there? Yes, in there. Good luck. Come in, come in. This is a crazy morning. Hello, Richard. Hello, Mr. Carlson. Sit down, sit down. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. I hope you've brought your pictures along. I see that you have. Let's get right to it. We need a new coffee table book. And a book of photos about the United States still feels right. Okay, let's take a look. Good. Very good. Family album, USA. It's an excellent title. If you had to describe the book in one sentence, how would you do it? Well, um, I describe it as a book which is um, a portrait of the United States. The places, the people, uh, mostly the people. Uh, the things they do, the ways they live, the places they visit, the landmarks. A photographic journey. These are wonderful. These photos in your performing arts section. Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center. I'm glad you like them. I do, but. But? There's something missing. You've got a good eye, Richard. You're a terrific photographer. But before I can publish your work, I need to meet with my marketing department. And you've got to do one more thing. What's that, Mr. Carlson? In the section on culture, you've included performing arts centers, but you've left out street performance. The mimes, the musicians, the dancers, in the parks and on the streets. Richard, if you go out and photograph street performances in the city, you'll have it. That is a great idea. The performing arts centers and the street performances. I'll do it. If you do it, I'll publish your work. Are you serious? I've never been more serious. When do you think you can return with street performance? Um, a couple of weeks. If they're as good as the rest of these pictures, it's a deal. You won't be disappointed, Mr. Carlson. Thanks. Oh, uh. <laughs> Goodbye, Richard, and good luck. See you in two weeks. Goodbye, Mr. Carlson. Thanks. 
So if you like the street performance photos, you'll really publish Family Album USA. When I say something, I mean it. Go to work. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, hello, Mr. Carlson, please. Mr. Carlson is busy at the moment. May I help you? I'd like to make an appointment with him. We've got a call to make an appointment. We've got a call to make an appointment. World Imports, may I help you? I'd like to make an appointment to see Mr. Sato. World Imports, may I help you? I'd like to arrange a meeting with Ms. Moreno. World Imports, may I help you? I'd like to set up a time to see Mr. Jackson. What time would you like to come in? I'd like to see him as soon as possible. I'd like to come in sometime next week. I can see him at his convenience. Do you think he can fit me into his schedule? Of course. Where, Where is your, your office located? located? Downtown. Oh, what is your address? 33 West 44th Street. What floor are you on? We're on the 20th floor. Is there a receptionist? That's me. Good morning. My name is Richard Stewart. I'm here to see Mr. Carlson. It's time for the appointment. Hello, I'm here to see Mr. Sato. Good morning. I have an appointment with Ms. Moreno. Hi, Mr. Jackson is expecting me. You've got a call to make an appointment. World Imports, may I help you? What are you going to say? Oh. In Act 3, Richard photographs street performers as Mr. Carlson requested. Later, Richard thinks he's ready to see Mr. Carlson again. I'm going to show him the photos on Monday morning. I can't wait. On Monday, Richard asks Mr. Carlson if he'll publish Family Album USA. Well, um, what do you think? Do I have my book? What do you think?
two weeks. I said I could do it in two weeks, and I did it. The pictures you've taken are fabulous, Richard. Mr. Carlson will love them. Monday morning. I'm going to show him the photos on Monday morning. I can't wait. I'm very proud of you. You really did a beautiful job. I know he will love the new photographs for your book. Yeah. I really did do a good job, didn't I? Hey, you know, there's still some film left on this roll, and there's one person I haven't photographed in a long time. Who? You. Richard, I haven't brushed my... You look great! It's not fair, Richard. I'm not even oh. ready. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thanks. Fabulous. Thanks. Terrific. Thanks. They get better and better. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This is sensational. Yeah, thanks. What a job. Good work, Richard. I'm so glad you like them so much. Like them? They represent your best work. Really? Absolutely. Well, um, what do you think? Do I have my book? You do. You do. There's a book here. I'll have a contract and advance payment waiting for you first thing in the morning. Thank you. And while you're here, I would like to introduce you to your editor. And I want you to meet the people in the art department. I'll set up an appointment with the marketing team. When do you think we'll be through? In about half an hour. Why? I can't wait to tell Marilyn. Wonderful. Thanks. Fabulous. Thanks. Terrific. Thanks. This is sensational. Yeah, thanks. What a job. Good work, Richard. Look at that! Right? Look at that! Sensational! Right? Sensational! What do you think of that? Amazing! What do you think of that? Terrific! Amazing! Terrific! Over here, what do you think of them? They're wonderful. Ooh, look at them. All right, they're fabulous. Wonderful, fabulous. Check this out. What do you think of him? He's marvelous. Ooh, listen to that. Wow, he's incredible. Marvelous, incredible. Look at him. He's fantastic. Look at him. He's super. Amazing. Terrific. Fantastic. Super. Wonderful. Fabulous. Marvelous. Incredible. Outstanding. In Act One, Ellen finds out that Carter Boswell is running for the school board. He's running for the school board. The election is next month. Ellen is upset because Boswell wants to cut the school cultural programs. Music, no dance, no concert, no stage presentations. Philip thinks Boswell will win the election. But it sounds to me like Carter Boswell is going to win the seat on the board. Oh, not if I can stop him. What will Ellen do?
don't believe it. What's wrong? Carter Boswell. Who's Carter Boswell? He's running for the school board. The election's next month. Ooh. What's wrong with wanting to be on the school board? Nothing. But he wants to cut the school budget. Maybe it needs cutting. <sighs> cutting the budget is fine, but he wants to do it by cutting all the cultural programs. No music, no dance, no concert, no stage presentations. Why does he want to do that? He says it's to save the taxpayers money. And I think he believes that the taxpayers will vote for him if he spends less on the cultural programs. He's probably right. Uh, lots of people want their taxes used for new books and uh, new paint job in the schoolrooms. Maybe some of us would like to pay a little bit more and keep the cultural programs for our kids? Well, I'm not sure, Ellen. I, uh, I hear it from my patients. Lots of people are tired of higher taxes. <sighs> I know. But if Boswell wins, he'll be an important decision maker on the school board. And he doesn't know anything about our children's education. Uh, who's running against him? Nobody. That's the problem. Well, it sounds to me like Carter Boswell is going to win the seat on the board. Oh, not if I can stop him. And uh, how are you going to stop him? I don't know. Maybe I'll run against him. <laughs> well, you've got my vote. <laughs> I'm serious, Phyllis. Why shouldn't I run? Why shouldn't you run for what, Mom? Your mother is thinking of running for the school board. Hey, that's terrific, Mom. <laughs> Against Carter Boswell? Great. Well, I I if I run for office, the voters will have a clear choice. I stand for everything Boswell doesn't. <laughs> I think a lot of people will vote for you against Boswell, Ellen. I'll vote for you. Will you help me if I do run? Absolutely. <sighs> the trouble is it takes a little bit of money to run a campaign. I think you can make a difference, Ellen. And in a short campaign, you wouldn't need as much money. You know something, Ellen? Why not give the people of Riverdale a clear choice? I'm with you. You can make a difference. Come in. Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Charles Maxwell. Uh, my name is Ellen Stewart. <laughs> Hello. Um, please, sit down. Oh. Hmm. You asked to see me. What would you like to see me about? I'd, I'd like your help. Editor of the most influential newspaper in Riverdale. Actually, it's the only newspaper. <laughs> A lot of people would like my help. Do you have a story? I'm planning to run for the school board. Against Carter Boswell? Yes. Well, that is news. Will you announce that I'm running? Sure, but I need some information. Of course. Why will the voters vote for you against Boswell, Mrs. Stewart? Because I care. Vote for Ellen Stewart. She cares. Not a bad slogan. But uh, what do you care about? Well, I care about the children of our town. I don't want them to grow up without cultural programs in our school. Do you have a plan? I want our children to learn more than reading, writing, and, and arithmetic. I want to keep the after-school programs, the music, the concerts. It's not a bad plan. But who's going to pay for all of this? We are. The citizens of Riverdale, of course. I plan to get help from the businessmen and the corporations of Riverdale. Hmm. That's fair enough. Exactly what do you want from me, Mrs. Stewart? You don't know me. I can't expect you to take my side against Boswell. But I do need some publicity so that the people of our town know that I'm running for office and that I care about our children. Fair enough. I certainly can print the news, and you are now making news. <sighs> Why will the voters...
Schroeder spoke for you against Boswell, Mrs. Stewart. Because I care. Vote for Ellen Stewart. She cares. Not a bad slogan. Ellen Stewart. She cares. It is a good campaign slogan. People will hear it and know what I stand for. I care. I care about our children's education. Not just the school buildings themselves, but the children. I care about what children study and what they learn. I want them to learn about a variety of subjects, including music and literature and art. And I care about our children's activities after school. I want to keep their music programs, like the orchestra, I want children to experience the joys of music. I play the piano myself, and I've taught music to many children in Riverdale. I want to keep the other after-school programs, too. I have a plan. I'll get local businesses, banks, and other companies in the community to help. We all have children in this town. And I believe that parents care about education. And I want to be on the Riverdale School Board. I know it's a big responsibility, but I know I can make a difference. Because I care. In Act Two, everyone helps Ellen and her campaign. Grandpa gets the flyers printed. Here are the flyers. Hot off the press. Marilyn and Richard prepare the envelopes. We finished addressing over 300 envelopes. And Robbie and his friends tell people about Ellen's campaign. Mr. Nelson? Hi, this is Robbie Stewart. Did you know my mother is running for the school board? Later, the family sees Boswell in a commercial on television. And if you ask what I care about, I'll tell you. What will Boswell say? Here are the flyers, hot off the press. Oh, looks good. Simple. Right over here, Grandpa. You fold the flyers, Richard and I will put them into the envelopes. We finished addressing over 300 envelopes. Need another box? Oh, good work, gang. Hi, this is Mike Johnson. Can I speak with Mr. and Mrs. Anderson? Mr. Nelson? Thanks. Hi, this is Robbie Stewart. Did you know my mother is running for the school board? Yes, Miss Kim. Ellen Stewart. She cares. Oh, see you at the falls. Certainly. I'll give you your best wishes, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. Hi, this is Mike Johnson. Can I speak with Mr. and Mrs. Burns? Thank you. We have done so much in such a short amount of time, I can't believe it. Wait till Philip comes home and sees our progress. <clears throat> Everyone saw the story in the Riverdale newspaper. Mr. Maxwell was very kind to print my announcement. It helps enormously. Everybody in Riverdale reads his paper. <clears throat> Your photo wouldn't have helped, too. Thanks to you, Richard, it's a good picture. Well, hi, all. Hi, Hello, now. darling. Hi. Yeah, may I, uh, may I help? Mm-hmm. Licking envelopes. I fold the flyers. We stuff them. And I lick the envelopes. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hey, everybody. Mrs. Greenberg is on the phone. She says Carter Boswell is on the TV right now, doing a commercial. Oh, up in the what channel? Five. Five. And if you ask what I care about, I'll tell you. I care about the school buildings in need of paint. I care about more lockers for the teachers. I care about new fixtures in the hallways. Not music or dancing or entertainment. I care about the practical things. If you do, vote for me. Carter Boswell. A lot of people will agree with him. I told you. Too bad kids can't vote. It's our school, but we can't vote. There are people in favor of the cultural programs, Mom. There are, Ellen. Don't be upset by Boswell's commercial. You have to go on television, too. Oh, Boswell's a powerful speaker. 
Well, you can be, too. Your ideas are good ones. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm up to it. <laughs> It's up to you. We need your vote if you want better school. So clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Ellen Stewart's running for the school board. And we know she can't be beat. I said clap your hands. And stomp your feet. Ellen Stewart's running for the school board. And we know she can't be beat. So vote, vote, vote. If you want better school. If you want your vote to count, Ellen Stewart is the one to choose. Who do we want? Ellen Stewart! Who's gonna win? Ellen Stewart! Who do we want? Ellen Stewart! Who's gonna win? Ellen Stewart! Hey! Hey! What do you say? Ellen Stewart all the way! Hey! Hey! Come on, let's fight for Ellen Stewart. She's the one who's right. So everybody just be aware. That Ellen Stewart is the one who cares. She'll make a difference for everyone. Cause Ellen Stewart is number one. She knows the importance of music and art. Cultural programs play a big part. Let's keep these programs in our school. Ellen Stewart's for me and you. So let's all give her a cheer. Everything's all right cause Ellen's here. Who do we want? Ellen Stewart. In Act 3, Richard and Robbie make a videotape of Ellen as she gives her campaign speech. Vote for me, Ellen Stewart. I care. And Richard figures out a way for people to see the videotape. Vote for me, Ellen Stewart. I care. Later, the family listens to the election news. In the hotly contested race for the one seat on the Riverdale School Board, Mrs. Ellen Stewart has taken an early lead. Will Ellen win the election? My slogan is, I care. I care about people, not things. Vote for me, Ellen Stewart. How was it? You were terrific. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, can I see it? Sure. Hello. My name is Ellen Stewart, and I'm running for the open seat on the school board. My slogan is, I care. What does the word care mean? I care about people, not things. Vote for me, Ellen Stewart. I care. I like it. Now what? How can we possibly get it on so Riverdale will see it and hear it? Leave it to me. I mean that. I care about people, not things. Vote for me, Ellen Stewart. I care. What happened? Mom is now on television. In every appliance store in Riverdale. Except Hamlin's. He's a Boswell voter. Well, that's a brilliant <laughs> idea, Richard. You inherited your father's brain. <laughs> we got our brains from you, Dad. And guess what? I called Channel 5. Their TV news is going to cover it. Housewife campaigns in appliance stores. And I'll bet some magazine will pick up the story, too. 
Mom, you're going to win. I know it. Hold it, Robbie. Just cool down. I know we're getting some attention now, but in the end, the uh, voters will have to decide. You're going to win. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> contested race for the one seat on the Riverdale School Board, Mrs. Ellen Stewart has taken an early lead. She's now winning. Turning to other local Mom, you're groups. winning. Riverdale High School well, it's too soon to know for certain. Well, you're ahead. That's better than being behind. Uh, it's this. not over yet. Let's, let's just all calm down and, and wait for the final results. Tell them, why don't you go out in the backyard and get some fresh air? <sighs> Thank you, Grandpa. I need some. What happened? You came very close, Ellen. You lost by only a hundred and twenty one votes. Tried, Mom. You lost by a very small number of votes. Only 121 votes. Sorry, Mom. It just wasn't enough time. You made a very strong impression on our community. You'll have another chance next election. Hello. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Maxwell. Hello, Mr. Maxwell. How are you? I just called to tell you that you are very impressive. You lost the election, but you won the attention of the residents of Riverdale, of Boswell, and of me. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. I appreciate your kind words. I needed that. I hear Boswell wants to appoint you to a special arts committee. I'm sending over a reporter in the morning to interview you. You are? I'm going to do an article on Ellen Stewart. She cares. We will all care now. Goodbye. Thank you. And goodbye. What was that about? You were right, Philip. I did make a difference in town. And in this family. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. An important local election took place today in Riverdale. The people of this community elected a new member of the school board, Carter Boswell. Opposing him in the campaign was Ellen Stewart, a housewife from Riverdale. Tonight, we'll take a look at both campaigns. First, we turn to the Boswell campaign. Mr. Boswell reached many voters by appearing on local TV. I care about the school buildings in need of paint. I care about more lockers for the teachers. I care about new fixtures in the hallways. Less than a month ago, a new face entered the race, Ellen Stewart. Mrs. Stewart disagreed with Carter Boswell's plans for the Riverdale schools. She campaigned very strongly to keep the cultural programs in music, art, and drama. Local appliance stores played a videotape of Mrs. Stewart introducing herself to the voters. My name is Ellen Stewart, and I'm running for the open seat on the school board. My slogan is, I care. I care about people, not things. Mrs. Stewart's unusual campaign helped her win the attention of the local newspaper. Charles Maxwell, the editor of the Riverdale News, praised Mrs. Stewart for caring about the cultural programs in the schools. When the first votes were counted early in the day, it seemed as if Ellen Stewart might win a surprise victory over Carter Boswell. 
But once all the votes were counted, Mrs. Stewart lost by only 121 votes. Well, it was a very close election, and Ellen Stewart convinced the people of Riverdale that she cared. She also convinced Carter Boswell, who now wants to appoint Mrs. Stewart to a special committee for cultural programs in the schools. Well, that's our special election day report on a very important local election. Thank you, and have a good evening. Today, Susan Stewart and Harry Bennett are getting married. Coming up in Act One, Harry gets ready. Philip tries to help Harry with his bow tie. I'm worried, Philip. What if we can't tie the tie? Harry is very nervous, and Grandpa tries to calm him down. Poor Harry. I know the feeling. Wedding day, Jim. Later, Harry worries that he's lost something important. Oh, my. What did I do with the reins? What did I do with the rings? Will Harry find the wedding rings? It looks wrong. Hmm. It is wrong. Mm. Are they always that difficult to make? The truth is, yes. I'll try again. At this rate, the wedding will take place tomorrow. Not to <laughs> worry. Okay, here we go. <sighs> I'm worried, Philip. What if we can't tie the tie? If we can't tie the tie, then there can't be a wedding. You better not make <laughs> Harry any more nervous than he is. Don't worry, we'll figure a way. How are you doing, fellas? Not so good, Grandpa. We can't get this bow tie tied. Nobody knows how to do it. Do you? No, I never could either. Well, you have your own tuxedo. How do you tie your bow tie? Yeah, Grandpa, I've seen you in it. You look great. How do you tie it? I don't. You don't? What do you mean? <sighs> I never could tie one of those things, bow ties. I have always worn a clip-on bow tie. A clip-on? Of course. <laughs> now I remember. Yes, it's so easy. All you do is clip it around under your collar. Oh, we all need one of those. The Tuxedo Rental Store. Do you think they're open? Should be. Uh, Sunday's their big day. I'll call and find out. Well, if they're not, I'll lend you mine, Harry. <laughs> You're the only one who really needs to be wearing a tuxedo anyway. Thanks, Grandpa. I'm the father of the bride. I'm supposed to be worried about my daughter, and here I am with a man that's marrying my daughter, worrying about him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Harry. <laughs> I know the feeling. Wedding day jitters. Are they open? We're in luck. They're open, and they have lots of clip-on bow ties. Oh, there. I'll bicycle down to the village and get them. You better hurry, Robbie. There's lots of time. A little over two hours. In two hours and 15 minutes, I'll be married to Susan. And be a true member of the Stewart family. <laughs> oh, you're a lucky guy, Harry. Susan is one of the best women you'll ever find. She's just like her grandma. Now, once you put the ring on Susan's finger, you are one of us, Harry. And don't ever forget it. That's right. <laughs> ring. Ring. What did I do with the rings? I put them in the pocket of my sports jacket. Uh, no, I think you put them in your tuxedo jacket pocket, remember? Right. right. What did I do with the rings? Didn't you give them to Richard? He's your best man. I remember. You gave them to Richard. Oh, yeah. I remember now. You handed them to me. Um, what did I do with them? I hope they aren't lost. Oh, don't worry, Harry. They have to be here. I remember. I gave them to Robbie to hold so I wouldn't lose them. Where's Robbie? Relax, Harry. Robbie went to pick up the 
Clip on bow ties. Oh, I forgot. What time is it? It's still a little over two hours, Harry. Just relax. Well, what about the rings? I'm sure Robbie has them. No. No. Robbie doesn't have them. He gave them to me to hold on to them because he didn't want the responsibility of holding them. I put them in my tuxedo, but in the lapel pockets. <laughs> <laughs> That's a relief. I, uh, I was really worried. I'll hold on to them for you. The best man always keeps the rings. You're right, you're right. You hold on to them so there won't be a problem later. Well, I think we'd better get dressed, fellas. All right. Robbie will bring the ties back. Hey, leaving me? You'll be fine. Try to take it easy. I'll be over in two hours. Over? The wedding ceremony will be over. You'll be husband and wife. Oh, I guess you're right. Two hours from now. <laughs> <sighs> Two hours from now. Two hours from now. Two more hours. Well, that's a long time to wait. Grandpa's right. I, I do have the wedding day jitters. I'm nervous. But why am I so nervous? I, I couldn't find the rings, but they were in my pocket. And now Richard's got them. He's my best man. He'll take care of them. Right, right. I don't need to worry about that. None of us knew how to tie my bow tie. But that problem's taken care of now, too. Since Robbie went into the village to pick up some clip-on bow ties. So why the jitters? Who am I kidding? <laughs> I'm getting married today. <laughs> married! <sighs> married. In just two hours, I'll be married to the most wonderful woman in the world. The woman I love. <laughs> I fell in love with Susan on our very first date. You know something? What? I think we're going to be good friends. Good night, Susan. Good night, Harry. Have a safe trip home. Are you all right? Sorry. I was nervous even then. Susan is beautiful. And intelligent. And kind. And we have fun together. She'll be a wonderful mother to Michelle. <laughs> and soon she'll be my wife. Mrs. Harry Bennett. I, I couldn't be any happier. Less nervous, maybe. But I couldn't be any happier. In the next act, Susan gets ready for the wedding. Susan's mother, Ellen, gives her a special gift. I wristband. I, I wore it when I married your father. And Marilyn helps Susan with her veil. Doesn't it look just right, oh, Susan? Perfect. Later, Susan looks serious. When you said I do, Marilyn, it suddenly became real. What is Susan thinking? And now for something old, mm. something new, something borrowed, mm. and something blue. Oh. Okay, let's see. Something borrowed. <laughs> That's this dress. Yeah. Borrowed from Marilyn. Mm. Something blue. I wristband. I, I wore it when I married your father. Oh, Mother. I forgot you still had it. 
made. It's just so lovely. I bought it in an antique shop when I was about 18 years old. I, I saved it for my wedding day. And you saved it for me, didn't you, Mother? <gasps> yes, honey. I did. <laughs> oh, no. Are we ever going to finish? <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> something borrowed. The wedding dress and something blue. The wristband. Uh huh. Something old. Something old. Right. What? What's old? Of course, something old. I had planned to wear them. <laughs> Grandma's pearls. Oh, Grandpa will be so pleased that you're wearing them. I'm sure he misses Grandma on a day like this. <laughs> Help me with them, Marilyn. Mm. Oh, I've never worn them before. I've been saving them for today. Saving them for today? Oh, you're a real steward. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Oh, there you go. Something borrowed, something blue, something old, and now for something new. The veil. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful, Marilyn. You really are a fabulous designer, Marilyn. Huh. Doesn't it look just right? Oh, Susan, perfect. Now you both say I do. Harry will lift this veil over your head and kiss the bride. Oh, I'm so excited. When you said I do, Marilyn, it suddenly became real. <sighs> That's all right, <laughs> Susan. You've got the wedding day jitters. <laughs> <laughs> In less than two hours, you will be Mrs. Harry Bennett. Oh, that reminds me. If we don't get dressed, we won't be there to, to see Susan become <laughs> Mrs. Harry Bennett. You know, but, 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 before you leave, do I look all right? Never look. She's right. <laughs> and that's dear little Mac. Oh. Got to go and feed him. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? Take off the veil, kick off your shoes, and sit down. <laughs> we'll come upstairs and get you in a little while. Richard's going to take some wedding pictures before the ceremony, so just relax. Are you kidding? Relax? <laughs> Susan Stewart, you are about to become Susan Bennett, Mrs. Harry Bennett. <laughs> Mrs. Harry Bennett, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Soon the wedding will begin. Am I ready? Let's see, I have something old. The pearls my grandmother gave me. Uh, something new. My beautiful veil. Something borrowed. This dress from Marilyn. Oh, it must be lucky. Marilyn wore this dress when she married Richard and they seem very happy. Where was I? Oh, and something blue. The antique wristband from Mother. 
Oh, how sweet. She saved it for me all these years. I'm ready, but I'm nervous. <sighs> Are all brides this nervous? I've waited for this wonderful day all my life. The day I marry the man I love. <laughs> I love Harry. He's thoughtful and kind. What pretty flowers. Thank you. And a good father to Michelle. I love you, Daddy. Oh, I hope I'll be a good mother to Michelle. It was tough for her after her mother died. But now she's like a daughter to me. I'm very lucky. Today, I'll become a wife and a mother all at the same time. <laughs> the moment I say, I do. Susan, will you marry me? You bet I will. I love you, Harry. In the final act, the Stewart family and friends gather for the wedding, and the judge begins. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please take your places. The wedding ceremony is about to begin. Harry walks across the patio. He's ready, but when the judge asks for the rings... The rings, please. Does Harry have the rings? I think it's time for the wedding to begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please take your places. The wedding ceremony is about to begin. Okay, James, start the music. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Do either of you have any reason why you should not legally be joined in marriage? Is there anyone present who can show any just cause why these two people should not be legally joined in marriage? Then, Harry Bennett, do you take Susan Stewart to be your lawful wedded wife? And you, Susan Stewart, do you take Harry Bennett to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. The rings, please. By the power vested in me by the laws of the state of New York, I now pronounce you husband and wife.
You may kiss the bride now, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful wedding, Philip. Just perfect. It was, Ellen, and you were the beautiful mother of the bride. Look at you, here, with Robbie, as he escorted you onto the patio. Robbie looks so grown up and handsome, like his father. And look at Michelle. What a sweet flower girl. She was so excited. She'd never been to a wedding before. And here's Susan's bridesmaid, Marilyn. Marilyn was Susan's matron of honor, Philip. Look at Richard and Harry. They seem like brothers, don't they? And Dad with our new grandson, Max. I love this picture. And I love this one, of you escorting Susan. That's our little girl, Ellen. Oh, Philip. I remember when she was just a baby. Our little girl grew up so fast. And now she's a mature, married woman with her own family. Hmm. I feel like I've lost my daughter. Ellen, you haven't lost a daughter. We've gained a son, a talented, intelligent, likable son, who happens to love our daughter very much. We also have a lovely new granddaughter, Michelle. What a wonderful family. I love you, Philip. I love you too, Ellen. In Act One, Philip comes home late from work at the hospital. So it's ten o'clock. Mmm. I'm starving. Uh... And although it is quite late, Ellen isn't home yet. Where's Mom? She went to a school board meeting. Robbie sees that his parents are very busy. You and Mom haven't had dinner together with us in almost a full week. Yeah. I feel bad about us not having dinner with the family, but uh, our schedules are so different. A little later, Robbie talks to Grandpa. What do they talk about? She went to a school board meeting. I don't know how she does it. She sure keeps busy. Well, it's important to her. There are lots of places to go, lots of things to do. She can't sit around and do nothing. Philip works late. I guess you're right. I wish I had her energy. Anybody home? We're in yeah. here, Dad. Oh. Hi, gang. Hello, Philip. How was your day? Oh, my day was just fine. So was my night. <laughs> so it was 10 o'clock. Mm. I'm starving. Um, where's Mom? She went to a school board meeting. There's a note for you on the refrigerator. Oh? Have dinner, Robbie? Yeah. Mike and I had a hamburger at the diner. I came home a little while ago. You've been working late almost every night this week, Dad. Aren't you exhausted? I don't have time to be exhausted. You and Mom haven't had dinner together with us in almost a full week. Yeah. 
I feel bad about us not having dinner with the family, but uh, our schedules are so different. Either I'm at the hospital doing paperwork or Mom is at a committee meeting. I frankly don't know what to do about it. I'm worried about you and Mom. You really have been working too hard. Well, I think I've had enough of that sandwich. You didn't finish it. It's not good to eat before going to bed. Cookie can't hurt, though. <laughs> well, I'm heading off for bed and a uh, good night's sleep. Well, good night. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. I'm uh, going to bed. Good night, Philip. Haven't you finished balancing that checkbook? I found another mistake. I'll be off to bed myself in a minute. Okay. Hi. Right. I'm really concerned about them, Grandpa. Concerned about whom? About Mom and Dad. They hardly ever see each other. Dad often works late. And Mom has all these committees she's on. What do you propose to do about it? You have that look in your eye. I don't know. But there must be a way of getting them to spend more time together. Quality time. I got home late after working all day. I was hoping to find you, but you were away. You left me some dinner, something to eat But I won't be waiting up Cause I gotta get to sleep I'm gonna get home late After working all day I know you'll be home But I'll miss you anyway I hope you find my note And have something to eat I really wanna see you But you'll be asleep We never seem to have any fun Like we had before Time for each other We owe it to ourselves and one another So why don't we do it? What do you say? Let's make some changes We can start today We need some quality time Together What we need is quality time Oh yeah We need to talk to each other Laugh with each other Let's get together you and me Quality time, we'll enjoy each other's company. You're working long hours and you're never at home. Sometimes it seems you're just a voice on the phone. And when you call, you say you'll be home late. You're always missing dinner cause it just can't wait. My job keeps me busy and I know you're busy too. I really want to spend more time with you. I'm coming home late If I want to see you I gotta make a special date We need some quality time Together What we need is quality time Oh yeah We need to talk to each other Laugh with each other Let's get In Act 2 Robbie tells Ellen how he feels Dad works hard and he works late you work hard on all your committees, and you work late. Robbie wants his parents to spend some time together. I think you ought to take a vacation away from the family. Alone. But Ellen knows that she and Philip are too busy to take a vacation. So Robbie tries again. I think I have an idea. What is Robbie's idea?
Oh, there, Robbie. What are you doing up this late? Reading. Reading? This hour? Oh, come on, Robbie. What are you doing up this late? Things on my mind. Care to talk about them? Sure, if you don't mind listening. Robbie. Robbie, remember me and your mother? If you have something you want to talk about, I'm always prepared to listen. You haven't been around much lately. So that's it. Okay, let's talk. You and Dad are like ships that pass in the night. Dad works hard and he works late. You work hard on all your committees and you work late. I thought you were proud of the work I do. I am, Mom. Real proud. You are one fantastic mom, but... But... I've been noticing how little quality time you spend with Dad and me. And the family. It's a real problem, Robbie. I know it. I'm concerned. There must be a way that Dad and you can spend more time together. Well, we always talk about taking a vacation together with the family. I think you ought to take a vacation away from the family. Alone. Kind of a second honeymoon. It would be wonderful, but our schedules won't allow it. I think I have an idea. You do? Yep. I think I have an idea that will bring Dad and you together in a more scheduled way. Well, what is it? Well, you know how Dad is always talking about the kids in the ward and how important it is for them to be paid attention to? Yes. Well, and how hard it is because the doctors and nurses are so busy? Yes. How would it be if you took some time to work with Dad towards solving that problem? I don't get it. Like setting up a regular weekly reading program. You and Dad. You and Dr. Philip Stewart going to the children's ward once or twice a week and reading to them. Not a bad idea, Robbie. As a matter of fact, it fits right in with something I'm working on right now with the school board committee. What's that? I've been trying to work out a program in the public school that will bring... Parents and teachers together once a week to read to the students, their own children, really. By doing that, it will encourage reading. So it might fit in with a program for reading to the kids in the hospital. You're right. We'll do it. I'm going to talk to Daddy about it right now. But Dad was so exhausted when he came home from work. Why don't you talk to him about it tomorrow? You are a very smart man. I think I'll wait until tomorrow. You won't forget, will you? Oh, believe me, I won't. It is a great idea, and I promise you I won't forget. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Robbie. <laughs> follow you. No, no. Oh, no, no. Run that by me again, because I don't understand. No, no. I don't get it. I don't get it. What do you mean? I don't get the picture. Huh? I don't get it. Explain it all again, because I don't understand. No, no. I don't get it. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? I don't get it. Exactly what do you mean? I don't follow you. Could you explain that again? I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't follow you. No, no. Oh, no, no. Run that by me again, because I don't understand. No, no. I don't get it. Ah, I get it. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see what you're trying to say. I, I get, get it. it. Right, I see. 
Oh, I know what you mean. Okay, I follow you now. I understand. I get it. I get it. In Act Three, Ellen tells Philip about her project. The plan is a simple one: involve the entire family in a reading project. Philip thinks the project would work in hospitals. My patients, mostly kids, would would love to read a Mirantu. So Ellen and Philip agree to work together. Would you work with me on it? I would love to, Philip. What will Ellen and Philip read to the children? Smell wonderful. Good morning, Ellen. Yes, they do. That's why I'm reading my paper and having my coffee on the patio this morning. Ah, oh, it does smell sweet. <laughs> How was your school board meeting last night? You must have come home very late. Did you find the sandwich I made for you? Mm. Thanks, dear. I uh, I was so tired I didn't even finish it. Philip, I've been working on a special project with the school board, and I'd like your opinion about it. What is it? I've been trying to find a way to encourage reading. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, I, I think I may have found a way to do it. Now tell me about it. I work with families every day, Ellen. I see how people spend their leisure time, young and old. Mostly watching television. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be okay if, and I repeat, if people took the time to read. I couldn't agree with you more. The question is, how do we get them to read more? I think you're going to give me the answer to that question. You, uh, you have that look in your eye. I do have an answer, Philip, or at least I think I do. Well, tell me about it. The plan is a simple one. Involve the entire family in a reading project. In the home? Yes, in the home, but first in the schoolrooms. Hmm. Interesting. But how do you plan to do that? By arranging with the public schools to schedule one hour a week to start with. During that time, parents are invited to attend and to read along with the children, their children. It can go beyond the school system. Really? I guarantee you it would go very well in the hospitals. Yes, my patients, mostly kids, would, would love to read and be read to. Think so? I know so. Maybe we can experiment with your patients. And see how the plan works. I love the idea. Would you work with me on it? I would love to. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way, uh, we'll spend more time together. You just don't see each other anymore. You and I are very busy. We need to find time to be together more, to do things together more. You and I. This would be a wonderful way to accomplish that. I have a question. Yes. What do we read? To the patients in the ward? Yes. Well, let's, you and I talk about it. Would you like to read? Hmm. Um, Mrs. Stewart and I will read a poem by Robert Frost. Um, it's called Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Can you begin? Oh, sorry. Um, 
Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there's some mistake. The only other sounds, the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods, the woods are, are lovely, lovely dark, dark and deep, but, but I, I have, have promises, promises to keep and miles, miles to, to go before I sleep. And miles, miles to go before I sleep. You two belong on stage. That was wonderful. Grandpa. Dad, Robbie, uh, when did you come? We've been listening to you both. These are lucky kids. Do you enjoy reading together? Well, we may read together aloud at home. You were right, Robbie. I know. <laughs> Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. In Act One, Susan and Harry talk about their lives together. We couldn't ask for anything more, could we? Well... Well? Susan wants to know what Harry is thinking. Well? Are you going to tell me what's on your mind, Harry? Michelle wonders if everything is all right. Is everything okay? Susan, do you? Turn around, Michelle. Let me see the back of it. I like it a lot. It fits well. It doesn't need any alterations. We must have bought the right size. I like the color. She looks good in blue. I like blue, too, Daddy. <laughs> Try on the skirt and blouse outfit, Michelle. The one that Daddy wanted you to wear. Okay. Michelle has been a different kid since we've been married. She's never been happier. And I've never been happier, Harry. I love her very much. She's been a joy. We're very lucky, the three of us. And becoming part of the Stewart family, too. We couldn't ask for anything more, could we? Well? Well? 
Could we ask for anything more? No, we... How do you like it, Daddy? It's my favorite outfit. It's good for every day. Oh, it will be good for school, Michelle. I like it, too. I always like skirts that go like this. <laughs> do you want to see the winter jacket on me, Susan? Yes, I do. Change back into your jeans and put on the new winter jacket we bought today. Okay. <laughs> What did you mean by, well, you had something on your mind when I said we couldn't ask for anything more. Is everything all right? Everything is fine, Michelle. Let's take a look at the winter jacket. Come on over here, honey. It's kind of warm. <laughs> it is. That's why we bought it for you. This will be a perfect jacket for the winter time when it's very cold out. But it's kind of small also. We must have bought the wrong size. Looks like we should have bought a bigger one. I guess we'll have to exchange it, too. I'm sure the store has others. I look silly. It is too small. <laughs> You're growing so fast, Michelle. Can I take it off? I'm hot. Sure. Put it back in your room and we'll hang everything up later. <sighs> well, are you going to tell me what's on your mind, Harry? I have been offered a job with a major accounting company in Los Angeles. I have been offered a job with a major accounting company in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. That's a big decision. I know. It will also affect you and your job if we decide to go. Wow, it sure will. But first, tell me about the job, Harry. If it's a good one, then we'll make it work for us. I have a client in the garment business on 7th Avenue. I do his taxes every year. He has a big sales office in Los Angeles, and the company in Los Angeles that does his major accounting work is looking for uh, an executive. And he recommended me. That's wonderful, Harry. Yes, but it would mean that we'd have to move to L.A. What about the salary? The real discussion comes tomorrow. Susan, I don't plan to make any decisions until I have a chance to talk with you about it. I understand, Harry. And I don't have to make a quick decision. They know that I'm married and that I have a family. Well, there's a lot to think about. If it's a good job, then I've got to do some thinking about my career opportunities in Los Angeles. Is everything okay? Yes, honey. <laughs> me, 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 me. told Susan he was thinking about a new job in California. She must have been surprised. You can see it in her face. It's clear to me. It's easy to see. She must have been surprised. Must have been. You mean must have been. We can say must have in conversation. And sometimes we don't pronounce the V. And so you hear must have. She must have been surprised. Yes, yes, yes. I can see that she was surprised. It's very obvious. But must have? Well, you don't have to say it, but sometimes you're going to hear it. We must have bought the wrong size. What? We must have bought the wrong size. <laughs> they must have bought the wrong size. You can see that the jacket is much too small. It's clear to me. It's easy to see. They must have bought the wrong size. No kidding. Is everything okay? She looks worried. Yes, I can see that. Do you think she heard Susan and Harry talking about moving to Los Angeles? Well, evidently she heard something. Or she saw the serious look on their faces. Michelle is obviously concerned. She saw something. Yes. 
She must have seen something. She must have seen something. Or she heard something. Yes, she must have heard something. She must have heard something. It's clear to me. It's easy to see. I must have been crazy to come here. In Act Two, Susan tells Grandpa about Harry's new job offer. Harry has been offered a job in Los Angeles. Susan wonders if moving to Los Angeles would be good for Michelle, and Susan's concerned about finding a new job. There are so many things to consider. There's Michelle. I wonder if a move would be a bad thing for her. And my job. I, I don't know if I can get a good job in Los Angeles. A little later on, Harry learns more about the job offer. Tell it to me again. Oh, the company is Kraft and Kraft. The biggest accounting company in the country. How do Susan and Harry feel about moving to Los Angeles? Hello. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Are you ready for lunch with your grandpa? Oh. Hi, Grandpa. Yes, of course I am, but my mind isn't. What's the matter, Susan? A real dilemma. Does it have anything to do with you and Harry? Yes, but I don't know where to start. Maybe I can help. Tell me what it is, Susan. Thanks, Grandpa. Please sit down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Harry has been offered a job in Los Angeles. Well, this is something to think about. There are so many things to consider. There's Michelle. I wonder if a move would be a bad thing for her. And my job. I, I don't know if I can get a good job in Los Angeles. And what about our family? Can I tell you what I think? Tell me. I think that you're very successful. And that you have a fantastic reputation in the toy industry. I think you could talk to Mr. Marchetta. And I think he could help you find a real good job in Los Angeles. He was very helpful to me, remember? I suppose I could call him. But I'm not so sure that I want to leave New York, you and the rest of our family. <laughs> well, I'm not going to kid you, Susan. You know we'd all miss you. But... This should be your decision. It's something that only you and Harry can work out. If moving to L.A. is in Harry's best interest, I have to do what I can do to support him. <laughs> in every marriage, sacrifices have to be made by one partner from time to time. And what about Michelle? Well, what do you think? I think Michelle is better off staying where she is. What does she think? I don't know for sure. Well, you'll have to ask her. I think I'm going to have a talk with Mr. Marchetta and get his feelings about my leaving and about helping me find a job in Los Angeles. Good idea. I'll call him right now. No point in delaying. Thanks, Grandpa. Harry, it's the perfect job for you. You'll love it. It's a big decision for me, Bill. And I have to discuss it with my wife. I don't know if it's right for her. Oh, she'll love it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime offer, Harry. Okay. Tell it to me again. Oh, the company is Kraft and Kraft. The biggest accounting company in the country. I know the company well. It's big. The biggest? Yeah, yeah, the biggest. <laughs> when do I have to let you know? Now, talk it over. Think it over. Let me know by the end of the week. When would we have to move? As soon as possible. I also have my daughter to consider. I don't want to interrupt her school year. Let me know by the end of the week. All right, it's a great opportunity for you, Harry, believe me. <laughs> I know. Kraft and Kraft is the biggest in the country. Yeah, I know. The biggest.
I think Michelle is asleep now. Let's talk. I met with Bill York today. And I talked with Mr. Marchetta. Did York make the offer? Yep. He asked me if I want the job. That's exciting, Harry. What was it? A vice presidency with the biggest accounting company in the country. Craft and Craft. Aren't you excited about that? Well, <laughs> sure I am, but there's so much more to consider. <sighs> I talked to Mr. Marchetta. What did he say? Did you tell him about me? Of course, Harry. I want what's best for you. And... I think I can get a good job through Mr. Marchetta in Los Angeles also. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I talked with him, and he understands completely. He has a major toy buyer in Los Angeles, and he's pretty sure that I can get a good job there. Unbelievable. But I think we should talk to Michelle about all of this. You're right. We'll talk to her about it. And how do you feel about taking the job in Los Angeles? How should I feel? It's the biggest company in the country. Well, then you feel good about taking it. Well, I feel fine about it. Why shouldn't I? Harry, it's the perfect job for you. You'll love it. It's a big decision for me, though. And I have to discuss it with my wife. Is moving away to Los Angeles a good idea for Susan? Is it right for her? I don't know if it's right for her. What does Susan think? What is she asking herself? The question is... Can I get a good job in Los Angeles? I, I don't know if I can get a good job in Los Angeles. And what about Michelle? Michelle like to move? Or would a move be a bad thing for her? I wonder if a move would be a bad thing for her. So, Harry, do you want the job? That's the question. Hmm, do I want the job? Ask me if I want the job. So what do you think? Will Harry take the job? I don't know if you'll take the job. In Act 3, Susan and Michelle talk about moving to Los Angeles. How do you feel about it? Well, I really wouldn't want to move. But... But? Later, when Harry gets home, Susan explains how she and Michelle feel. Michelle and I have all kinds of feelings about leaving New York, the family and friends. Harry listens to them, but it's time for him to make a decision. Now, tell us about your talk with Mr. York. Did you take the job? Do you think Harry took the job? good friends there now. I wouldn't miss a day even if I were really sick. Come and sit down for a minute, Michelle. I'd like to talk to you about something. Something important. What's wrong, Susan? Oh, there's nothing wrong, Michelle. But your daddy and I are talking about something that I'd like your opinion about. I know. I heard you talking about it the other night when I was trying on my new clothes. It's about moving to Los Angeles. You're right. How do you feel about it? 
Well, I really wouldn't want to move, but... But? But if you and Daddy wanted to, I guess you know what's best for the family and for me. That's very considerate of you, Michelle. But what about your friends? I'd miss them a lot. But I know what it feels like to miss someone. Honey, we don't have to move if you're not going to be happy about it. Does Daddy want to move? I think so. He's going to tell us tonight about the job offer. Well, how was everybody's day today? Michelle was chosen to do the school poster for the play this year. Congratulations, Michelle. That's something. And how was your day, Susan? I see you're in a good mood. Why don't you tell us about your day? I, um, met with Bill York. It's okay to talk about it, Harry. Michelle knows all about it. Really? Really, Harry. Michelle and I have all kinds of feelings about leaving New York, the family and friends. But if you think you should take the job, we're behind you. What about Michelle's school? We'll move after the school term. What about our new friends? I'll make new friends, wherever we are. As long as we're together. We're a family, Harry. Whatever you think is right for you, is right for us. I am so touched. The two of you are really something. We love you, Daddy. <laughs> and I love you. Okay. Now, tell us about your talk with Mr. York. Did you take the job? Nope. What? No? You didn't take it? No. I did not take the job. But, Daddy, I thought... Harry, you didn't turn it down because of me. Or me. No. No, I turned it down because of me. How's that? Well, I began to think about you and about Michelle. And then I asked myself, do I really want to work for the biggest company in the country? And? And I don't. I went into business for myself because I like being my own boss. I run my own company. I'm a big fish in a little pond. I'm not really sure I want to be a little fish in a big pond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, does that mean we don't have to move? That's right, sweetheart. Are you sure? I couldn't be more sure, Susan. I'm glad if you are, Harry. <laughs> and besides, how could I live in Los Angeles when all my favorite people live here? Your favorite people? Who's that? The Stewart family, of course. <laughs> I kept asking myself, do I really want to work for the biggest company in the country? The company is Kraft and Kraft. The biggest accounting company in the country. I know the company well. It's big. The biggest. They're big, all right. With offices all over the country. They're big. All together, they have 86 offices in the U.S. alone. And one of those offices is in Los Angeles, and that's where I'd be. L.A. Harry Bennett. Just one accountant in a huge company full of accountants. I'd be one little fish in a big pond full of accountants. Oh. Do you want to be a little fish in a big pond? I'm not really sure I want to be a little fish in a big pond. I like being my own boss. His own boss. I work hard, but I make my own schedule. I can take time off when I want to. And I choose my own clients. Yeah. I have a client in the garment business on 7th Avenue. I do his taxes every year. He and my other clients know me personally, and I know them. He knows them all. They tell me I make a big difference in their businesses. And I do it my way, as president of my own company. Yeah. I guess you could say I like being a big fish in my own little pond. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be a big fish in a little pond, a little pond. Thank you. 
in the first act, Marilyn is trying to decide whether to return to work at the boutique. I've been wrestling with the question of whether I go back to work or not. Since her son Max was born, Marilyn has been staying at home taking care of him. And she'd like to continue. I want to be with Max as a full-time mother. Especially when he's a baby. But Marilyn's boss, Rita May, wants Marilyn to come back to work soon. She wants to know when I think I'll be returning to the boutique. What does Marilyn want to do? Catching. I've been thinking a lot about our responsibilities in the past few weeks. I never stopped thinking about them. I've been wrestling with the question of whether I go back to work or not. I see. And I'm torn. I, I really want to go back to work. Use my talents, pursue my career in fashion design like we always thought I would, but now... I want to be with Max as a full-time mother, especially when he's a baby. I really understand, Marilyn, but you never have to worry about Max. His mother and grandpa, and I can always arrange my photo schedule around your schedule if that will help. It's not the same, Richard. Have you discussed going back to work with your boss? Oh. Rita May called yesterday. Ah. That's what's got you thinking, isn't it? She wants to know when I think I'll be returning to the boutique. And you said? I said I'd give her an answer in a few days. That I wasn't sure. I'm sure Rita May will understand and wait until you're ready to go back to work. Maybe she will and maybe she won't. Who knows? If I don't accept her offer... Maybe she'll find someone else in the meantime, and when I'm ready to go back, there won't be a job for me. Oh, that's something to consider. You've got yourself to think about, too. But I am thinking about myself, don't you see? Well, what do you mean? It's not just the job. It's also... my career as Max's mother. Now, that's the way I look at it. I have two career opportunities at the same time. My career as a fashion designer and my career as a mother. I never really thought about being a mother as a career. I guess you do have two career opportunities and a decision to make. I hear Max. I'll go to him. No, that's okay. I'll do it. I've been wrestling with the question of whether I go back to work or not. I'm wrestling with the question, I can't make up my mind. I'm in a fog, I'm up in the air, I'm really in a fine. I can't make my mind up, I feel I'm split in two. I'm pulled in two directions, I don't know what to do. I've got to get my act together i've got to get it all figured out i've got to get on the right track get rid of all the doubt i've got to straighten everything out i want to try something new i've got to sort it out think it out work it out because i don't know what to do 
and I'm torn. I, I really want to go back to work. I'm really torn, I'm all mixed up. My future is unclear. I'm pulled in two directions. I'm practically in tears. I'm of two minds about it. I've got to think it all through. I've got to find an answer, cause I don't know what to do. I've got to get my act together. I've got to get it all figured out. I've got to get on the right track, get rid of all the doubt. I've got to straighten everything out. And you know it's true. I've got to sort it out, think it out, work it out, cause I don't know what to do. I've got to sort it out, think it out, work it out, cause I don't know what to do. In the second act, Ellen tries to help Marilyn. I've been meaning to ask you what you were thinking about regarding going back to work. And Marilyn wants to know what Ellen decided to do when her children were babies. What did you do? I chose to continue with my career as a music teacher. Later on, Susan tells Marilyn what her life is like as a working mother. I have a job and I have Michelle. I take care of both to the best of my ability. What will Marilyn decide to do? You should have seen the look on his face when Molly gave him the injection. Oh, did he cry? No. My dear little boy just looked up at me as if to say, Mama, what are they doing to me? Oh, help. How did you tell the truth? Didn't you feel terrible? Sure did. Dear little pet, he looked up at me, he tried to smile. Being with him helped. Help him or help you? Being a mother is not easy, if that's what you mean. Speaking of being a mother, I've been meaning to ask you what you were thinking about regarding going back to work. I know we to make fault. I can imagine what is going through your head. I'm sure you can, Ellen. There are so many things to consider. One thing that makes it easier for you is that you have us. Max will always have a family member to watch over him while you're at work. I didn't have that when we were Susan. What did you do? I chose to continue with my career as a music teacher. We hired a woman to watch Richard and then Susan. And I continued with my career. I think you made the right decision. I think I did. But when Robbie was born, I decided to give full-time attention to raising Robbie. I felt differently at that And you gave up your career as a music teacher? Not exactly. I continued to teach piano lessons. What did you feel about being away when Susan and Richard were babies? I think I did the right thing. For them and for myself and for Philip. We needed the money, remember? Well, we do too, Ellen. Everything I earn helps us towards getting that house we want and need. I can't think it's just a little older. Our toy company makes the most wonderful toys for kids. <laughs> Max, thank you. I thank you. Richard, thank you. Now, may I please say hello? <laughs> hello. 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 Mm -hmm. I miss Max and think about him all week long. We talk about him at dinner time. Oh, will you please try to relax? I've never seen you so wound up. <laughs> you seem to be enjoying it. 
The truth is, I am. My job is not an easy one, but I really enjoy it. That is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about, Susan. What's the problem? Marilyn's career. Well, my choice of careers. <clears throat> my career as fashion designer versus my career as a mother. Why does it have to be one or the other? That's what I say. How's that? Why can't you do both? Right. Both. Well, that's what I do. I have a job, and I have Michelle. I take care of both to the best of my ability. It's not easy, but what is? And that's what I did. I did both with Richard and Susan, and I did both with Bobby. I thought you stayed home with them. I did. But I was lucky enough to have a career which I could continue at home. Why can't you work at home, Marilyn? You're very talented. Designing dresses is a career you could establish out of your home, couldn't you? Now, why I didn't think of it? it seems so simple now. For a year or two, I could stay at home with Max and do my dress designs. And you could make your dresses at home. Sounds like a great way to solve the problem. <laughs> that could solve your problem, Meryl. I'm going to call Rita May at home and ask her to come by and talk about it. She wants to see Max anyway. I think that really answers your questions, Marilyn. You can do it. Do your designs at home. Here. And let Rita May do the selling at the boutique. And you can both benefit financially. I'm going to call Rita May right now. Susan. Thanks so much for coming all this way from the city to talk to me about it. I hope you don't mind having taken so much time away from your busy schedule. Are you kidding? I don't mind at all. As a matter of fact, I came to spend some time with my sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you should call Rita May right now. I think your idea of working at home is perfect. I don't know what I would do without you. I'm lucky to have you all. Ah, we are lucky to have you, Marilyn. <laughs> but so is not. <laughs> Being a mother is not easy. Being a mother is not easy. It's not easy to be a mother. Caring for a child takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to care for a child. Playing with a baby is so much fun. It's so much fun. Do -do 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 -do. It's so much fun to play with a baby. And working at home would be wonderful. It would be wonderful. what I would do without you. I'm lucky to have you all. It's great to be in this family. Do -do 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 -do. It's great. Being in this family is great. It's always so easy for me to find someone who It's always so easy for me.
In the third act, Marilyn tells Rita May about her decision to stay at home with Max. I've decided to stay at home and be a full-time mother. Rita May isn't happy with the decision, of course. I'm disappointed, but I respect your decision. But then, Marilyn tells Rita May about her plans to design wedding dresses at home. What kind of dresses would you design? I've thought about that for some time. Yes? Wedding dresses. Wedding dresses. What will she think of the idea? sure got here quickly. That's a good sign. She must like you and your work, Marilyn. I think she's just anxious to see Max. She loves children. <laughs> Oh, hello. How are you? I remember. How are you? Oh. And there is Max. Oh. My, how he's grown. Oh. <laughs> A little present for Max. Oh, it's beautiful, Rita May. Oh, you shouldn't oh, have. It's nothing. It's just a little present for Max. Can I get you some coffee or tea or a cold drink, Rita May? Oh, nothing. Thank you. <laughs> well, I will leave you to talk. Come on, you. That's it. Nice seeing you. Uh, Let me know if you need anything. Oh, thanks, Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. Okay, Marilyn. You sounded like you made a decision when you called me. I'm all ears. I have made a decision, Rita May. I've decided to stay at home and be a full-time mother. I'm disappointed. But I respect your decision. If I had a child as cute as Max, I might do the same thing. But I haven't finished telling you the other half of my decision. The other half? Yes. I think I can stay at home and take care of Max and continue my career. Sounds interesting. Let me hear it. <laughs> you remember our talks about custom design dresses for the boutique? Sure do. Why can't I design dresses for you here at home and make them here? Have the fittings here, too. And I could do the selling and the pricing at the boutique. Oh. What kind of dresses would you design? I've thought about that for some time. Yes? Wedding dress. Brilliant idea. There's a big market today in wedding dresses. Well, I thought. I like the idea very much. And if it's successful, we can expand all kinds of dresses. That's what I thought. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have a customer for your first wedding dress. Well, my niece is getting married, and I've been trying to find just the right thing for her. Marilyn, you're going to design my niece's dress. That'll be our first one, and then we'll use it to sell others. I really need it. What a simple idea, and it will work. Oh, you can certainly design dresses, I know that. And there's no reason why you can't do it from your home. I'm so excited, I can't wait to tell Richard. If I had a baby like Max, I'd want to stay home and be near him all the time, sweetie. You're making the right decision for Max. And for yourself, too, Max. all sounds so easy. Now the hard work begins. <laughs> Would you like to see some of my times that I've been working on? I'd love to. Oh. You can certainly design dresses, I know that. And there's no reason why you can't do it from your home. It's true. I can design wedding dresses and continue my career. And I can take care of Max right here at home. She can do it right here at home. 
I want to stay at home while Max is still a baby. If I went back to work at the boutique now, Max would be on my mind all the time. She would only think about Max. But the truth is, I need to work. Richard and I want to buy a house, but we can't afford it. Like most families, we need two incomes in order to afford a house someday. With the yard and trees and a swing for Max. More and more families have working mothers. In the U.S., more than half of all mothers with preschool children are working at a career. Mothers like me. They have to work and be a mother, too. And about three-fourths of all mothers with school-age children are working. In lots of families, relatives like grandparents offer to take care of children while the parents are working. And some families bring their children to daycare centers, where other people take care of them. They stay at daycare centers while their mothers work. But for now, Max will stay here, and I'll take care of him. Marilyn and Max will both be at home. Marilyn will work, and Max won't be alone. In Act 1, Grandpa reads some bad news. Editorial in this paper that has my friend Matt Baker real upset. A little later, Grandpa's friend comes to visit. I'd like you to meet my friend Matt Baker. Matt is very upset about something. It's a serious matter for a lot of us. A serious matter. Why is Matt so upset? Something the matter, Grandpa? Uh, editorial in this paper that has my friend Matt Baker real upset. Uh, I'll read it to you. The old library building on Chestnut Street, which has been vacant for over a year now, was supposed to be made into a community center to serve the senior citizens as well as the younger people of Riverdale. Due to lack of funds for the repainting of the interior of the building and for the furniture needed, the plans for the community center have been postponed indefinitely. <laughs> Who's coming over to talk about it? That serious a problem, Grandpa? It is. He, Nat's not as lucky as I am, Robbie. He doesn't have any uh, family with him. Uh, he lives alone. He depends on places like a community center to be with people. People his own age. But there's the whole community center on Elm Street. It's small. And the problem is it's uh, set up primarily for kids to play. Ping pong tables, soda machines. And lots of music. They're too noisy for some older people like that. I never realized that. Uh, it's hard for some older people to take all that noise. That's why the new community center is a good idea. Part of the building for older people, part of the building for younger people. I see what you mean. Well, that must be Nat. Could be Alexander. She's coming over this morning to help me with my math. Come on in. You want something cold to drink? I'd love some cola. Cola, coming up. Really appreciate you coming over to help me with my math. My final exam is next Tuesday. You're so good in all your other subjects. I just can't understand why you have so many problems with math. Hi, Alexandra. Hi, Mr. Stewart. I thought that was Matt Baker who rang the front doorbell. 
Don't let me interrupt you. No problem, Grandpa. We're just having some cola before getting to the tough stuff. Math. You'll do anything to avoid getting down to math lessons, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> I was the same way. Really, Grandpa? Really. I didn't like math. I wasn't good at it, and I didn't like studying it. But you had to be good at math. You graduated from engineering school. I was, but not in high school. For some reason, I couldn't get a handle on it. Then in college, I became good at it. Then there's hope for Robbie. <laughs> I can't wait. Do you think I can just skip it now and get to it at college? You'll <laughs> never get to college to find out, Robbie, if we skip it now. <laughs> <laughs> that must be that. Sit down, Robbie. Let's work. I'd like you to meet my friend, Matt Baker. This is Alexandra Pappas, and this is my grandson, Robbie, whom I think you've met once or twice before. Nice to meet you, Mr. Baker. Hi, Mr. Baker. We met before. Where? In town. At the hardware store. I remember now. Right. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Alexandra. But don't let us keep you from your math tutoring, Robbie. I know you want to get to it. Stay. Stay. I told you, he'll use any excuse to avoid math. Did you read the story in the paper, Malcolm? I did. It's a serious matter for a lot of us. Serious matter. It is. Come on out to the patio. We'll talk about it out there. Thanks. It's nice to meet you again. What's the problem? Come on, you'll hear about it. You can read it in the paper You can read what people say You can find it in the paper Most papers in the USA Sometimes you can find good news Sometimes the news is bad Sometimes the news makes you happy Sometimes it only makes you mad but if you want to be informed, take my recommendation. Go to a newsstand and pick up a paper if you want information. If you want to read the news, look in the paper. If you want an opinion, look in the paper. If you want to buy a house, look in the paper. If you're looking for a job, look in the paper. If you want to buy a car, Look in the paper! If you want to see a show, look in the paper. You can read it in the paper. You can read what people say. You can find it in the paper. Most papers in the USA. If you want to know the score, look in the paper. If you want the weather forecast, look in the paper. If you want to see the comics, look in the paper. If you have money to invest, look in the paper. If you want a recipe, look in the paper. If you need a vacation, look in the paper. paper, 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 paper. You can read it in the paper. You can read what people say. You can find it in the paper, most papers in the USA. You can read it in the paper. You can read what people say. You can find it in the paper, most papers in the USA. In Act Two, Nat and Grandpa talk about fixing up the old library. We get our friends to roll their sleeves up and get to work. It's certainly a good idea. If I could take a look at the place, I could probably tell what it requires to fix it up. And Robbie and Alexandra offer to help, too. I can get some of my friends to go around the neighborhood and collect the furniture we need. So they agree to meet the next day. And tomorrow morning, we'll all meet here to discuss the plan 
Tomorrow morning it is. But the next day, Robbie and Alexandra aren't at the meeting with the others. Where's your grandson Robbie and his friend Alexandra? Weren't they going to be here this morning? Where could they be? There is a way now. Get our friends to roll their sleeves up and get to work. It's certainly a good idea. If I could take a look at the place, I could probably tell what it requires to fix it up. How much paint, how many hours of work. That's what I came to ask you to do, Mount. If you would supervise the refurbishing, I'll find the people to help do it. I'll help too, Mr. Baker. I can get some of my friends to go around the neighborhood and collect the furniture we need. I'll help. Tomorrow, yes. We'll meet tomorrow morning right here. Can we help? I'd really like to. Sure. We might need you to come through with your friends, Robbie. Not just to go around the neighborhood asking for furniture, but to help That breaking work and may be too much for us. I'll do it. I'll talk to them. And tomorrow morning, we'll all meet here to discuss the plan? Tomorrow morning, it is. I'd like you to meet my friend Malcolm Stewart. Malcolm, this is Joanne Thompson. Hello, Joanne. Nice to meet you. My pleasure, Malcolm. And this is Abe Lucas. You must remember Abe. He ran the drugstore and used to play drums with the jazz band on weekends. Oh, sure I do. Hi, Abe. Hello, Mrs. Stewart. Malcolm, please. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, sit down, sit down. Have some coffee. And I've got some delicious Danish pastry for you. Where's your grandson, Robbie, and his friend, Alexandra? Weren't they going to be here this morning? I thought so, too. I'm surprised they're not here. Robbie left early this morning to meet Alexandra. Frankly, I thought they'd be here, but it's okay. I'm sure they meant well, but they probably had other things on their minds. I understand you used to be in the construction business. I was indeed. I wonder if you would take a look at the old library and make sure that it is in good condition so that we don't have to worry about any structural problems. Well, when can I do that? I'd be happy to. We've got permission to go inside the old building during the week, Tuesday or Wednesday. That's fine with me. I can do it either day. That would be very helpful. I think the building just needs a good cleaning. And a good paint job. Then we have to furnish it. I wish Robbie and Alexandra had come to this meeting. They had some ideas about getting the place fixed up. Perhaps they'll show up. In the meantime, let me give you some additional thoughts and ideas I have. Okay. Go ahead, Joanne. As I said, mostly the building just needs a good cleaning. This place can be developed with one real intergenerational program. That's an idea I like. A community center with the kinds of programs that fit everyone. And programs that don't leave anyone out. It's asking a lot. But we can't do it without talking to the young people, finding out what they want. If only Robbie and Alexandra were here. Don't be upset, Malcolm. We'll have a chance to talk to them later. It's not like Robbie. If he says he's going to be here, he's here. I wonder what the problem is. wonder what the problem is. What's the problem? I wonder. I wonder what the problem is. Robbie, 
and Alexandra aren't here. Why not? Where are they? I don't know. I don't know where they are. Why didn't they come? I don't understand. I don't understand why they didn't come. We need a new community center. But we can't do it without talking to the young people, finding out what they want. What do the young people want? We'd like to know. We'd like to know what the young people want in the new community center. What does Robbie think about it? We'd like to hear. We'd like to hear what Robbie thinks about it. But where did he go? We don't know. We don't know where he went. In Act 3, Robbie and Alexandra finally arrive. Hi everyone, sorry I'm late. And they've brought someone to help work on the community center project. You remember Charles Maxwell, Grandpa? He's the editor of the Riverdale paper. Maxwell listens to the others and understands what they need to do. What you're saying is in order for this center to succeed, we need to put together volunteers from the various generations of future users. But how can we help? Hi everyone, sorry I'm late. But Alexander and I have been busy at work this morning on the community center project. And we brought someone along who can help. You remember Charles Maxwell, Grandpa? He's the editor of the Riverdale paper. He wrote some nice articles on Mom when she was running for the school board. Yes, I remember. You were a great help. Hi, Mr. Stewart. I hope to be a bigger help on the new community center project. From what uh, Robbie and Alexandra have told me, uh, you people are making one big story. Oh, let me introduce you, Mr. Maxwell. This is uh, Matt uh, Baker, uh, who is responsible for this meeting. And this is Joanne Thompson and Abe Lucas, who used to run the drugstore in town. Robbie and Alexander told me what you need to fix up the old library. I am planning to write an editorial that I think will help you. Let's go. What are your questions? Okay. Now, I have first a couple of questions. Have you talked to the community council? And have you had an engineer come in to do an inspection? Okay. What do you need most of all? People power. Men and women young and old, to give us their time. Do what? To help scrub the building interior clean. So that we can repaint it. You also need bodies to do repainting. Right. And we'll also need some ladders and some brushes and some paint. When do you need the volunteers and where do they report? I've got the council to agree to open the building for us on the next four weekends. How about furnishing? Are there any special requirements that I should list in the paper? Yes. Here is a copy of all the things we need to start. Four desks, eight straight-back chairs, 30 folding chairs, six table lamps, three end tables, one piano. It's a good start. These items shouldn't be difficult to come by once I print the article in the paper. This community has always been very generous. I agree, Mr. Maxwell. What you're saying... In order for this center to succeed, we need to put together volunteers from the various generations of future users. That's right. And without their energy and stamina, there's no way we can complete this project. Got it. Now, give me some information about how you see the building being used. 
Here, on the ground floor, we have the reception area. It's here, Robbie. Charles Maxwell lived up to his word. At the Stewart family home on Linden Street yesterday, a group of caring Riverdale citizens gathered to plan the refurbishing of the old library to transform it into a new community center. The original plan by the council was tabled because of lack of funds. The new plan needs you. You could call it a community unity plan. It needs your time, and it needs your energy, and it needs your contributions of furniture, paint, brushes, ladders, lamps, etc. A list of these items and the volunteer form can be picked up at the Riverdale Press office. By working together, this community can do anything to benefit its citizens. And we know you will all work together towards refurbishing the old library and making it a new community center. Charles Maxwell, editor. Okay, what do you need most of all? People power. Men and women, young and old, to give us their time. Fish in, help out, volunteer. Give your time, join in, lend a hand. Pitch in, take part, we need you here. We can do it with your help, yes we can. We'll solve our problems one by one if we all What you're saying is in order for this center to succeed, we need to put together volunteers from the various generations of future users. Participate! In Act One, Robbie is thinking about Alexandra and their friendship. She's a terrific person. I'm going to miss her when she goes back to Greece. Ellen suggests having a special party for Alexandra. Would you like to give her a little farewell party? Mom, oh, that would be terrific. <laughs> Maybe we could make it a surprise. And Robbie would like to buy Alexandra a gift. I'd like to give her a nice going away present. Fine. There's only one problem. What's that? What's the problem? They're getting the assembly hall ready for graduation ceremony, but we all got to go home early. Too noisy to study. Well, now that you're here, you can help me with dinner. I need those potatoes uh, peeled and sliced. Mom, give me a break. Alexandra's coming over to help me study for my math final. Wow. Ah. In that case, you can wash the dishes and clean up after dinner. Can I invite Alexandra to stay for dinner? Thanks, Mom. 
You and Alexandra have become good friends, haven't you? Yes, I like her. She's a terrific person. I'm going to miss her when she goes back to Greece. Would you like to give her a little farewell party? Oh, and that would be terrific. <laughs> Maybe we could make it a surprise. Oh, I, I don't know. Surprise parties don't always work out. Well, we could tell her it's a graduation party for me. When Alexandra arrives, we'll surprise her. I suppose that might work. I'd like to give her a nice going away present. Fine. There's only yeah. one problem. What's that? I'm broke. <laughs> I should have saved some money. I'm sure Alexandra would be happy with something simple, Rob. I know. But, well, I'd like to give her something nice to remember me by. Maybe I could borrow some money from you and Dad. It's all right with me if it's all right with your dad. Thanks, Mom. I'll talk to him. Is he still in his office? I think so. Thanks, Mom. Hmm. Robbie! Good luck. as you wanted, Dr. Stewart. Oh, thank you, Wally. Now, yeah, let me check them. What do you think? Well, I don't see any breaks or fractures. Oh, well... Come in. Oh, hi, son. Hi, Dad. Am I interrupting you? No, 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 no. What's up? Can we talk? Sure. I uh, need some help. Well, that's what fathers are for. Well, before I go to college, I have the whole summer. Yes? And I'm planning to get a job for the summer. <clears throat> what sort of job? I applied for a job as a lifeguard at the community pool. Sounds pretty good. Yes, I'll be earning pretty good money if I get it. But right now I'm kind of short of cash. <laughs> Who is it? And uh, my friend Alexander is going back to Greece. Nice girl. Uh, we'll all miss her. Mom says we can give her a going away surprise party. Good idea. And I'd like to get her a nice gift. What'd you have in mind? Well, a wristwatch. So she'll think of me when she looks at the time. Nothing flashy or expensive. Something simple, but a good one. Sounds fine, Robbie. Well, I saw a nice watch. But I'll need a loan. If you could lend me the money, I could pay you back out of my lifeguard salary. Well, uh, I guess your mother and I and manage it. Uh, when do you need the money? Would tomorrow be okay? You got it. Thanks, Dad. My pleasure, son. Oh, and Robbie. Yes? You probably want the family car so you can drive her home after the party. Could I? If you drive here. I will. Thanks, Dad. My pleasure. You're okay, Dad. Not so bad yourself, son. I'd like to give her a nice going away present. Robbie wants to buy a gift for Alexandra. But he doesn't have enough money. 
I should have saved some money. He should have saved some money. He should have saved some money. But he didn't do it. He should have put some money in the bank. He should have put some money in the bank. But he didn't do it. Too bad. He didn't do it. Alexander's coming over to help me study for my math final. Robbie's got to take a test in math, but it's hard for him. He's gonna study today, but he didn't study yesterday. He should have studied yesterday. He should have studied yesterday, but he didn't do it. He should have looked in the book. He should have looked in the book, but he didn't do it. Too bad. He didn't do it. You and Alexandra have become good friends, haven't you? Yes, I like her. She's a terrific person. I'm going to miss her when she goes back to Greece. Robbie never told her that he would miss her when she goes back home. Do you think she knows how he feels? He never told her before. He should have told her. He should have told her. But he didn't do it. He should have said, I'll miss you. He should have said, I'll miss you. But he didn't do it. Too bad he didn't do it. Wait, Robbie. You forgot to put the milk back into the refrigerator. He shouldn't have left the milk out. He shouldn't have left the milk out. But he did it. He did it. He should have saved some money. He should have studied yesterday. He should have told her. But he didn't do it. And he shouldn't have left the milk out. In Act Two, Robbie invites Alexandra to the party. Would you be able to come over Saturday night? But he doesn't tell her that the party is for her. It's a surprise. My folks are giving me a little graduation party. Terrific. On Saturday, Robbie and his friends get ready for Alexandra's surprise party. Robbie, there's a phone call for you. It's Alexandra. She sounds upset. What's wrong? Ready for the next problem? You know what? I can't look at another number. How about a lemonade break? Sure. Oh, by the way, when is your plane reservation for your flight to Athens? Sunday? Why? Would you be able to come over Saturday night? Yes. I should be finished packing by then. My folks are giving me a little graduation party. I'll pick you up. That isn't necessary. My dad's letting me borrow the car. Oh, well, that would be very nice. About 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock is fine. Great, it's a date. Who's going to be there? Just my friend Mike and a few kids from school. I'm going to miss all of you. You've been like a second family to me. We're going to miss you. Maybe you could come to visit me in Greece. I'm counting on it. Wonderful. Are you excited about graduating from high school? Sure. And a little scared. Scared? Why? Aren't you a little scared? I was when I first came to the United States. I'd never been away from home, and I didn't know what it would be like. But then I found out that people are the same everywhere. Once you get to know them. I'm glad I got to know you. Thank you. I'm glad I got to know you. And your family. Wouldn't it be nice if we could skip the examinations and get right to the graduation party? It would be very nice. But that isn't the way it works. So, back to work. Ah. 
Good night, Ravi. Good night, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you for dinner. Good night, Alexandra. Will you be all right? Yes, the Molinas are waiting for me. Good night, Alexandra. I'll pick you up on Saturday night, okay? Yes, 8 o'clock. I have to run. Good night, Ravi. Really a good friend, isn't he? Yeah. No hard way. Am I going to miss her? <laughs> That's what I said. You are going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. Mm. And my math teacher is going to miss her. Well, you can write to her. Not the same. <laughs> How does that look, Rob? Great. Pass me the hammer. You got it. You're sure Alexander's going to be surprised? Absolutely. She has no idea that the party is in her honor. Billy, did you bring the tapes for dancing? They're in my bag. What did you bring? Some rock and roll. Perfect. Alexander will love it. I can't wait to see her face when she walks in here tonight. But what about the cake? My mom's decorating it right now. Robbie, there's a phone call for you. It's Alexandra. She sounds upset. Okay, thanks, Mom. I'll take it in there. Hi, Alexandra. What? You what? Oh, no. It'd be nice if we could skip the examinations and get right to the graduation party. Attention, please. There will be no exams this year. Yay! If they really canceled the exams, Robbie would give his big graduation party today. And if the big party was today, uh. I mean, if the big party were today, he would tell all his friends about it. And if all his friends came to the big party, Robbie would shop for lots of food. He would buy all the food for the big party if he went shopping in the supermarket. Ice cream, soda, candy and cake. Mm. Woo! Everyone would have a great time at Robbie's big party if he bought all that food. Hey, Robbie, you sure know how to throw a party. This is what great food. But wait. What happened to the music? If Robbie played some more music, Everyone could be dancing and having fun at the big party. Oh, no. No music. Boring. What do we do? And if the big party wasn't much fun... Uh -uh. Uh, if the big party weren't much fun anymore, everyone might go home. See you, Robbie. Well, you tried. But no music? Let's, Let's leave. leave. And if everyone left the big party, Robbie would be alone. Attention, please. Exams will be given tomorrow. Oh. Well, Robbie, the party's over. It would be great if the exams were really canceled. But they're not, so study, Robbie, study. Ooh, look at the book. Study, Robbie, study. Yeah, Robbie. Study, Robbie. In Act Three, Robbie's friends are disappointed because Alexandra can't come to the party. Did she say why she had to leave today? She told Robbie that her flight tomorrow was canceled, so she had to take an earlier flight today. They're afraid that Robbie will be disappointed, too. Do you think we should take down the decorations? We'll just make them sad. Too late now. We should have done it sooner. When Robbie returns from the airport, he does seem upset. How'd it go? Okay, I guess. Will Robbie ever see Alexandra again?
wait till Robbie gets back from the airport. Did she say why she had to leave today? She told Robbie that her flight tomorrow was canceled, so she had to take an earlier flight today. Terrible. Well, that must be him. Why are they blowing his horn like that? I don't know. Maybe he's angry. Do you think we should take down the decorations? We'll just make him sad. Too late now. We should have done it sooner. Oh, here he comes. Hi. How'd it go? Okay, I guess. Especially when Alexander gave me a surprise. Yeah, what was it? This. <laughs> Alexander! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hi. Hi. What happened? <laughs> I called my parents from the airport. When I told them my friends were giving me a party, they insisted that I stay. So now I'm taking a flight on Monday instead. That's great. <laughs> Terrific. But how did you know the party was for you? Well, Robbie told me when he gave me this. <laughs> Lovely, Robbie. All right, now we can really start the party. No, would you mind... I'd like to say something, sir. Here, here. I would just like to thank all of you, my friends, who have made my stay in the United States so wonderful. And to Robbie and the Stewart family for opening their home. We should thank you. You're a real friend. And I also have a little surprise for you, Robbie. A little going away present. Thank you. Open it, please. I think you might be amused. Okay. I can't believe it. <laughs> I guess we were thinking the same thought. You had it engraved. Oh, read it, Robbie. In friendship always, Alexandra. I knew we thought alike, but this is too much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's have some music. Oh, all right. Oh, Miss Hoppus? <laughs> Mrs. Stewart, may I have a thing? Oh, my pleasure, there when I needed you, never had to ask for anything, you were there to help me through. I'll remember all the time that we spent together having fun, I won't forget a moment that we shared. I won't forget your smile, won't forget the way you made me laugh. The things you did to show me that you care I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you It's hard to say goodbye cause you're my friend I'm gonna miss you Yes, I'm gonna miss you But sometime in the future we don't know where or when We'll be saying Hello Okay In Act 1 Ellen helps Richard prepare for a camping trip Don't forget the, uh, the uh, mustard. And, oh, does anybody want ketchup? Uh, might as well take it along. Ellen has offered to babysit for Max while Richard and Marilyn are away. 
Mom, we really appreciate you taking care of Max for the weekend, giving up your free time. I love you. But Marilyn doesn't feel comfortable about leaving the baby. I'm really concerned about going away for the weekend, Ellen, and leaving you with the full responsibility of taking care of Max. Why is Marilyn so concerned about leaving Max? I love hot dogs. Now, there is nothing better than a hot dog in the country. Mm, hot dogs and mustard. Mm, cooked outdoors over an open fire. I wish I had one now. <laughs> do you remember when Daddy and I used to take you and Susan and Robbie to Jones Beach? Oh, I sure do. We'd into a park, make a fire, and we'd cook the hot dog. Oh, don't forget the, uh, the uh, mustard. And, oh, does anybody want ketchup? I uh, might as well take it along. And now to make sure we've got the hamburger patties. I have to remember to put them in the bag tomorrow morning before we leave. I'll remind you, Richard. Mom, we really appreciate your taking care of Max for the weekend, giving up your free time. I love doing it. Susan and Harry have a sitter for Michelle in the city, and I'm taking care of Max. It's no big deal. I am happy to do it for you. Well, I guess Max is asleep by now. He's not crying anymore. Baby, he's teething. Sleep finally. What's so bad for him? It hurts so much when a baby gets his first teeth. He'll be fine, Marilyn. Well, he wakes up several times during the night, and the pain is so bad. I'm really concerned about going away for the weekend, Ellen, and leaving you with the full responsibility of taking care of Max. Oh, well, especially with his teething. I wish he felt better. Please don't worry, Marilyn. Remember, your father-in-law is a pediatrician. We have a live-in doctor if there's a problem I can't handle. I agree, Marilyn. We really don't have to be overly concerned. I'll go upstairs and stay with him until he falls asleep again. Thanks. Try putting him across your lap on his stomach. He likes that. I'll try it. When are Susan and Harry picking you up, Marilyn? They're coming by at 6 tomorrow morning, so we can get an early start. That's nice, and you'll have a full day in the country. And a full night. Tomorrow night, we'll be camping out in tents. <laughs> and coming home on Sunday. We'll be heading back late in the afternoon. Ah. <sighs> going to have the time of your lives. Camping out is such great fun. You'll have a great time camping out, I'm sure. But I'm still a little worried about you, Ellen. It will be my great pleasure, Marilyn. Remember, it's only one night. He's asleep. I think I'll sleep through the night now. <sighs> Thanks, honey. Hope he's good when we're away. Well, so do I. Now, to check the list of things we need for the camping trip, we need to bring a flashlight. Mm. Uh, it's in the right-hand drawer next to the bottle opener. Do we have a bottle opener on the list, Marilyn? No. No bottle opener. Is that one of the things Susan and Harry are bringing? No. And we're bringing the ketchup, mustard, relish, all that stuff and cooking utensils. Well, here's the bottle opener, and here's the flashlight. Matches. Matches? Yes, mm -hmm. of course, for when we build our campfire. Now, I, I can't build a fire by rubbing two pieces of wood together. And don't forget your camera and film, Richard. All packed and ready. And let's not forget our cassette player and some tapes. Ah. Some music tapes and some blank tapes, so that we can record our thoughts about the trip. Oh, that's a nice idea. An audio diary. That's what I thought. Got it. The cassette player and the tape. Marilyn and Richard will be away for the weekend. But Marilyn is worried. About Max. I hope he's good when we're away. 
use the present tense when you talk about the future after when. They will leave tomorrow morning and they want to take some hamburgers along. I have to remember to put them in the bag tomorrow morning before we leave. Use the present tense when you talk about the future after before. Max keeps crying. He doesn't want to sleep. Maybe he will fall asleep again. I'll go upstairs and stay with him until he falls asleep again. Use the present tense when you talk about the future after until. Will Max miss his parents this weekend? Maybe there will be a problem with him. We have a live-in doctor if there's a problem I can't handle. Use the present tense when you talk about the future after if. I hope Max goes to sleep after Richard and Marilyn leave. I hope Max goes to sleep as soon as everyone says goodbye. I hope Max gets a lot of sleep while Richard and Marilyn are on their trip. Use the present tense when you talk about the future. After, after. After, as soon as. After, while. In Act 2, Marilyn, Richard, Harry, and Susan arrive at their campsite. Oh, I love it! Oh, I love it! Harry has been camping before, and he knows what to do. Well, we'll put everything over there. We'll set up our tents over there by the edge of the woods, and we'll be able to make our fire there where it's safe. Later, Marilyn and Richard listen to the sounds of the country. Hard time keeping my eyes open just listening to it. It's like special music. And Marilyn gets an idea. <laughs> I told you you'd like it. I've been doing this for years. You have the spirit of a teenager, Susan. What do you see yourself shoving around? That's what I love about Susan. She works hard. She plays hard. She's a real steward. <laughs> Come on, Richard. Help me get this stuff out of the car. Where does it go? Well, we'll put everything over there. We'll set up our tents over there by the edge of the woods. And we'll be able to make our fire there where it's safe. Oh, and there's our table and benches, all set for eating. That's what makes this spot so good. Mm. Is anybody hungry? I am. Just got out here. When you're out in the fresh air like this, it makes you hungry. Aren't you hungry, Marilyn? I sure am. How about you, Richard? Starving. <laughs> you guys are like three kids. Aren't you hungry, Harry? Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I, I guess I am. I mean, how could a guy not be hungry with all this talk about eating? Where's the bag with the chicken salad sandwiches? Right here, next to the ice packs. Here, put the tablecloth on the picnic table, and I will bring the cola and the plastic cups. Well, how do you like it so far? Never been more relaxed. Mm, me neither. I wish we had brought Michelle, Harry. She would have loved it. Oh, you're right. I wish we'd brought Max. Marilyn, Susan, let's not begin to worry about Michelle and Max. We're having a good time, and they're in good hands. Richard is right. 
Are you having a good time, Susan? You haven't answered my question. I am having a good time, Harry. <laughs> I promise not to think about the city. We're in the country. Let's all just enjoy this wonderful place and this wonderful weather. Good. This is heaven, Harry. It was such a great idea to spend the weekend this way. Thanks, Susan. I thought you'd all like it. Like it? I love it. Listen to the sounds of the summer that surround us. It's so calm. I've always liked camping out. Away from the telephones and account books. <laughs> It's refreshing for me. I always go back to the city in a, a wonderful state of mind. We've only been here for a day, and I've completely forgotten about all my business problems. The office seems so far away. I'm glad you like it, Susan. We'll spend many more weekends like this. And next time we'll bring Michelle. I wish she were here with us to enjoy the country. And next time... We'll bring Michelle. <laughs> Just listen to the sound. So soothing. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Oh, we could bottle the fresh air. <laughs> mm. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Or we could call it deep sleep country air. <laughs> Put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. So does the sound. Hmm. I've been having a hard time keeping my eyes open just listening to it. Like special music. Too bad we can't bottle the sound. We can. Can what? Bottle the sound. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah? <laughs> Great idea. Let's do it. Let's leave our work behind us. Let's get away somewhere. Let's pack up what we need. Enough for a weekend stay. Let's go on a camping trip, cause we all need to get away. We'll bring some hot dogs with us. Burgers and ketchup too. Don't forget the mustard, cause we're gonna have a barbecue. We'll pitch our tents right by the woods And we'll enjoy the view The sights and sounds of the country Are waiting for me and you We'll set up our tents over there by the edge of the woods And we'll be able to make our fire there where it's safe We'll cook our dinner every night Over an open fire We'll go fishing on the lake If we can get a boat for hire and if there's any problem, something we don't know about, park rangers are always there, they'll always help us out. We can walk a hiking trail, there's a lot to see out there. We can pick some flowers, you can wear them in your hair. So pack up your hiking boots, cause you have to dress up right. And don't forget a lantern, cause it gets real dark at night. There's always something going on, it's funny for us to do. The sights and sounds of the country are waiting for me and you. <laughs> Bye. 
In Act 3, Richard, Marilyn, Harry, and Susan return home from their camping trip. Welcome home, and I do mean welcome home. Oh. Richard thinks that something is the matter. Something wrong? And he tries to solve the problem. It works. <gasps> what works? Everybody would be awake. What did I tell you? Nothing to worry about. I'm sure everything is fine. My mother knows all there is to know about taking care of babies, I assure you. <laughs> Let's put some of this stuff away and then take off. We've got a 40 minute drive into the city. Oh, welcome home, and I do mean welcome home. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mm. Mm. Something wrong? Oh, nothing's wrong, Richard. Believe me, Max is fine. But his teeth hurt, and he just can't get to sleep, poor dear. <sighs> Neither can you. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, I'm fine. How was your weekend? We had a great time, Mom. It was wonderful. The weather couldn't have been better. It was nice here, too. Did you get a chance to get outside at all? Oh, yes. Uh, Grandpa helped me yesterday afternoon. I went to the supermarket to get a few things, and I stayed out an extra half hour. The village was filled with people. The weather was so nice. Harry's a professional camper, Mom. He knows all there is to know, and he made the weekend very easy for us to enjoy. Uh, Come on. You all helped. <laughs> you were wonderful, Harry. Uh, <laughs> Why don't you go to your room, Mom, and get some sleep? Tell me more about you. Did you do anything special? Lots of special country things. We picked flowers. <laughs> and we brought some home for you. Mm -hmm. Oh. So nice to be out in the country. Oh. Mm, they smell wonderful. Everything mm. smelled so special. It would have been great if we had been able to bottle the smells. <laughs> It'd be a great business if you could do that. Mm. Oh. We're home now, Ellen. We'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Let's see if it works. What's that? Um, a little special country music. Oh, I think we'd better head home. It's getting late and we have a bit of a drive. Hmm. Well, all your things are inside. There's your sleeping bag. Oh, thanks, Harry. Say goodbye to Richard. We'll call you all tomorrow night. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, I'm so tired, I think I'm overtired. I don't know if I can get to sleep. Oh, Max has stopped crying. Max. Works. It works. What works? This. Oh. Oh, where did you get that? Sounds so nice. Huh. I think I'm falling asleep. <laughs> like Max did. Sounds of the country. Mm. The soothing sounds of the country. Max is fine, but his teeth hurt and he just can't get to sleep. I think Ellen wishes that Max had felt better. If he had felt better, Ellen would have slept more. so bad. 
Uh-oh, I think Marilyn wishes she had taken Max camping. If Marilyn, Max, Ellen, an easier weekend. That's right. If Marilyn had taken Max, Ellen would have had an easier weekend. I stayed out an extra half hour. The village was filled with people and the weather was so nice. I bet Ellen wishes that she had stayed in the village a little longer. If she in the village a little longer, she so tired. If Ellen had stayed in the village a little longer, she wouldn't have been so tired. Harry's a professional camper, Mom. He knows all there is to know. I'm sure Richard wishes he had gone camping before this weekend. If Richard... Before he... What to do? That's right. If Richard had gone camping before, he would have known what to do. In Act 1, Richard's publisher is preparing an exhibit, a show with Richard's photographs. The next thing they'll see is this enlargement with the words Family Album USA. Richard is very nervous. Nervous about the opening tonight? Nervous? Me? No. I'm scared to death. Later, a newspaper critic arrives to review Richard's work. Mitchell, so nice of you to come. Richard, this is Mitchell Johnson. Mitchell is one of the most important syndicated reviewers in the country. Will he like Richard's work? A little further to the right, Tom. Is this okay? Good. What do you think, Richard? I like it there. It's the first thing people will see when they come in. It sets the tone for the whole show. The next thing they'll see is this enlargement with the words Family Album USA. I can't believe this is really happening. You've earned it. Years of work went into these pictures. I know, but it's still a dream come true. Well, remember, we're not sure what the critics are going to write about your show yet. And you never know what the man from the New York Times is going to say about it. Are you worried? I always worry. The reviews of this show are important for the sales of your book. Well, when did we see the reviews? Soon. One of the critics is coming over this morning for a preview. I hope he's in a good mood. Uh, so do I. Marilyn and I hope to use money from the sales of this book to buy a new house. The book will be a success, and the show will help promote it. Um, speaking of promoting the book... Do I really have to autograph copies for the guests at the opening? It's common practice. I feel uncomfortable about it. A lot of people come to openings just so they can get the autograph of somebody who may be famous someday. Couldn't we wait until I'm famous? That might be sooner than you think. <laughs> this one over here, Mr. Carlson? Uh, a little further back, Tom. It's too close to the refreshments. No, I think this one belongs in the people at work section. You may be right. Try it there, Tom. Right. Nervous about the opening tonight? Nervous? Me? No. I'm scared to death. How about guests? How many people will you be bringing? Well, um, my family, I guess. My wife, Marilyn, my father and mother, my brother, Robbie, my sister and her husband and their daughter, and my grandfather. Is that too many? No such thing as too many at an opening. I hope they like it. Your family or the public? Everybody, but especially my family. Now, they stood by me through all this. I'm sure they'll like it. Harvey, how are you? Mitchell, so nice of you to come. Richard, this is Mitchell Johnson. Mitchell is one of the most important syndicated reviewers in the country. Well, you're the young man who did all this. Uh, I'm afraid so. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Johnson. Mitchell has always encouraged new talent. Well, you mind if I look around and see what it says to me? Be our guest. Thank you. 
does that mean? When he goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It probably means he's clearing his throat. I don't know. I don't care what the critics say, Mr. Stewart. Your work is brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Tom is studying photography at NYU. He's working with me during the summer months as an intern. Oh, really? I'd like to see your work. It's not good enough to show. I'm still learning. Well, I'd still like to see your work. You may be the next Ansel Adams and not even know it. <laughs> if you really mean it, I'll bring some of my pictures into the gallery. I do mean it. Very interesting pictures, Mr. Stewart. You have a most unusual eye. Thank you. Uh, I hope that's a compliment. It is. Are you going to be reviewing the show, Mitchell? Oh, yes. It's definitely worth reviewing. Favorably? Well, you know I never answer that question, Harvey. I'd like an advanced copy of the book, though, so I can study it. I have an autographed one in my office. Tom, would you give Mr. Johnson the copy of Richard's book on my desk? Just follow me, Mr. Johnson. Do you think he liked my photographs? We'll know when tonight's papers come out. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> What does that mean? This is a job for Pronunciation Man. All the sounds make sense. Pronunciation Man. If you can hear the difference. Pronunciation Man. Listen. He said, hmm. He meant, I'm thinking. Thank you, Pronunciation Man. Now would you like to take a look at a few paintings? Uh-huh. Note the interesting use of line. Mm-hmm. Can you see the forced perspective in this painting? Uh-uh. This is a portrait of the artist's mother. Huh? Aha! Yuck! This is getting ridiculous. This is one of my favorites. Notice the use of black and blue. Oh, hum. Here's one you'll like. This is good! Thank you, Pronunciation Man. That's all we have. Huh? No more pictures of me? Ah! In Act Two, Richard gets ready to go to the opening of his exhibit. He is more nervous now. Richard is worried about what people will think of his work. What are you afraid of? Everything. A critic was there this morning. He probably hates my work. Later, Richard and Marilyn arrive at the gallery. What's wrong? Do you like the dress? Oh, I love it. I designed it myself. It's beautiful. Are you ready? We're supposed to be there before the guests arrive. I know, I know. Help me with this tie, will you? Honey, I'm scared to death. But this is what you've been working for all these years. No, no, I, I work to put together a book of photographs. This is show business. Well, it's all part of the same job. Just relax and enjoy it. You're right. I earned this, and I'm going to enjoy it. As soon as I recover from my nervous breakdown. What are you afraid of? Everything. A critic was there this morning. He probably hates my work. I have to sign copies of my book for a lot of people I never met before. My new shoes hurt my feet. <laughs> You're going to be a great success. Are you ready? As soon as I get these cufflinks on. Yeah, let me help. Mom and Dad are already on their way down to the gallery. There. Very attractive. Thank you. Well, I 
Suppose I've run out of excuses. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Oh, one minute. Before we go to the gallery, I just want to tell you that I never could have done this book without your help and your love. I appreciate it. Now, no more stalling. What is it? There's nobody here. Of course not, Richard. Your show doesn't begin until 8.30. Oh. Right. Richard, welcome. Good luck tonight. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is my publisher, Harvey Carlson. You've met my wife, Marilyn? Sure. Hi. Uh, my mother, Ellen Stewart, Harvey Carlson. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is my father, Dr. Philip Stewart. Nice to meet you, Mr. Carlson. My Dr. brother, Stewart. Robbie. Hi. Hi. And this is my sister, Susan, and her husband, Harry Bennett, and his daughter, Michelle. It's nice to meet you. And this gentleman is my grandfather, Malcolm Stewart. Welcome, Mr. Stewart. Well... Make yourselves comfortable. There are hors d'oeuvres at the table, fruit punch at the bar. Help yourselves. Can I get you something, Mr. Stewart? No, oh, thank you. You can feel very proud of your grandson, Mr. Stewart. Mm, I do. I'm proud of all my grandchildren, Mr. Carlson. Of course. Feel free to look around. If you need anything, just ask. Thank you. Uh, Harvey? Yeah. Did Mitchell Johnson's review come out yet? Not yet. The newspapers don't come out till about 10 o'clock. When they come out, we'll get it. Thanks. Ready? Uh, yes. Have the people arrived? The guests are waiting. Tom's about to open the doors. Good luck. And stop worrying. They're going to love it. Nervous about the opening tonight? Nervous? Me? No. I'm scared to death. I'm nervous. I'm scared to death. My heart is pounding like a drum and I'm out of breath. Oh, I'm nervous. I can't think straight. My palms are sweaty. I can't relax and I just can't concentrate. I've got butterflies in my stomach. Look at my hands. They shake. I try to get to sleep at night. But I lie there wide awake. Cause I'm nervous. Oh, I'm just a mess. Yeah. My mouth is dry. I can hardly speak. And I can't even get myself dressed. I earned this. And I'm going to enjoy it. As soon as I recover from my nervous breakdown. Ooh, I'm nervous. It's my opening night. I'm weak in the knees, I'm fidgety, and I'm beside myself with fright. I've got butterflies in my stomach, Woo! and look at my hands. They shake. I try to get to sleep at night, but I lie there wide awake, cause I'm nervous, and it's easy to see. I'm jumpy, I'm jittery, I'm anxious and panicky. Ooh, I'm nervous. In Act 3, Mr. Carlson gives Richard a newspaper. What's this? Read it. But Richard is too nervous to read it. It's a review of Richard's work. Richard Stewart's show at the Carlson Gallery is a collection of photographs from his new book entitled Family Album USA. Later... Mr. Carlson introduces Richard and Marilyn to John O'Neill. Ah, Richard, Marilyn. I want you to meet John O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill is a magazine publisher, and he offers Richard a job. Will he take the job? What's this? Read it. I can't. Would you read it, Marilyn? 
Richard Stewart's show at the Carlson Gallery is a collection of photographs from his new book entitled Family Album USA. There is power and beauty in Mr. Stewart's work, and his book introduces us to a remarkable new talent. Oh, Richard, it's wonderful. Congratulations. Wow. I'm overwhelmed. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention for a moment, please. I hope you're all enjoying the exhibition. I know that I am. And I would like to introduce the young man who spent the last five years taking these remarkable pictures and writing the background for Family Album USA, Mr. Richard Stewart. Hello. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming here tonight. I'd like to thank Harvey Carlson for his faith in my project. But uh, most of all, I would like to thank my family for their, their love and support all through this adventure. Thank you. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> uh, would you mind? Oh, uh, not at all. Thanks. Our pleasure. Hope it wins a Pulitzer Prize. I'll settle for an A in my photography. Ah, Richard, Marilyn. I want you to meet John O'Neill. Oh, how do you do? Nice to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting your husband, Mrs. Stewart. I'm really impressed by your show. Thank you. In fact, I'd like your autograph. Oh, well, really. On a contract. What's this about, Harvey? Mr. O'Neill is the publisher of several magazines. Of course, I've seen you on television. Mr. O'Neill was so impressed with your work that he wants to develop it into a magazine concept. Well, that, that sounds very exciting. Um, but where would I fit into the plan? I'd like you to be the photo editor of the magazine. Richard, how exciting. It's a wonderful opportunity, Richard. Um, hold on. Uh, wait a minute, please. What's the problem, Richard? The problem is that I'm a photographer, not an editor. I like what I do. In fact, I love what I do, which is going out with a camera and a roll of film and seeing the wonder of humanity. Now, I appreciate your offer, but I've worked so hard on Family Album USA, and I'm giving some thought to a new book on a different subject. I'm flattered, but I enjoy taking pictures, and I want to continue doing that. Thank you, but I'm happy being a photographer. I understand, Richard. Richard, I know your next book will be a success. Congratulations. Thanks. You're a real steward. Thanks. <laughs>
love you And I'll try to make you happy every day Together, what we need is quality time. 